Consultancy 2023. And before we go in, I want to explain that we have two new teams this time in PNC 2023, Denmark and India. And let's start with Argentina. Here we have Ale RV from the last year's roster and Rebox from the Team Argentina in 2019 PNC. Yeah, so you've got a couple veterans and then you've got two new young players in DraftKings and Emic. Very strong players at PGS2, so really excited to see how this team performs. They were 8 at 2022 PNC for Argentina. Let's see if they can do better this time. Let's move on to Team Australia. Here we have a lot of famous players. Yeah, absolutely. This is a really stacked team. Tiggleton, Flood, Luke 12, great players in their own right. And now you've got Kong coming in from XO Clan who made a splash at PGS1 this year. Really excited to see these guys together, a team with a lot of firepower. And Tiggleton from Sonics winning the very recent tournament, PGS2, is at his best form, so we can expect more, like better performance than last year, I guess. Next is Team Brazil, who ended up third place in last PNC 2022, and the roster is pretty much same, other than Vinny. Yeah, exactly. This is a team that really impressed at PNC last year, just fell short on the last day. So looking to rebound here, it's been a little rough for the Brazilian teams. So let's see if they can have a really strong performance at PNC again. All the players haven't played in PGS2 the recent tournament, but let's see how they perform in the next tournament, PNC 2023. Next up is Team Canada, exact same roster from PNC 2022. Yeah, I'm actually expecting more out of these guys this year. I think they're a really smart team. They're veteran players. They've been around for such a long time in PUBG Esports. I really hope they can step up their performance this year in 2023. Next is Team China, which is thought to be one of the best teams coming into PNC. This time, we have the change of the roster. So Xiao Didi had to drop out due to personal reasons. So Sho from the 17 Gaming is replacing this spot. What do you think about this new squad? Well, I mean, it's exciting again to have Sho back. Of course, he's an, a phenomenal player across all of PUBG Esports history. Uh, you know, Crazy, Aix left, and Longskirt. This team has a ton of firepower. I think they could definitely do better than six, what they got last year in 2022. So next is Team Chinese Taipei, and this team is a team who shows the phenomenal moments in every tournament they participate. And there is this player, Leo, who has participated the all three PNC also. Yeah, so we've got Leo, Savior, Zen Nan, household names in PUBG Esports. And then we've got Pongsker, a young gun coming in for the first time here, having a phenomenal year for his team. So really excited about these guys. I really hope they can do well. It would be awesome to see them have a strong finish. Next is Team Denmark, the new coming team. I know how hard Toby and Avenger was wanting for this Team Denmark. Yeah, me too. Honestly, there's a lot of really good players from Denmark. I mean, you look at this squad, it is stacked. Gustav, Beamy. Clip. These guys are absolutely nothing. Kino coming in. This is a really good team. Next is Team Germany. They have ended up 16th last year, but three of them is from ASEN who have shown really good performance in PGS1. This should be a really fun team to watch. Not only do you have some great players on Ascend, but they play with a really unique style with Kowo as their coach. So they like to play edge heavy. They're really exciting to watch. They do a lot of interesting individual plays. So Really excited about this Germany team this year. Next is Team India, which is also the new coming team in PNC 2023. But unlike Denmark, the whole players are very new to PUBG Esports scene. Well, and this is what's so cool about it, right? We've never seen them perform against some of the best in the world. This is their first opportunity. So I'm really excited to see how they do this year. And I'm sure that this team could be a big threat to other teams because they have zero information. So let's see how they adapt to this PNC 2023. Next is Team Japan. It's been a while since we've seen Japanese player playing in the global tournament, so I think Japanese fans would be really excited to see Team Japan performing in PN 2023. Yeah, Emox having a really good year. Kane still very strong for these guys. And then you've got Run AXP coming back, and we've got Pure Boy from E36. So a really strong Japanese roster. Hopefully they can improve on their performances. And it's really interesting thing that Team Japan always win the chicken dinner in PNC. That's true. So let's see if they can win another chicken dinner in PNC 2023. So next is Team Korea, the home team. The roster is pretty much similar to last year's roster. Yeah, this is really exciting. You've got the PGS1 MVP Seoul. You've got PGS1 Standout Heaven. And then two players who've been at every single PNC so far in Inonix and Loki. But they have never won the chicken dinner, unlike Japan. It's <laughs> shocking. I, I cannot actually believe that when, when I looked at that and saw it. 
But this is a really good team. Again, if they, maybe if they get one chicken dinner, they can finally get that win at PNC. Next coming up is Team Thailand. We have seen a lot of crowd cheering for Thailand last year in PNC 2022. The roster seems very balanced, having two players from Day Trade Gaming, the powerhouse team from Thailand, and two from Theraton 5, who has been playing very well recently, especially in PGS2. Yeah, they got that one big win at PNC in 2022, a great, exciting match. And then you've got Theraton 5 playing very, very well here. Tanadol and Rossetta Jr. looked really solid. So to back up that firepower from day trade, I think Thailand could do quite well this year. So next is Team Turkey. I think the roster seems solid with three from Tala Sports and Code Marco. Yeah, so I mean, Howell looked really solid at PGS1. So certainly the backbone of this team is strong. Then you add in the explosive firepower of Code Marco. These guys can definitely make a splash at PNC 2023. Next up is Team United Kingdom, the defending champion. The roster is pretty much the same. Bard, Fax, T-Bone remains, and we have new coming players, Honey Badger. Yeah, this is a really strong squad. Obviously, they won last year, so this is a team that's going to have high expectations again. Honey Badger, a solid, smart player, oftentimes the IGL for his team, so it's going to be really interesting to see if they're going to be able to recreate that magic from last year. So next is Team United States. This roster is really stacked too. And this team used to be half Luminosity Gaming and half Sonics, but recently Kickstart moved to Sonics. So this is exciting. You've got HWIN, of course, doing the IGLing, but now we're going to see how Kickstart is going to fit in with them again. You know, last year wasn't the best, ninth place, uh, but still tons of firepower in here. Snakers, by the way, having an absolutely insane year, so he should fit in very nicely with this USA roster. Last but not least is Team Vietnam. I'm very excited with this roster, not just because that they've won second place in last PNC 2022, but because Vietnamese team, especially Cerberus Esports, was the team that stood out the most in PGS2. Yeah, and Hemos this year is having MVP type numbers across the every tournament he's playing and he's playing out of his mind of course you've got Chloris and Hisaki coming back two phenomenal players in their own right and then duck juice who's having a wonderful year for the expendables high expectations for vietnam this year see if they go higher first place <laughs> so let's move on to some checkpoints of pnc 2023 to better enjoy first checkpoint is the rivalries. We have a lot of rivalries coming in in PNC 2023 and first to say would be the top three teams from the PNC 2022. Yeah, so first up of course our first place team, Team UK, who came out the gates just so strong. Like right off the bat, they were working together as a team, they really were on the same page and had a great game plan, allowed them to get the wins. Yeah, they were really strong in Erangel, especially. Yes, very good on Erangel. And now with Vikendi coming in here, this is something that a lot of teams and pros really talk about, that when a new map comes in, the teams that can figure it out quick will often be the teams that are up at the top of the leaderboard. What about Team Vietnam? This roster is very strong. Yeah, absolutely right. They were really good on Tego so far this year. So this is a team to watch out for. If they can find that success on Vikendi as well, they should be dominant. The last team is Team Brazil. We don't have um, recent records about these players, so how do you see? Yeah, this has been kind of a down year for Brazil as a region. High expectations after last year's strong performance at PNC, uh, but let's see if they can somehow bounce back, you know, as a region. Love to see some more chicken dinner sambas after some wins, that'd be a lot of fun. For second, Rivalry League could be teammates to enemies. Players from FaZe Clan, Sonics, and Luminosity Gaming have split up to different teams this time. Yeah, this is one of my favorite things about PNC, is getting to see these players who normally are on the same teams play against each other. Australia versus US, a big storyline from 2022. You've got players like Kickstart and Flood, uh, who used to be on the same team playing against each other. You've got, of course, Tiggleton and HWIN playing against each other, and Trimzy, of course. So. Last time Team USA won this battle against Australia, can they do it again? And there is the same situation in Europe too. Face Clan, Gustav and Fax have split it up to Team UK and Team Denmark. Yeah, how exciting is this? We get to see this rivalry for the first time uh, with these Face Clan players. So I'm really excited about this. These are really, really good players uh, who are definitely gonna want to really showcase their performances. A lot of pride on the line.
So next is the MVP of Rivalry League. Maybe this time between Tickleton and Seoul from Team Australia and Team Korea. These two players won MVP in each PGS1 and PGS2. Yeah, in my mind, undoubtedly the two best players in the world right now. Tickleton coming off that PGS2 win. You've got to be giving him the slight edge, I think. Even though Seoul is a phenomenal all-around player and kind of the IGL for Donawa as well, maybe that helps balance it out a bit. But Seoul has yet to win an international event. So if he can win one here, then maybe we can start to see him climb a little bit closer to Tickleton. Maybe other player can win the MVP in PNC 2023, but let's see how these rivalries come out in PNC 2023. Our next checkpoint is the new variables, and first new variable would be the new map. Weekendy is coming into PNC 2023 for the first time in PUBG Esports, and how do you think about this map? Oh man, there's a lot going on here with this new map. Great map, but there's a lot of new features here. I mean, you've got the polar bears, you've got the secret rooms, there's the thermal scope. I mean, it's just crazy the amount of things going on here. The gondolas, so a lot that the players are going to have to adapt to, on top of it just being a new map, learning all the new terrain and that kind of thing. And always be careful for the polar bears. Um, next, Miramar. We had a lot of updates in Miramar in 25.1 updates, so how do you think about the update? Yeah, there's a lot of really good changes here to Miramar. Yes, some of the terrain and the cities have changed a bit. There's zip lines now as well. Uh, you've got the big sandstorm coming for you, so you got to watch out for that. Uh, but I think players uh, and viewers are really going to like these changes to Miramar. We also have new weapons coming out in 2023 PUBG Esports, and we have witnessed a lot of interesting moments out of these new weapons. Yeah, it seems like Tiggleton has really embraced the mortar. Uh, obviously, we saw the incredible moments with him at PGS2. He's also been practicing a lot, I've heard. Uh, also, Loki with the Panzerfaust, absolutely incredible. Uh, some of the plays he has made. Uh, so yeah, players are already making great use of these new items. The last checkpoint is the team seeking their first PNC title. We have to talk about Team Korea but on this point. Um, they were always good, but not enough to win the title. And I think the most important part for this was not winning an, a single chicken dinner. Yeah, exactly. This is a team that absolutely will want to win it here on their home country's territory. But a Korean team hasn't won a global tournament since 2019. It's been a drought for them. They've had a lot of strong finishes. So could this be their moment to finally break that curse of not being able to win some global events? So Team USA and Team China also would like to gain that title because they have been performing very well this year. But in PNC 2022, we had to witness the constant rivalry between Team USA and Team Vietnam, which came from PNC 2019 and also Team China hindered by Team Thailand in a lot of moments. Yeah, exactly. It's been a bit tough for them in PNCs in the past, but in this year, China wins PGS 1, USA wins PGS 2 with 17 Gaming and the Sonics. So you got to feel like maybe this could be the year for one of these regions. Yeah, if they can't avoid it, they should enjoy it. We've gone through all the information of the 16 participating teams and also the checkpoints to better enjoy PNC 2023. And based on all the information, we want to share our top three picks. Here's our picks. The Pick'em Challenge is back in PNC 2023. This is the first Pick'em Challenge in 2023. I bet that a lot of fans would be expecting it. Um, you can buy the PNC special items in in-game stores and you can get voting coupon and pick the teams that you cheer for and you can get reward, EPs and a lot of reward items. So please check the in-game esports tab. Also, by purchasing the PNC items, you can add on to the total price pool. So, price pool that players get would be increased. So, don't forget to participate in Pick'em Challenge. And of course, we've got fantasy going once again at twire.gg. As per always, you get to pick your four favorite, well, maybe not favorite players, four players that'll fit into your budget of $100,000 or less. So, you gotta make a team kind of balancing things out. Uh, with that money that's available. Of course, the better the player is, the more they're going to cost. So you got to kind of figure that out and you got to pick those players based on how many chicken dinners they're going to get, how much damage they're going to do. Things like that will increase your score. 
And of course, if you do really well, you can win stuff like G coins and in-game items. So make sure you go over to twire.gg and sign up for Fantasy for PNC 2023. So this time in PNC 2023, we've created the special merch that you can buy online and on site. Here is this special bag. And we have the cheer towel for all 16 teams. We also have a lot of these earrings that you can buy. And what we're wearing is also sole, the hats, t-shirts, and this hoodie. We have more than this in PUBG Sports store where you can find the pop-up sites in pubgsports.com. So please visit the online store or on-site store to get what you want. So today we've covered all about PNC 2023 participating teams to watch points and pick them challenge and everything. How was it today? Oh yeah, great. As always, I'm really excited. I love this event. This is one of my favorite times of the year uh, to get to see the best of the best in the world compete against each other for their regional pride. So PNC 2023 will be held from September 15th to 17th in Sangam Africa Colosseum. We have a lot of on-site activities too, so please visit if you can. And if not, please show your support through watching live streaming. So stay tuned for PNC 2023 and see which team will be the best team in PNC 2023. See you in Seoul. Hi guys, it's Bello. I'm here at the first floor of the PNC 2023 menu and I'm kind of surprised that all the fans are here already. So, 1층에 있는 팬 존에는 PNC is known for its uniforms, right? This venue, the first floor, is the fan zone. It has the special event, and there's also going to be like a short meet and greet every day of the tournament. So, 여기 옆에 팬분들이 좀 계신데 먼저 구경하시는 거 한번 만나보러 갈까요? Let's head over to meet some fans checking the uniforms out. He's been a fan of Loki from 2017 and he's here to, you know, give Loki his full heart support. So, oh my gosh, he's excited for today's game. Thank you so much. Then, you need to buy a uniform and you can buy a uniform. I want to ask if he's planning to buy anything other than the uniforms here. He wants to get the defending champion UK uniforms as well as like a windbreaker, something practical. Thank you so much. I'm going to the I'm going to go to the I'm going to Let's head over to see, meet some other fans. Hi! Hi! Hello! 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 Yeah, of course. My favorite player, his uh, name is Feeny. Feeny is my favorite player. And uh, the Danish substitute, Rookie 
Today, we'll be walking you through some gunplay adjustments and a brand new feature that's bound to sprinkle a dash of vibrancy as well as a bit more wow into your weapon skin wardrobe. Let's start with the Dragonoff. Previously introduced as a chance-based damage weapon that you might have tried on the 25.1 test server, it is now ready to make its live debut with its damage carefully refined based on your invaluable feedback. By removing the probabilistic damage system and readjusting the damage per distance, the Dragonoff is now ready to provide a variety of fair, dynamic gunplay scenarios. Now moving on to the AUG, it's time to restore equilibrium. We've heard your insights about its overperformance and recognized the potential imbalance. Initially, we did boost its power to encourage the use of 5.56mm weapons and catalyze a shift in the gunplay meta. However, in our pursuit of fair fight, we've decided to slightly reduce the AUG's RPM, which should be enough to align it more closely with other options in the game, and enhance the overall balance. Next up, let's swing the spotlight onto our upgraded weapons system. Meet Chroma, a feature allowing you to alter the color and visual effects of your weapons. Chroma includes changes to weapon appearance, attachments, death crates, and kill feeds. And if you possess the appropriate progressive weapon skin, applying this feature is as simple as clicking an icon. Update 25.2 has more to offer, so make sure to delve into the patch notes for all the details. And as always, we'll see you on the battlegrounds.
I'm here today at Silverstone, the home of UK Motorsport. I've been invited by the makers of PUBG to take part in a mystery challenge, and I can't wait to find out what it is. Today you'll be driving the Aston Martin DBX 707 under the guidance of a former Formula One world champion, Damon Hill. Wow. Welcome to Silverstone. Do you want to know about the DBX 707? I would love to. Come with me. If you're not careful, you can, you can make the car get very out of control. If I turn left too quickly, oh. right, it's, yeah. it's not good. This is unlike anything I expected. Now it was my turn. Damon gave me plenty of advice on the best racing lines to take and the braking points to hit. So let's see how I did. Okay, Jackie, off you go. Nice and easy to start with though, okay? I hope I haven't frightened him. Oh, that sound is absolutely insane. This is the world's fastest luxury SUV, so it's perfect for the multi-terrain driving you have to do in PUBG. But would it be a match for this iconic circuit? Learning from a Formula One champion is something I don't think a lot of people get to do. It was almost a too good to be true experience. I almost felt a little bit like a dream. The car actually makes a great addition to the game because instead of having a low sports car, this is an SUV. So you get the off-road capabilities, which is very much needed in PUBG. It's, it's definitely the most practical and, and overall most usable special vehicle skin in the game. As you can see, there are so many customization options with the Aston Martin DBX 707 in Battlegrounds. And not just on the bodywork. Despite its size, the power allows you to land some pretty epic jumps. All in all, it's a really exciting addition to the game, so you should definitely use your Crafter Pass to access it in-game now. I've been invited by the makers of PUBG to take part in a mystery challenge, and I can't wait to find out what it is. Today you'll be driving the Aston Martin DBX 707 under the guidance of a former Formula One world champion, Damon Hill. Wow. Welcome to Silverstone. Do you want to know about the DBX 707? I would love to. Come with me. Well, here is Jackie, the most powerful luxury SUV in the world. All four liters of it, twin turbo V8. It's got about 700 horsepower and it goes up to 100 in about seven seconds. That's fast. Got a lot of performance. A massive grill. Yeah, well, you've got a big engine. You've got to keep it cool. It was such a privilege to be shown this car by a motor racing legend. This is the world's fastest luxury SUV, so it's perfect for the multi-terrain driving you have to do in PUBG. But would it be a match for this iconic circuit?
And what is up, everybody? Welcome to PNC 2023, live here in Seoul, South Korea, as we get ready to kick off one of the best events in PUBG eSports. I am Paper Thin. Joining me for the entirety of this event will be State. We are going to be bringing you guys six games per day of PUBG eSports action. State, first of all, it's great to be back with you, my friend. Can't wait to get this started. Yeah, man, I am absolutely pumped. It's been so long since I've been able to cast competitive PUBG, and now to do it here in Seoul, Korea, on one of the biggest stages at the PUBG Nations Cup 2023. It's an honor, paper thin, and I could not be more excited to get these games underway. Yeah, man, we're bringing the PCS Asia crew back, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We're really excited for these games. We've got so much to break down and talk to you about uh, here in the pre-show, so we've got the games coming up in just a little bit, but we're going to get you started. We're going to get everything laid out for you, so you know the teams, you know the uh, you know event order, you know the maps. We know we're going to give you everything that you could ever want here. We've got a lot of exciting things coming your way. Yeah, a lot of shakeups. We have new teams here at the PNC, which we'll talk about in a brief moment. We have a new map debuting here in competitive PUBG, which should be a lot of fun to see. And really, I feel like this tournament is going to be kind of a wild card in terms of performances. As we look here at the overview, 16 countries represented here in the PUBG Nations Cup. Yeah, exactly. This is really cool. And we've got two new uh, countries represented here for the first time, India and Denmark. Talk about them later, but very excited. Returning champions, the UK, of course, going to be keeping our eyes on them and the hometown favorites. South Korea going to be gunning for a title, their first one. They've come close, but never been able to win. Yeah, a lot of fans of South Korea actually expecting them to emerge victorious here on the home soil, but it's an arena where Korea's really struggled in the past. You know, going back to PCS Asia, they really had a hard time even winning that against Chinese teams. So now you're on this bigger stage, the PUBG Nations Cup. The question I have is whether the hometown heroes are actually going to be able to deliver a win for their fans. Yeah, exactly. And that Chinese team is absolutely a force to be reckoned with. Here's the map order, guys. I it's going to be the same all three days. Miramar, Miramar, Tego, and as State mentioned earlier, Vikendi. For the first time ever, we are going to be seeing Vikendi in PUBG Esports. Very excited for that. Then two Erangels. But uh, really, I mean, all eyes on Vikendi here. Yeah, Vikendi is absolutely going to steal the show. I've been playing a lot of Vikendi over the past week. And man, I mean, it's wild. You got those bears running around the map. I love what the dev team did in kind of giving Vikendi a new facelift, a new identity. It's so much fun to play. And now we're going to find out exactly what these players can do on this new map. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be super exciting. And of course, the prize pool, $300,000 plus the Pick'em crowdfunding. Uh, so make sure you guys get into the PUBG client, buy those PNC skins and support the player, support the event, uh, a portion of the prize pool does go to them and support them. So absolutely a lot of extra money uh, for the players to be made. Uh, you know, just winning is nice, but you know, that extra little little extra bit helps. Every little bit helps. Yeah, of course, crowdfunding. It's the best way to support your favorite game, support your favorite players, your favorite eSport here. As you know, $300,000, not a lot to scoff at. That's a no. big prize pool for these guys. And I guarantee you that every single team, every single player here in the arena is ready to compete, ready to bring their best, not just for national pride, but for that big prize purse. Exactly. And this is the event that I think, you know, outside of PGC, every player wants to win. Every player wants to have this one uh, to support their players. And so speaking of these teams, speaking of these players, let's look at some of their power rankings. Let's kind of see if we can judge exactly, you know, what they're going to look like, how we expect them to do. And coming out the gate strong, the United States. Now these, we should go over how this is calculated. So this is all from the Twire uh, scores. So it's things like survivability and all those things kind of put together. We average it out. And I think, unsurprisingly to me, United States on top. Yeah, United States, absolutely the team to beat, but also South Korea placing really high. So 93.1 overall. Rounding out, we have Vietnam and the returning champions, United Kingdom, they're at 83.2. But America at 97.6 points, really in a league of their own yeah. right now here in the power rankings. And we'll see if that holds true as the event starts to unfold, because as we said, we have a new, a new map that's getting thrown into the mix here. Our rosters are being shuffled, and it'll be hard to see exactly What's going to happen here? And now the power ranking for the players, Paper Thin. Yeah, and right now, your PGS 1 and PGS 2 MVPs, respectively, Tickleton and Seoul, uh, are your top players. Unsurprisingly, these two players have been outrageously good the entire year. Not too far behind, Aang's left, the superstar from China, and then the three American players uh, really boosting that overall average for their squad. Yeah, I mean, having H-Win, Trimsy, and Kickstart back to back to back at 4, 5, 6. I'm looking at this sheet, and... We have all four American players in the top 10 of the individual power rankings. A slam dunk for them coming into this one. And even some Danish players, Gustav right there rounding out 
at rank 11. You know, Denmark, it's their first showing here in the PUBG Nations Cup. So all eyes on Gustav to see if he can deliver for his home country. Yeah, exactly. You know, that FaZe Clan superstar IGL uh, looking to really see if they can make a mark here. Oh, or, wow. Oh, man. It's not even fair. That's, that's unbelievable. That's like all the rest of the teams. I don't even think the rest of the teams combined even get close to China. I think it might be like half of the, the points that China has right now. <laughs> that is absurd. But I mean, the Chinese roster, crazy show. Aix left and Longsker, that's a star-studded roster. I mean, it's a dream team, basically. And China, historically, they have competed very well. Maybe not in the PUBG Nations Cup, but here within the Asia region. You know, in PCS Asia's, China was always emerging victorious. And no surprise now, 1.26 million points on the Pick'em Challenge. The fans clearly favoring China here. No doubt, and rightly so. I, I mean, to be honest, even if, you're, even if you're not from China, you should potentially be picking this team. Like yeah. you mentioned, star-studded roster, absolutely wants to continue their dominance uh, regionally uh, over some of these other teams. But it, I, it, I tell you what, I think those top five are pretty accurate. Top six, uh, frankly, top seven, all pretty much about where I would rank them in some order or another. So the fans, uh, I think they really know what's up, but a lot of a lot of favorites uh, for China who, man, that team could absolutely do some stuff here. It's a very different China team than we saw last year, too. Yeah, it's possible they could run away with this, but I got to say that top eight, I think it's a little bit closer skill-wise than the Pick'em Challenge indicates. I feel like this is not something that China is just going to run away with right from the get-go. I feel like it's going to be very competitive, especially with all the mix-ups that we're having in here, having Vikendi in the pool. As you were saying in the interviews before, you know, Vikendi, you know, the team that performs the best on that map overall in the tournament, I mean, they might just be dominating every other single team when it comes to Vikendi. And considering we're playing that three maps out of, what, 18? That's a lot of points to add up. Exactly, like 18% or whatever, 17% of the total point pool is going to be on that map. So that could be the decider uh, in who's going to win. We saw this at PGS2 uh, with Tego. Uh, teams like the Sonics and Cerberus were doing really, really good on it. Uh, you know, Theraton 5 as well. So that can really kind of make a difference uh, in the overall kind of structure because the teams on Aaron Gall and Miramar, they have that map pretty well figured. Oh, well, well I, I should hold my, I should kind of <laughs> hold my tongue here a little bit. It is the new Miramar, slightly different uh, than what we have seen before, of course. But, you know, a lot of things to look at here, a lot of points to focus on uh, for this as well. But I can't wait to see exactly how this is all going to shape out. But let's look at, you know, let's look at how the teams have kind of risen and fall throughout PNC history. So. Yeah, it's been three years from PNC 2019 to 2022. And in that time, a bit of a shakeup with the UK emerging from 15th place in PNC 2019 to first last year. The reigning champs here going to be looking to try and repeat up 14 overall in the standings. And also looking, I mean, Brazil had a fantastic showing. They had a podium finish, top three, Australia as well in seventh place, a lot of eyes on them. Yeah, and I think all three of these teams should absolutely be considered uh, potential, you know, uh, contenders uh, for this title this time around. On the other side of the coin, some some teams that have fallen a little bit, Germany, I think could bounce back this time. I think they've yeah. got a really good roster, got some of the Ascend boys in there. Uh, we should mention that Kowo is gonna be playing today uh, for them. The coach who was supposed to be in there, Tizzer is gonna be swapping out. Uh, also for Australia, we should mention that Kong uh, will be subbed out for Waikikamukau. Uh, the goaded PUBG esports name, the goaded esports name just in general. Yeah, there's there's, there's no the name better than Waikikamu Cow as we look here at the focus point here on these top teams. United Kingdom, of course, the reigning champions, Vardfex, Honey Badger, and T Bone. I got T Bone on my fantasy pick, so I'm hoping he does well at Vietnam. I mean, they've had some really good runs so far in PNCs, and I would not be surprised to see them make another podium finish here at the end of this weekend. Especially with the way they've been playing internationally yeah. in the PGS events like this. This Vietnam team can frag out. Uh, you know, yes, Ty Khan's not playing. Like a lot of people are going to look uh, and see that he's not as far as doesn't matter. Hemos has been better this year than Ty Khan overall. Uh, so this is a absolutely nutty squad. Speaking of Hemos, he's one of our players that we're going to be focusing on. Yeah, the focus point for the players. PNC 2022 MVP Vard. He GS1 MVP Seoul representing his home country. He said in an interview he is so excited. You know, his name is Seoul, and now here he is in Seoul representing his country on the biggest PUBG stage. He's going to be a player to look out to, as well as Himas, who has just been absolutely popping off MVP in the winner's bracket of PGS2 and the most kills. And same with Singleton, PGS2 MVP and the most kills. I mean, these guys, just absolute stars. And, you know, for Great Britain, for South Korea, for Vietnam, and for Australia, they got to look to these guys to really carry the load.
Yeah, I mean, Tiggleton here, you know, if he can win this event, is going to put himself in the category as one of the best players, if not the best ever, yeah. uh, to play PUBG Esports now that he's got, you know, the PGIS win, the PGS2 win. But let's look at some of our other players that have played in every single PNC so far. We've got Anonix and Loki for Korea. Vard, who's been just absolutely goaded for UK. Luke 12 for Australia has just been a superstar time and time again. And Leo, the you know, the Dark Horse team in Chinese Taipei, once again representing his team. Yeah, it shows a lot of skill to be able to represent your country in the PUBG Nations Cup time and time and time again as, you know, 2019, 2022, now 2023, to be consistently selected to your national roster to represent you on the biggest PUBG stage here, it's just fantastic for these guys. Exactly. It's so cool that they've been able to have these careers uh, that have been this long. Now, of course, there's fantasy as well, guys. So yeah. you want to get on this, twire.gg. Get on that website, create an account if you haven't already, and you can win some prizes. Here's the format for how this fantasy league works. You pick four players, okay, you get points based on how well they do. Okay, you get two points for each kill, five for survivals, you get some points for damage uh, for each match. And then if they die quickly, you lose some points. But your captain, if you pick the player that you think is going to perform the best, you get a little bit of a bonus multiplier there. Yeah, 1.3x. And I mean, really, it's kind of similar to the way you would expect man of the match to be picked. It's really all of the critical points right there. It's kills, it's damages. Okay, here, here we go. Here we go. I look, look, at so your, look at your angry. Look at your. This is your game face, man. You're look, like, you're ready to mess some people up in fantasy, dude. No, I'm telling you, I don't know why they picked a picture of me that I just look so <laughs> upset. But that's probably the way that I'm gonna look at the end of this pick'em challenge. Yeah, because you lose every to me. single time that we go, I go up against Paper Thin. He always edges me out, man. Paper Thin's always emerging victorious. But I'm feeling pretty good about my roster. Right. You know, Tivo, Himos, Loki, and Show. It's a good team. It's a pretty good lineup. I like that you're going with Show. We should mention a lot of PUBG Sports fans. Fans are going to be scratching their heads a little bit, saying, didn't Show retire? Yeah, but he had to come back. He was going to be part of this team, uh, but because of some issues with visas and things like that, uh, Show was able to slot in uh, for a player that could not make it. So exciting to see uh, a legend of PUBG Esports come back, uh, you know, retired after PGC last year. Uh, but still, I think this is a great pickup. This guy is absolutely nuts. He's, his entire career has just been absolutely wonderful to watch. So I think he's a good pick. Um, I, I really kind of went with the, the four teams that I think are going to be the best four teams at this event. Okay. And tried to pick a player from each one is basically my methodology here. I was thinking kind of the same thing right there. But with China, I really do expect them to do yeah. well with the roster that they have. I mean, it just top to bottom is absolutely crazy. And that's not just because they have crazy 1-1-2 on their <laughs> roster. <laughs> oh. They are fantastic here as we look at the top 16 picked players. Tiggleton at number one right there with a 35K. That's a hefty price tag, over 33%. But yeah, as you said, it's worth, worth it. it. I mean, Tiggleton has been uh, arguably the best player, not arguably, his statistics prove it. He has been the best player in the world uh, so far this year. And he must, you know, the way he's been playing, the way he stepped up his game this year, I mean, this guy has been outrageously good. So really curious to see how this all goes. Uh, of course, all I care about is beating Kalaris. So that's 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 all I want. I, I don't, he's not here, so it's, it makes it a little less fun. But as long as as long as I can take him down, uh, he, he can go down. So, of course, guys, if you're watching from home, you can participate and win some prizes. They're really easy to win. All you got to do is watch. You just got to watch us on Twitch. Connect your PUBG account to your Twitch account. You just got to spend like, I think it's like two hours or something watching PNC and then you get some points. You watch for like four hours, you get more points. That's all you got to do. You get eSports points. You go into the eSports tab up in the top right corner of your screen. Get some sweet skins. Uh, of course, we'd love it if you bought the skins as well, supported the team, supported the players. Again, a portion of all that uh, goes into the prize pool. Also, you can create your own fantasy league it's on Twire.gg. Dude, there's so much going on. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. If you're not on Twire.gg, go ahead and get on there. Make your fantasy team. You know, the day's about to start. Get that lineup up there and see how many points you can earn. Yeah. I, I love these fantasy things. And you can win in-game prizes, right, as yeah. well on Twire.gg. So people know, like, if you're up in the top of the global leaderboard, you actually win in-game prizes. So you got to try to shoot for it. Uh, I've made it once. I think it was like PN or P, no PCS like four or five APAC or something. I got like six. But Why is not bad? Wait, I got six G globally. Coin. I got some G coin. It was sick. Six globally. I got like six thousand G coin. Wow, that's incredible. I bought a actually. lot of, I bought a lot of uh, uh, hideout crates, man. <laughs> like I got. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna mop the floor with me on fantasy picks yeah, this weekend, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can feel it already. I, you know, I'm. I don't know. Maybe maybe this will be your time. Maybe you'll get lucky and. I don't think Maybe so. Maybe he must will pop off. We'll see. <laughs> Dude, Maybe he must pops off. Yeah, that's true. Okay, guys. Well, we are ready to get PNC 2023 underway, guys. We are going to go down to the stage and meet our teams.
All right, we are ready to meet and greet our teams on the stage. Introducing them will be Caster Park, the legend of Korean esports. Absolutely just the GOAT, the GOAT, the GOAT, the GOAT. Love this guy. First up, it is going to be Team UK very soon, I believe. But yeah, here comes Caster Park. He is. Just an absolute legend. This guy, I, what can you say about From StarCraft to PUBG and a million other esports, he is a hero of the Korean scene. An honor to have him here on stage at PNC Korea. All right, so we're going to bring the teams out and introduce them one by one. And we will find out very shortly. I might have uh, spoiled the first team a little bit here, but shouldn't surprise you too much. All right, and first up, you're defending PNC Champions UK, a star-studded roster. Honey Badger coming in to fill this out. This time around, Fex, Vard, T-Bone returning. Miraku is the coach. This team absolutely should be considered one of the favorites to win this. I have high hopes for them to really continue to pop off. Uh, they played so well together last year. It was a really a team effort, the way that they're able to frag out. And, you know, Honey Badger, a lot of pressure onto him to get it done. And second onto this stage, Team Argentina, coming out off a ninth and eighth place finish in PNC 2019 and 2022, are going to try and crack that top four here in the podium. A lot of pressure, a lot of hope for these guys from their fans back home. It is DraftKing, Emix, Rebox D, and Ale. And just like those other guys on stage, man, they have the potential to frag out. And you know they're looking for performance better than top eight here. They want to show their true potential at PNC 2023. Oh, all right, these guys, I have a lot of faith in this team. I think this team could be really good. You got Y Kikamu Kao stepping in. Kong has been nuts this year. <laughs> the cow always delivers. Tiggleton, the best player in the world right now. I think this team should be somewhere in the top five, guaranteed at a higher finish, very, very likely. Luke 12 and Flood have always just been absolutely nutty players uh, over in the Americas region. So this this is a squad that I have a lot of high hopes for. And now entering the stage, Team Brazil. Third place finishers from PNC 2022, skyrocketing from their performance in 2019, where they only placed 13th. And now they're looking at something better than just top three. They're looking here at a championship, and this lineup absolutely has the potential to deliver it. Sparking, LFP1, Vinny and Haven. You can see how happy they are to be on stage. Of course, the coach Ribbon as well, as the fireworks get going, and these guys have their eyes on the prize. They want to lift that trophy when all is said and done here this weekend. Team Canada. 
Look, I got to say about Team Canada, I think people might be underrating them. There's a lot of really, really smart players on this team. The fragging power might not be as what you think, you know, as high as what you think about some of the other squads, but this is a team small of wily veterans, great players uh, historically, just guys who've been around for a really, really long time. I mean, Keenan, Finna, Shinboy, Adam, Sock filling in here as the coach. I, I really think these guys can do well. I really think they can get a top eight finish, and then they're trying to utilize the <laughs> ball bruh from Adam. Let's go, boys. Here's our Yosef Bunch of Tim, Tim Chungu. And now coming onto this stage, a titan of Asian PUBG Esports. They have always delivered here on the biggest stage, whether it be PCS7 Asia, PCS6 Asia. China has always emerged victorious. And now once again here, live in Seoul, Korea, a lineup that is going to be hard at top. You got Aches left, Longsker, Show Crazy 112, and their head coach. This is a fully MVP squad. And I mean, we're talking about underdogs. I feel like anyone that doesn't have China in the top three right now of their personal power rankings, you are choosing them as an underdog because this team absolutely can win the championship here this weekend. Team Chinese Taipei! A great team, a veteran team. A team that absolutely can surprise you. A team that can pop off at any given moment. Underdogs for sure, but absolutely a star-studded roster. Pongsker coming in here for the first time. Leo, Xavier, Zendon, Mao Rush going to be coaching. Three of those names you guys know and love if you've been watching PUBG Esports. You can see their history stretching all the way back to the early days. With Pongsker stepping in, let's see if he can bring the extra juice they need to maybe finally get towards the top of the rankings here at PNC. Team Denmark! And now their first time on stage here in the PUBG Nations Cup. It's going to be Team Denmark. And although it is their first time on stage, these guys are PUBG Esports veterans. They have a lot of experience, a lot of skill. And it might be their debut performance here at the PNC, but they absolutely have what it takes to surprise you. You can see it right there on the screen. Bimi, Kalib, Gustav, Kino. Absolutely a great lineup here. An honor to have him competing in Seoul, Korea. This is a team that may have had a disappointing finish last year in PNC, but I think this is a much improved roster with the Ascend boys coming in. Kowo, yep, going to be stepping in, but I can tell you guys, he's no slouch as a player, a phenomenal coach as well, and the genius that is, it's Chris going to be leading the way here. Brexco coming back as well. Uh, this is, in my opinion, a team that should not be taken lightly. They love to play the edge, and they are masterminds of PUBG Esports. They will likely play unlike anything you have ever seen. And now entering the stage for the first time at PNC, much like their peers from Denmark, it's going to be Team India. Salman Toretto, unforgiven translucent, their head coach, Ruxile. This is going to be really a wild card team here at PNC. I've heard from some pro players backstage that Team India, they've been doing well in scrims. It's hard to say whether they're going to be first place or 16th place here, but they're showing a lot of chemistry, a lot of life on stage right now. They seem confident and happy to be here, and it might be the ultimate underdog tale if India can come through here with a podium finish in their first showing at PNC. And now coming to the stage, Team Japan. This is a team that has struggled at PNC historically, but a lot of really good players, again, veteran players on this team. Run AX, Imhak, Kane, and Pure Boy, guys who have been around for a long, long time in PUBG Esports, some of the best fraggers that this region has to offer. Can they finally really show their stuff? Can they get higher than their best place finish at 2019, 11th place? They've won some chicken dinner, some big matches at PNC. Will this be a year where they can crack the top eight and really show that Japan has what it takes to do well at PNC and do well internationally? Here's your two bunches. Team 
Tagore! And now coming onto the stage, Team Thailand, another wild card roster coming in here, but they got top six in PNC 2019, top 10 in PNC 2022, Norins, Tanadol, Puet, and Rotisserie Jr., as I'm gonna like to call him here, as he tries to get those chicken dinners. Do not count these guys out. They absolutely have what it takes to emerge victorious here with a podium finish. It's all eyes are gonna be on them to see if they can come through here on the big stage at PNC. Team Turkey, a team that a lot of people have high expectations for. This may be their opportunity to have their best finish yet. 12th and 14th are their best are their finishes so far at PNCs. But no doubt about it, this team can frag. The Howl Boys plus Code Marco, the Mad Laza, Schofield, Apocalypse gonna be coaching. Look, I, I, we watched what they could do at PGS1. This team is really, really strong top to bottom. They can frag out of their minds. You should be believing in this squad as a potential top five, even a winner. Uh, definitely Turkey A. Got to keep your eyes on them throughout this event. And representing the United States of America on stage is a team that tops the power rankings right now at number one. H-Win, Shrimsy, Snakers kickstart with their head coach Trevor. This is a team, I mean, every single player in this lineup has got to be top 10 in the power rankings individually. They are star-studded. They are the favorites to win PNC 2023. And with all of America behind them, their fans watching, from home, the pressure's gonna be on. Can they live up to the expectations that they've been able to set here at the PNC and come home as champions? Now coming from Vietnam, these four players have been absolutely nuts throughout the entire year, throughout the last couple of years, Vietnam continues to rise globally at PUBG Esports events. Will this be their chance? Second place last year, came close, had a tremendous final day. Fourth place of 2019. Will this be the culmination of a continued upward trend for this Vietnam squad? Hemos, Hisaki, Clories, and Duckjuice. These guys are fraggers. You had better watch out for them. They should be favorites to win this event. And at last, it is time to introduce the hometown heroes from Seoul, Korea, representing Korea. It's going to be Seoul, Loki, and Nonix Heaven, and their head coach, Sonic. I mean, these guys, everybody here in the stadium is going to be cheering for them to emerge victorious in first place. Korea, for so long, and PCS struggled to get that first place victory. At PNC, they were second place in 2019. In 2022, they were fourth place. And here on their home soil in 2023, they want to come home as the champions and do their countrymen, their fans, proud. All right, well, that is going to do it. We have found out all of our 16 teams and players, who they are. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was a great opening ceremony there. Got a really good look at them. Love that little dance at the end from Korea. Uh, so, so funny. Okay, guys, that is the official cue. We are ready to start PNC 2023. Let's get it down to the stage. Oh, 
the world already. It is time. We are getting PNC 2022 started. So hold on to your seats. The action is about to begin. Oh, I feel like the people who are 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 the people ยังได้ยินเสียงเชียร์ของแฟนๆ PNC ปีแทนแล้วครับครั้งที่แล้วเราตอบแทนเสียงของแฟนๆไม่ได้ครับแต่ว่าครั้งนี้เราจะเอาโทรวันกลับไปตอบแทนครับผมเล่าว่า first time เลยครับเพื่อ enemies ก็ไม่รู้ว่าเราจะเล่นแบบไหนแล้วเราจะทำอะไรก็ได้ทุกอย่างที่เราทำเราจะทำเพื่อให้ประเทศไทยของเราได้มีความสุขมากที่สุดในโลกนี้ครับ PNC Always the biggest dream of mine, almost to get to represent your country. It's something like completely different than just playing for a club. Whether it would be like in like that, just in anything. Um, so I'm very excited to play here. Uh, this is my third time to represent Taipei. Ah, also thank you for your support. Ah, we will be there. Long time no see, we are back. 国際大会に出る機会が以前に比べて少しだけ減ったなっていうのは感じているので少ないチャンスを少しでもものにできるよう一つ一つの試合に取り組みたいと思います。I think individually we're all extremely like skilled, and we're just we always remain calm, and there's no like no one's like shouting or anything. We just we're just calm. We just play our game and yeah, play to our strengths. And I think the chemistry should be relatively the same because T-Bone is like our main caller, and then the rest of us like kind of help. So I feel like the dynamic in our team won't change that much. So it should be pretty similar, I would say. khi ra thế giới thì Việt Nam của mình bị đánh giá rất là thấp nên lần này bọn mình sẽ chứng minh cho mọi người thấy là Việt Nam mình mạnh như thế nào. Vim pedir para todos vocês acompanharem os jogos, torcerem pela nossa seleção. Ano passado foi por muito pouco e hoje a gente vai vir com o foco dobrado, com a vontade dobrada e dar o nosso máximo para manter o Brasil lá em cima, que é onde a amarelinha pertence. Ich glaube, dass wir letztes Jahr einfach ein viel schwächeres Team gestellt haben und ich denke, das wird sich dieses Jahr ändern. Bei uns zählt nicht jeder einzelne Spieler, sondern die Mannschaft. So going into PNC 2023, especially because of our uh, last year's performance, we're definitely looking to finish strong and our ultimate goal is always going to be to win. America won this tournament on top. Uh, it's just a win. That's why we play every tournament. Uh, it doesn't matter the size of the tournament, if it's small or big. Every single one of us, every single one of players on this team will compete, and it's just a win. For this Nations Cup, it's important to remember that with all these all-stars, no player is bigger than the team. So to all the all-stars out there, I hope you guys are supporting your team to make sure that you're the best you can be. All right, boys, the party is over. Team Denmark is here. 4년 전에 놓쳤던 트로피 이번 PNC에서 꼭 제자리로 돌려놓겠습니다. Obviously, every game. <laughs> I guess just best of luck, really. Well, we got to hear from our players and a lot of confidence coming out from a lot of these teams, of course, and everybody here.
to come home with that championship, with that trophy. State, man, this is going to be a really exciting event. We're getting close to getting into the games. What are your thoughts coming into this first one? We're going right to Miramar, a new map, kind of, sort of, a little bit, but it it's should be really exciting. It's refreshed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to get things underway, and especially hearing from the players in the interviews, every single one wants to compete to bring home their country a championship. It's different than playing for a club, playing for a team, playing for a clan. The fact that you're representing your home country here at the PNC, all these teams, they want to come up on top. And I lo love what Shrimzy said, especially in that interview. We were laughing a little bit about it. I mean, the players here, they're ready to compete. And when everybody has that singular drive, everyone wants to be the champion more so than ever. It just makes for a fantastic competition. Yeah, it, this is the one that everybody wants to win. This is the feather in the cap that you'll never forget if you can come home with that championship. And so many of these teams and players have been close. Uh, very few. Uh, can claim to have won that prize before. In fact, only three uh, that are here today have ever done it. And those are the three of the players from Team UK. It's just Honey Badger, who wasn't playing last year. It was Michael instead uh, coming in here. So certainly all eyes going to be on them. But a lot of other teams are kind of reaching up into, uh, you know, people's, you know, favorites. And, of course, guys, by the way, we've got some skins. We got the PN, PGC, excuse me, 2022 Navi Bundle. It's going to be available the team that won the incredible run that they had at PGC 22. Now you can kind of celebrate it if you're a Navi fan or if you're not. You got to check the skin set out. It the, is absolutely sick. The team colors look good. So, of course, the skins are going to look very good. And, yeah, I love ducking out. Decking out my guns, decking out my character. One of the funnest parts of PUBG. It's almost like uh, like fashion souls, you know, but for PUBG. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how you would mix it, fashion with PUBG right there. But, yeah, that's me, man. I, I, Get I'm those the skins. The skins matter. That's they, they, they give you buffs, man. That's all there is to it. <laughs> that one, they have the buff. new, like, emote where you can, like, hold up your player banner. It's so <laughs> sick. That's all I needed. That was, uh, like, the best thing I've ever seen. But, yeah, make sure you guys support Navi. Great skin set. A great team uh, with their absolutely just goaded run they had at PGC 2022. So now we look forward to PNC 2023. Of course, so many teams, so many players to talk about. I mean, I want to talk about the two new two new teams. I want to talk about the two new regions, Denmark and India. I mean, Denmark is a team that people are going to have some expectations for because these players, they do have more experience. But I mean, backstage, talking to other pro players from a variety of different teams, you know, mentioning India, for instance, you know, really, where are they going to line up with the likes of the UK that we see on screen right now, the reigning champs from PNC 2022? Exactly. I mean, I'm really curious to see how it all shakes out. You you just can't talk enough about this UK team, how good they are, how confident they are, how well they played together last year, how quickly they adapted to the meta of this entire situation of PNC in 2022. So here in 2023, what's the meta going to look like? This team right here, a lot of people's favorites, rightly so. If you guys have been paying attention online, they may or may not have dropped a 31 kill <laughs> scrim <laughs> game. So this team is absolutely potentially on one. I was talking to Tingleton before this, and he said, you know, H Win is calling the best PUBG he's ever called, not just because they won PGS2, but even coming into this event, he thinks this is the, one of the teams to watch out for. And watching those guys warm up on stage before we even came here, I mean, they just act, look absolutely locked in. And if the play calling is there to back, back it up, USA is going to be looking very good. It is now here, Team Brazil. To see them getting ready to perform right here. You know, they had top three finish in PNC 2022. We'll see if Sparking and Vini can lead them to another one. Yeah, they're really just talented players. I, you cannot count these guys out. The passion is there. There is no doubt about it. I, I mean, I got to talk to Sparking a little bit before, uh, and he is really fired up to be back at an international event. It's been a bit of a drought for the superstar from Brazil. Looking to get it done. India, this team, I tell you what, man, people are saying that these guys can they can ball like yeah. these the, they are coming here and they are a force to be reckoned with is what this is what the scuttlebutt is so i talked to their coach as well rake seal before this um you know what is their style he said they're going to try to adapt to the lobby they don't want to wow. come into this with a set style they want to try to find what's going to work uh for them a crack team uh salman is their igl if you're curious a lot of people think unforgiven the best player uh in their region uh, but really, really excited for these guys. Uh, and they are so fired up. A lot of pressure on them because they want to show that India belongs in the PUBG esports scene and they should be here to stay. Hearing from them in the scrims, not only picking up wins, but just fragging out. I'm going to have a lot of eyes, a lot of attention on that Indian team. But of course, the hometown heroes, paper thin, Korea. It's Seoul, Loki, and Nonix in heaven. Three players coming in from Donawas. Already a lot of synergy 
on this roster, and you know that there's going to be that little more drive to succeed, to win here on the home stage with the home fans in your home country. Exactly. And I mean, how, how fitting would it be that if Seoul could get his first global win, the tournament win, in the city that is his namesake. How yeah. incredible would that be? I mean, of course, Korea as well has never won a chicken dinner in a PNC. Unbelievable. S second place in a fourth place without ever getting a chicken dinner. Frankly, unbelievable. I, I feel like they're going to get some chickens here. Maybe it'll be the, the crowds cheering for them, giving them some extra strength. But if they can pick it up and continue to frag out the way they did it, PNC 2019, PNC 2022, and just get a couple of wins on top of that. It could be the missing piece of the puzzle to make them a champion. Exactly. Uh, I, I'm really, really keen on this team. And Heaven coming in with the three Donawa boys. Uh, I, I had a quick chat uh, with the Donawa staff, and they were they were saying they were blown away with how Heaven's playing and how he's fitting in with the team. So this should be really, really exciting. And this team as well, speaking of exciting, uh, these guys, I think they're going to blow the doors off of this event. I think they are going to be fragging out of control. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch this Vietnamese team play, especially with Himas on my fantasy team there on <laughs> TYR.GG. <laughs> Having to plug that all day, man. He's my captain. I'm looking for him oh. to rack up the kills, get those frags. You went you went with him as captain, too. Yeah, he's my captain, man. I'm That's all in. I am all in on Vietnam. They've performed consistently at the PUBG Nations Cup. And, you know, coming all the way here to Seoul, it's a short flight away. I feel like they're going to be rested, they're going to be ready to go, and they're going to shake things up in these lobbies. And speaking of shaking things up, the Chinese oh. roster, a little bit different than we saw last year. Aix left the only carryover. You got Crazy Longskirt, and of course, the PUBG Esports legend himself, Sho, coming out of retirement to bring the pride here for China. I, have, I am so excited to watch this team play. Yeah, this is one of the best teams on paper that I think we've ever seen at a PNC. It's so exciting. I mean, any team with eggs left on it, you know, he's a player to watch all the time. He's, you know, if not a top three, then definitely a top 10 player in the world. No one in the world would doubt that. And to have him here on a Chinese team that, as you said, has Longsker, has show back out of retirement, has crazy 1-1-2. There is just so much power behind this lineup. And if they work as a unit, as a four-man squad, I don't know if any team in this lobby can actually stand up to them in a 4v4, a straight up 4v4. I love what you're saying. So I think that was one of the problems they had last year was it, it didn't feel like a cohesive unit for Team China. Team Thailand, you've got half of Day Trade, half of Theraton 5. Theraton 5 looked really good at PGS2 uh, with Tendidal and Ross at a junior. What do you call them Rotisserie Junior? <laughs> They're going to get some chickens, Dude, man. they get chicken dinners, that's going to be so good. Uh, and then Tendidal, who's had a standout performance. Nurens and Puchils, you know, they just Absolutely incredible players, top to bottom. Nuren's going to be the only carryover from last year's PNC. Uh, Puchils has been really, really strong throughout his career. A, a longtime veteran of PUBG Esports. Uh, Tanadol having a breakout year uh, for Theraton 5 and himself. So I I'm really excited about this Thailand squad. I think they could do better than they did at their home territory last year. I mean, a top six in 2019 and a top 10 in 2022. Just looking to do even better here. Now Argentina. Coming on the screen, Rubox D going to be the captain of this squad as they're greeting the cameras here. Look to be in very high spirits, both on stage and here, getting ready to play. A lot of hopes here for Argentina. They basically cracked top eight two PNCs in a row in 2019 and in 2022. And if they can maintain that consistency, Whoa. I love it. Is it a little wiener, wiener dog it right is, there? It is. It's, it's so adorable. cute. Oh, my God. Look at the ears. It's adorable. It's like crocheted too. I hope we get an interview with him. I oh, want to hear a about bow that tie. dog. Yeah, it's oh beautiful. Oh my god. Okay, I'm sorry. That just completely derailed right, me. It, that derailed it. me. I'm biased for Team Argentina now. That just, <laughs> that just won me over right there. I, I mean, they, look, that team can absolutely do a lot here. This is a really, really strong Argentina squad. Uh, you know, with Ale, who's been really, really good throughout this year. All four of these players have been really, really good throughout this year. So, look. You can't count them out. They're, are they a dark horse? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that we are counting them out as a potential contender. Same with Denmark. There's even a few fans from Denmark who made the trip all the way here to South Korea to come support their region for their first event. And in classic uh, Korean broadcast fashion, one of the fans was hiding his face. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you fit right in, my friend. You're you're right at home. Oh, it's like something on like a Korean esports bingo card. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you gotta cross that one out right there. That's always the first one off. That's the free box in the middle. 
We've got some fans coming over from Japan as well, supporting the Japanese team. So it's really a global affair here. I mean, we have fans cheering for basically every single country we've yeah. gotten to look at, which honestly surprises me. I thought that the fans overwhelmingly were going to be having, you know, Korea, 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 Korea. But fans of every squad, every PUBG Esports team represented here at PNC 2023. It's great to come, come together as a global community in an event like this one. Yeah, it's it's really cool because a lot of these players, you know, obviously these are the best of the best uh, yeah. throughout the world. And so a lot of fans, even here in Korea, are fans of players from other regions because of what they've done globally, what they've done uh, throughout their histories uh, in our just tremendous esports. So really, it's so cool. And so many like streamers and personalities are here. Uh, some of those Japanese fans you saw are, are popular streamers. Uh, Kat Conti's here from America. She's a phenomenal PUBG player, a phenomenal PUBG streamer. So we've got some awesome people here uh, supporting their regions who made the trip all the way, not just Korea, locals, uh, but some foreigners making their way through. Of course, you know, with being the third opportunity now for Korea, their second time at home, right? Our first PNC was also uh, in South Korea, and I can tell you that was that was a treat. I mean, at the time, of course, it was Pio and Loki and Anonix and uh, oh Aqua Five uh, who were playing. <laughs> I dug into the recesses <laughs> of my brain and remembered, uh, but they came so close, came up short. But th this time around, it feels different to me. And Anonix and Loki, they're back, man. They're veterans of this stage and some of the most accomplished veterans of PUBG Esports Korea has ever seen. So with their leadership, you know, rounding that roster out with Soul and also Heaven, who you said is playing out of his mind lately, they should have a very good shot here to do better than a second place, to do better than the fourth place that they've had in the past, and try to finally raise this trophy here at home, which has frankly eluded them over all of their PUBG careers. To be able to be a victorious team here at PNC 2023 would just be, as you, as you said, the feather in their hats. Right, Loki, the only one who's won an international event. Uh, with Gen G, he's won two, of course. <laughs> Shout soul and soul. Soul and soul, baby. I'm, uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, I mean, just give me that chicken dinner for Team Korea, and I, I promise you, uh, this place will absolutely erupt. So, of course, there's an Onyx fan. He is the, one of the most popular players in Korea, if not the most popular. And China number one, you bet. The, 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 he, the state's all in on China. I'm, like, thinking they're top five for sure, but we'll see. We'll see, my friend. I think they're top three for sure. If I were to say probably China, China, Korea, and USA no, are my some, top three to come away with no, this, but Vietnam is also really good. Put some dinner on that? You maybe, little, maybe. What do you want, like some Heijong Gook or something? Hey, like, yeah, <laughs> I'm a fan of Heijong Gook, yeah. I like my stews. All right, I like all right. my stews. I was only thinking of it because I just had it yesterday. So I was like, <laughs> fresh in the mind. <laughs> it's fresh in my mind. Oh, we're getting close. Yeah, getting ready to get into game number one here. I am so excited to kick this thing off, Paper Thin. Me too, man. This is going to be one heck of an event. It is time, it is Miramar for our first map here at PNC 2023. The plane is in the air. The players are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this started. State's grooving. We're <laughs> dancing, man. That's that good music. I'm I love vibing. it. I love it, man. All right. Here we go. Now, there may or may not be some hot drops. I've heard conflicting things even coming up to the last minute of today. So we're going to keep our eyes out for that as best as we can. Now, th this plane path isn't doing anybody any favors. No, very far to the north. So, you know, we might actually get treated to one of those hot drops. We're more likely to here. Well, then elsewhere, and we'll see exactly how that shakes up because we have had tournaments in the past here in Korea where, you know, these hot drops, they start to become the focal point for these teams. But I feel like in a lobby such as this one, if you really want to come home as the champion, if you start hot dropping the same location as a rival team and it doesn't go your way, that's a game plan you might have to abandon coming into day two and day three. Exactly. Yeah. And we'll see. We'll see exactly how this one shakes out. Now, because of this plane path, we might see some what you and I call fever drops, where it's unintentionally hot. You didn't mean for it to be hot, but it is just because the plane path was so bad uh, and you're fighting over like vehicle spawns and those yeah. kind of things. So that's kind of what the observers are showing us here with Turkey uh, potentially contesting Vietnam uh, for a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of vehicle action or maybe even just this whole area uh, around yeah. Pantera. 
seems like they're moving around a little bit here. We are going to have an early skirmish. Unless Vietnam finds their way into that vehicle, but I think outnumbering right now and actually picking up Ooh! an ace with a headshot. The opening shot is fired here by Saki, and what a start for Vietnam. He took a moment to enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> he stopped and just, I guarantee he was popping off and high-fiving. Now, he isn't going to get the kill. Of course, you can carry people, put them in the vehicles now. Uh, in case you guys don't know, there's a lot of mechanics that, that you know, maybe if you're just kind of tuning into PUBG Esports for the first time in a while, uh, that are a bit different, but you can take knock players and put them into vehicles now. Uh, so that is going to be, yes, a knock on a Code Marco, uh, but Turkey looking to drag him into a safe location and get the reds. And talking about the circle really quick, Paper Thin, it is all the way to the northeast, even bordering the northern edge of the map. So kind of a wild one to start things out, although it did follow the plane path quite well. None of these teams are particularly going to be thrown off by this. You see DraftKings with some nice shots here on the Mini-14, able to connect with a body shot there for 26 damage, but not much more than that. Yeah, so, you know, even, even though there was a little bit of spice, a little bit of nice for Vietnam to start, uh, Argentina uh, kind of keeping them pinned down uh, in this Contera area. So right now, Turkey and Vietnam continuing to spice it up. And I, I, I mean, I don't think anybody should be sh too surprised uh, with two squads that are confident in their individual fragging power. Uh, to be wanting to square off like this this early. But I should also mention another thing, right? We're on to the new Miramar, a map that's only been out for a couple months, I think. And I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you guys. My circle theory is going to be kind of not available because I'm not exactly sure uh, what the heat maps are looking like for this just yet uh, as we haven't, you know, gotten really a lot of time to play it. This is the first time we're playing it in eSports in, in a official event. So... It's going to just kind of be a, a wait and see, and it's going to be interesting oh. to see. Oh, Laza, though, is going to get a little revenge with a knock on the Chloris. Of course, the, we that should mention the Dust Storm in play as well. Yeah, that was a running headshot right there with a car 98K. What a fantastic shot with here by Laza, man. Scope. Yeah, with a 2X. I mean, from that angle, how do you make that happen? You were not kidding about these teams absolutely being ready to frag it out right there. Laza, man after my own heart, sensing that there might be a player coming close, maybe some information fed over Himas. Lurking somewhat close, but Laza going to opt to use a grenade, just kind of keep it at bay. Keenan and Canada on the rotation now. Looking to try to get as center as they can. Now they got Denmark in a 2-2 split ahead of them around Cruz de Valle. Uh, but right now, teams just kind of finding their position. Japan in a nice spot early, right? Pretty much dead center. Yeah, nice early compound here at the top of this hill. And uh -oh. actually, oh no, Kino's rolling up on this. He was not aware that the full Japanese squad is waiting with open arms, but luckily able to find and use that territory to his advantage. Gets out of sight and far enough away. Imhak going to try and get some final bullets on him, but luckily for the Canadian, he's able to skirt away with a full HP bar. Yep, yeah, that was a good piece of driving there from Keenan, kind of keeping himself uh, at an angle that if he was attacked on his way in he's able to pull off and safely get away so a good good piece of work there uh knowing kind of this new area a little bit in the north has changed right i don't i don't want to get too verbose about the changes on this map because there's a lot of little changes right mm -hmm. a few big ones in terms of city locations and names kind of moving around but oh no, should have him dead to rights yep the drag down with the 3x gets the head shed shots onto the mad now Hemos looking to finish the job that's a nice nade too but Seems like he was able to get into the cover of the building. Taking a little bit of damage right there. Molly also will not be able to find him, but Hemas coming out swinging here as Turkey A and Vietnam continue to fight it out. <gasps> this is so smart. Yeah, Clory is working his way all the way up here onto the top of this building. Picks up a frag grenade, but Code Marco is waiting inside here with a shoddy first shot. Not good enough. And that's going to be two kills right here for Vietnam. That's so good there from Vietnam to get into two different angles. So it makes it really hard. You have to guess. You have to 50 50 with that shotgun which direction they're going to be coming from with those footsteps. It's a little hard to tell. It's going to be up or down, and that pays dividends for Vietnam. And Onyx in heaven now coming in on this compound. There is a split here for Thailand, but oh, running so close to Norens, and he gets the headshot right there onto heaven, and Onyx is just going to bail, so Korea down one man early here in map number one. On uh, heaven just running right into this AK. And Nuren's putting it to good use. Yeah, that was the perfect angle there for Nuren. Just absolutely lined him up. And Anonix luckily will be able to survive. So it's not a complete disaster here for Korea. But losing one of their hottest players so early in the first match, it's got to feel bad. Yeah, and so a lot of this area is going to be kind of, it's, it's kind of cool we get to see the circle first time. Uh, because 
a lot of this area northwest of Cruz de Valle, north of Cruz de Valle, just all of it has changed uh, because of the removal of Torre Ahumada and those kind of things. So it is going to be really interesting to see how teams kind of mess with this space. All right, we've got an interview, guys. It is going to be Vard from Team UK. It feels really good to be here in Korea for PNC 2023. I'm really excited to start playing and yeah, I'm hoping we can win back to back. I believe that this, this PNC this year might be a little bit harder than last year. I think a lot of the rosters are like core rosters from, they have like three players from like their actual teams, like Danawa and Germany have three active players from their main team. So I think the competition should be a lot harder this time. Um, I'm just excited to play. Good to hear from the UK player there. He's absolutely right where the competition feels so fierce here on this weekend. And the fact that these teams are able to synergize, like he said, with Germany and with Danawa coming in for Korea with three players on that roster and rounding it out with an absolute powerhouse in heaven. It's going to be tough for UK to repeat, but they certainly have the potential to do it. Yeah, fully agree. And Luke 12 from Australia, just kind of flirting with Chinese territory there, but didn't opt to drive in. Kind of realized that that was not going to be a safe spot to go. And Again, going back to some of the map changes, north of Cruz de Valle is going to be very, very different. Again, a lot of buildings have been removed from up there. Campo Militar has changed positions. There's a few compounds that have shifted around. Uh, there's a few really powerful compounds up there uh, that are very defendable because of some flat terrain around them, as you saw with that, that Thailand camp compound, not too bad. The one that Korea is in also very, very strong right now. Yeah. On the other side of the map here, we've got India coming in late. Nice shot of the sandstorm here, too. Looks like something from a Mad Max film. <laughs> Rolling in is the Indian squad on the northwestern side. Of course, we'll take a little bit of damage here from that sandstorm. And they might find themselves in the waiting arms of Brazil, who are also making a rotation to the north side, exactly where India is going, unbeknownst to the Indian squad. Yeah, there, there's a couple teams cutting ahead of them. Let's see exactly how India is going to handle this. Now, the sandstorm on Miramar is kind of annoying in particular because it cuts out your map vision, your mini map. Mm. You have to open the big map to see the map. Uh, it isn't like it isn't like the uh, the storm on Vikendi. You can actually see the mini map, I believe, unless they changed it. But th the sandstorm is really kind of tough to drive through because you can't even use your mini map to like try to follow the road or something. Yeah, it's hard to navigate in a situation like that one. And you know, when you're coming in late from the circle like that, you really want to be able to have eyes in front of you and know the vicinity of the area that you're in to the best of your ability so you don't get jumped. But luckily for India, they are able to work their way in. And now looking here at the United States, they're happily sitting in the Northeast. Exactly. There, there's nothing nothing wrong with the United States' position right now. Again, circle one, so hard to say exactly what this is going to do. Again, I can speculate on where the the circle will likely move away from, what the uh, quote-unquote unplayable terrain is, uh, you know, the, the land ratio terrain, if you will. Um, but you know what? I'm not going to get too into that today. I feel like it's more important to just kind of enjoy these circles because I tell you what, if BGS2, the circles were spicy as heck, and I'm hoping uh, just personally that maybe we can get some of that. Also, I want to say the Sandstorm, not a big deal. It just kind of goes by pretty fast. It it does a little bit of damage. It tickles, costs like an energy drink. Mm -hmm. That's a toll you have to pay to go through the Sandstorm. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's a really hard shift there to the to the top left of the map. All the way in northeast. So USA can be really happy with this one, as well as Germany and Brazil, who kind of have... No, it's a circle, so there aren't corners, but it does feel like they're in corners on a position like this one. They should be able to play with some high ground there and won't have to make too big of rotations coming in. Well, this is going to give India an opportunity to kind of gatekeep the western edge of that hill that's in the mm. center of the circle right now. So I'm kind of curious to see uh, if they're going to be able to put those long range guns to damage. Uh, you know, there's, there's kind of some curiosity uh, about how they're going to fare for the first time competing yeah. internationally. Uh, you know, no Indian team has ever faced off against any of these other PUBG Esports teams officially. Um, of course, they're scrims. I, I know that Enigma, the team that the India players come from, has competed in scrims uh, across the world. So we know they've got potential. Again, people were telling us, State. You know, yeah. we went and talked to the players and stuff. They're, they were high on these Indian players. So there's a lot of potential here as Canada driving past. We have Team Japan and that. <laughs> Everardo just absolutely gets shut. Oh, wow, Kane! Oh, with a mini 14. Oh, that's Imhack with a mini 14. Excuse me, as Shinobi is going to get taken down by a headshot. It's a really nice angle that Imhack's able to find. Kane with an SKS. Kane, yeah. I, for my money, the best player in Japan right now. Absolutely just a, a cracked player, but don't count out the rest of them. You know, Imhak, Run AX, and Pure Boy, superstars in their own right. 
Shinboy back on his feet, heel through. Now Finna and I believe it's Adam down there, kind of looking to spread out Keenan as well, trying kind of to tough, control some territory. Here. Kind of a tough position for them though, especially with Thailand having this high ground. I mean, you can see that you know, Team Canada, they don't really have a lot of terrain to work with. It's quite wide open and also their vehicle situation, it's not great. One of them blew up, this one doesn't have any tires. So rotating from that spot's gonna be really tough for them, but they gotta make do with what they have. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they had to stop there, not much choice. And you're absolutely right. That, that is not the ideal spot. That was definitely not, I think, what they were aiming for. I think they were looking to maybe get a little bit closer to the mountain, see if they could play something in there, uh, potentially. But Argentina now skirmishing. UK likes to play edge early. Uh, that was their kind of MO in PNC last year. Uh, but right now they're split 2-2. So. One of their high, one of the hallmarks of UK last year was their team fighting. Let's see if they can maybe cover here. T Bone, I think, flanking out to kind of try to cover Argentina's flank angles as well. It's a bit of a precarious position here. Looking at the mini map with Argentina having this nice widespread around the UK players, although the terrain is presenting the UK players with some cover. But oh, hold that thought actually, as Zuckus just comes right in to the arms of Canada. Adam gets the knock and. Or Adam gets a kill, excuse me, and Finna able to finish him up. Yeah, this is not the the ideal start for Vietnam. Uh, you know, things look great when they knocked a player out of the air. Yeah. Uh, but they weren't really able to find a, a ton. They've got two kills. That's nice. But most players will tell you they're looking for six, seven points in a game to feel like it was an okay game. A good game would be, se you know, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, any more than that is a, a good game. Great games, you know, you're looking for the win and or maybe just a ten kill game in like a second place, but circle three will really heavily impact this. You can see Germany controls a ton of that northern space, but no, wow. we're just going right towards Thailand, but they're they're pretty split here, State. Yeah, that's too split. You gotta wonder whether they're going to try and just put four men on that center squadron. One of the Puchils is manning the fort down on right now is we actually have seen Turkey running in. Sandstorm right behind him. This is not fun. No, they are deep in the blue, man. They're south of Hacienda, in fact. I think they're just trying to find a vehicle or something. The problem is, is they're dead center of the map, which means that like all these vehicles are going to be picked over. So those rotations got delayed. Seoul, the hometown favorite, getting knocked by Team USA there from afar, going for this crate. And of course, trying to get that flare gun crate picked up is dangerous. In the best of circumstances, teams will absolutely try to punish you. He's gonna try his best to kind of crawl his way through this tunnel of smokes his team has created. And so far, so good. Still not taking too much action. It seems like Shrimzy has a pretty good read on exactly where he's going, but he comes into the arms here of Loki, who's able to lift him up and move him into safety. My question there is, is, is was Sol able to uh, grab anything out of there in time? Are they gonna have to make another go at it? Because they're gonna have to expend more spokes, yeah. it looks like, if they're gonna make a try. That was already a lot of smokes to get him out of there too. Exactly. Denmark now trying to add to their kill count. Everybody just trying to harass rotations. Oh. Those, that vehicle is no tires. It's on fire. Wow. Zenon's going to get a knock. Beamy gets another. Vietnam in tire straights, and they are done and dusted. An early exit here for Team Vietnam. Yeah, rough rotation right there. Just got caught in the crossfire, and Vietnam gets absolutely cleaned up here. It's now Thailand looking to get some more blood on the board. Rosetet going to try and find an angle here in Argentina, who is pushing this position with three men in the squad. Nades are coming out. Noren's going to try and find the angle right here. Can be a little bit difficult to calculate that on this slope, but that nade was very good, just barely missed him. Actually, H-Win from downtown with a headshot on the mini. It's going to be able to get a knock, but Clip there able to get the clean. <laughs> there were three players gunning for that kill. Yeah. But somehow Clip's the one to get it. Kickstart just doing a ton of damage out there. Emic. On eight health, trying to do what he can, throwing some frags in desperation to keep players at bay. He's got five smokes. He should really be throwing those really soon. It's too late though. He gets knocked and it's actually Rossiter Jr. coming through and cleaning that one up. And yeah, it just feels like everyone in the world has an angel angle on Argentina right now as MX goes down. Argentina down to one last man, DraftKing alone in a shed. A story that I've lived myself many times. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been the Shaq boys. Zenon gonna be knocked by Fex. UK looking to rock and roll. 
T-Bone trying to clear some angles, but he's got three players around them. If he can sneak underneath their noses, this could be devastating for Taipei, but he's spotted and done. Pongsker, the newbie here for Tiny's Taipei, doing some serious damage. He's wow. shutting down Honey Badger. He's one away from knocking down the defending champions in the UK. Grenades are out here. Pongsker on 13 health. Gonna have to back up and go for the first aid. Coming that kit. Bex coming in with a nade. We'll see if that connects there with Pongsker. And in fact, it does. So Pongsker is gonna go down. But Savior able to get the revenge knock right there. And Chinese Taipei gonna clean him up and eliminate the United Kingdom from nap number one. What a hold here from Chinese Taipei. Pongsker doing a great job. Tanadol on top of Turkey. Laza Schofield. Stuck underneath, if that grenade would have just rolled a little bit farther, it would have been so good. He might have been able to get to do with that. But Tanadol, out of frags, gonna have to be backing off. Yeah, no more frags as this Turkish crew had to work all the way from Asienda in the blue and almost through a, through a sandstorm to get into this circle. Two men still standing for them. Here at Deepin, this one is now the Cowboys coming in. Why kick a move, Cow, from Cowboys. Australia? <laughs> He's rolling in, Unforgiven from India with a fantastic spray on that 2X is absolutely able to clean him up. It's Australia bleeding out right now. Tickleton's gonna try and find an angle. Ake Slept was able with the MK14 to get translucent during all of that as India was out for blood. But India getting on the board there with their first kill. A nice showing there from the superstar from India. Uh, the top fragger in their qualifier, Unforgiven. Absolutely a nutty player in his own right and got to watch out for this team. Salman as well, as well has been fragging out in the scrims from what we've heard. Uh, so India, not a bad start at oh. all. In Canada, it's just been such a tough run here in this first game. Now Nurens and Rossida Jr. with a crossfire on top of them. Nothing but a broken car to protect them. Yeah, I mean, that's just an abysmal position. I don't even know how you get the res from this spot. And yeah, that's going to be Finna going down. <laughs> Did he? He used sure. a nade. I think he meant to throw a. I think he's meant to throw a smoke. <laughs> it accidentally threw a frag. Yeah. Uh, okay, Brazil trying to play edge here, gatekeeping edge against India. But India should have enough room to hide uh, and kind of stay alive. I don't think anybody from Australia is going to be getting an angle right now, as they're under pressure from Brazil as well. So Brazil here, keeping their flanks clear at least for now. Behind all of that, Ross said was able to get the finish on that kill. So Tyler now up to six kills in total. Here we get a replay of this UK action coming oh. in against Chinese Taipei and Pongsker absolutely popped off here. Paper, 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 paper. I love the way that he pops the energy drink first. Mm. He kind of anticipates what's happening. He has a couple frags, but he doesn't know exactly the angle they're going to be coming oh. from. What an wow. angle. What an angle. That angle is just phenomenal there. Hey, Tebow completely unaware that there was a third player for Chinese Taipei. Hanging out in this building. And that angle is just absolutely devastating. And Punksker has the skill to be able to convert that into two kills for his team. And you can see the, why you're going to bring a player like that out here. And then, you know, the last player there, yeah. Fax, trying to find somewhere to prone to hide. But Leo anticipating it, the savvy veteran. Yeah, it just feels like Chinese Taipei had. Great angle after great angle after great angle in that engagement. UK thought they were getting to jump on them, but absolutely not, as the defense from Chinese Taipei was solid. And I think, you know, you should not be underestimating this Chinese Taipei team. We know what they can do when they are firing on all cylinders. We've seen it in BCS Asia State, where they can pop off on any given day. Absolutely. Now the circle gonna center up here in the top center. As Kino, oh man, I thought he might have actually gotten the kill there, but instead it's going to be Schofield who gets the knock onto Kino. Turkey eventually will get eliminated, however. As Denmark is able to fight back. One player knocked. We'll see if they can get the res. Uh, Japan's going to have to get involved here one way or another. Finally coming in, scooping up a kill point at least. Kane now going to let loose. Rasta the Jr. Oh. got the knock onto Aix Left. Everybody and their grandma throwing nades at Aix Left, trying to scoop up that point. And Imhak, under the purview of the Thailand players, they've already got seven kills in this one state. They are really doing a great job locking down these center compounds. Yeah, sandwiching this Chinese team as Aix left. Show's gonna try and be a hero here and get his friend back up on his feet, but the needs just continue to rain down. Mortars too. I heard the mortars <laughs> coming in. Not sure if they were close or not, but I can hear them. The artillery really just firing 
here on this Chinese team. And if you can take a Chinese team like this one out, this early in map number one, that's going to be something that might pay dividends for all these rosters later on the tournament is China with their star-studded lineup. One of the favorites here, and King gets a great angle there. Able to find show through the smoke. Bozen down with the AUG, and then the need comes in. And China eliminated here with only two kills. Yeah, Kane got the knock on the show when he had an aid in hand. And that's going to be the finisher there. Great job by Japan to swing out and cover Team China, but they have Brazil now and Thailand ahead of them, but Sparking going to get the opening knock on to Puchils. Might have opened up enough space here that Japan could do something. Imhok just keeping track of Brazil, making sure that they're not going to get super close. And look at the angle that Japan has with that hill. They're going to be able to back Imhok up potentially if Brazil overextends. Yeah, it's really hard for Imhok to find his way into this circle right now. Sitting in the blue actually will get knocked by it as he had a tough path to try and traverse here into this circle. Behind that Brazil doing some more cleaning there. Toretto goes down from Team India as things seem to be falling apart. Nice fire right back there. Germany getting a lot of kills, a lot of frags. Yeah, they got involved in this fight fight with Brazil and India. It looked like India might be wiped out. Uh, but Germany here helping them out momentarily, getting the knocks on a Sparky and LFB1. Vinny, spray just not quite there just yet. Needs to get warmed up a little bit. Haven not able to find a knock, but at least backing them off. Meanwhile, Loki has a knock on to Leo. Pongsker oh. down and all of Chinese, pay, Chinese Taipei is gone. Yeah, with, I mean, circles like this, it's so hard to make these rotations, and especially with teams holding on a compound such as Germany there in the northwest side of the map. I mean, the angle that they have is just ferocious. There is India tries to thread the needle between not only the Brazilian team to their south, but the German team to their north. Well, I tell you what, you know, oddly enough, Korea has some room to maneuver if they can get to the hill. Yeah. That's the real question. Can they get that far? Is someone going to prevent Thailand and Japan from just bearing down on top of them and just lighting them up trying to cross this open hilly field? I mean, looking at the Doritos on the map, it seems like Japan might be a little bit more fixated on Thailand than on Tim Korea. So if they're able to provide some covering fire there and start to get into a skirmish with Team Thailand, their neighbors, that could give the Korean players the opportunity they need to start moving in. And I love that smoke, just barely finding enough soft cover to close the distance a little bit here. Still about 50 meters outside of the circle. They have to find their way. The good news is here for Korea, I did see the, the smoke grenade launcher in the hand of Anonix. Yeah. So they should be able to, I think, smoke their way in towards the bottom of that hill. Adam still alive for Canada, the sole survivor for the boys from up north facing off against Team USA, their Southern North American brethren. No, <laughs> kills, north. no kills yet for America, but tons of damage. Yeah, a lot of damage, no kills, but the, still the full four-man squad up. And should they be able to find Adam out in his hidey hole? Oh, pure boy. A lot of potential there is pure boy with a great spray on the what a, what a push up, but a great response from Tandadol to get the knock. He should go down here to Sparking, but Sparking can't quite find just enough damage. Run AX trying to come in here and save Team Japan's life. Knows that there's a player right around the corner. Thailand gone through the combined efforts of Brazil and Japan. Brazil just use, utilizing this high ground to the best of their ability now. They know that Denmark is also closing in. They have a hunch. Gonna try and find an angle here. That's Cliff going down. LFB1 is able to find him. He does get cleaned up. And wow, what a headshot coming in there on Nikito by Haven with the AUG. Is now Denmark is also feeling the wrath of a Brazilian team that's already racked up six kills. They are rocking and rolling right now. Brazil is feeling it. Vinny spots out one. The grenade oh, is need. perfect. Didn't even need it. The shots were good as well. Brazil is clearing out the southern side of the circle. And now the top four has been decided. It's going to be Brazil, Germany, USA, and India here in map number one. Just one lone survivor, unforgiven here for Team India, all the way down into the southwest as we get a look at what Kickstart sees right now. He's going to try and shell the Brazilian team up on that hill who need to res LFP1 and work their way down into the southeast. But if they get their people within, they have a lot of terrain to work with. Exactly, exactly. This is, again, the, the terrain up here has slightly changed, uh, but you can still see that it's Miramar. It's still Miramar. The essence of the map is still there. The hills, the ability to kind of find, you know, the, 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 the leapfrog. You know, mm -hmm. you go from one hill to the next. But let's see if Brazil 
can get this done. I mean, they, they've got the winner, winner, chicken dinner percent slightly in their favor. Germany, an edge heavy team with that Ascend squad. You would fully expect them to just be all over that. And it's going to pay off this time as that compound uh, was very much in this circle for a long time. But this is something about India that I noticed in their VOD state is they're really good at salvaging points. Yeah, I mean, they said in their interview that they're not going to come into this with a singular game plan. They're going to try to adapt to the lobby, adapt to the cards that they've been dealt. So that's unforgiven for you right now, just trying to hang on for as long as you can, trying that just a couple more points for this team, as those points, at the end of the weekend, they are going to add up. Exactly, exactly. And I love what we're seeing here, and it's unforgiven as well. So just imagine if he's able to pull out something special, but now he's been spotted by Brexco. Oh. The 2x spray looks like it might have been Good, but not quite enough, but a ton of frags here. A knock, oh. though, didn't matter. Brexico yeah. got the grenade out in time, and India goes out and forth. That kick start just a little bit late on that knock. The nade was able to connect. India is out, and now we'll see if these other teams are able to capitalize on Germany being down one. Man, you see LFP1 and Haven over here coming with a nade. That one was dangerously close to knocking out two players in this split here that Germany has got. It's Chris on just a fraction of a hit point. Brexico still needs to be rezzed. And now USA coming in on the lone position here of Micah. He's going to try and find his way into the circle and join arms with his teammates. But a lot of damage oh. coming in. The headshot. Shrimzy able to get the knock there on Mika's Germany. It feels like it's starting to fall apart right now. What an absolutely nasty spray from Shrimzy. Disgustingly good there to get that knock in time onto Micah. Kowo trying to do what he can here. The coach having to sub in for Team Germany, but there is not much hope. They have to defend this shack at the top of the hill. Kickstart gets caught a little bit flat-footed by Vinny, taken down for the USA, who has their attention completely over towards Germany. Vinny wants to capitalize on that. He's already got one. Yeah, he's gotten Kickstart down. Micah falls, two Ooh. Snakers, and wow, Brexco right there with a great spray. Trimsy continuing to pop up, gets another headshot there. That's Brexco going down. Koa as well. Germany with just one man left up. It is Chris reloading that AUG. He's got to find some way to make this work, but USA is popping off right now. It's a three-team snake. Each one is biting at each other's tail in a circle. <laughs> but right now, it's the USA who's maybe slightly ahead because Brazil has seeded the high ground here uh, to the likes of Germany. And USA has a little bit of cover on the edge, but they have to come in to this new cir circle. Brazil is going to opt to try to fan out, try to cover uh, USA and the last player from Germany. Yeah, I like the spread that Brazil's been able to establish here in the center of this next circle as USA and Germany both need to get in. And it might not seem like a lot of distance to cover there on the map, but considering the angles that Germany, Brazil, and USA are at, there's going to be a lot of crossfire coming in. It's going to be a precarious jump from one hill to the next. And here we go, Shrimsy and Snakers, they're getting in the vehicle. It's time to start rolling up, and we'll see if anyone's able to find an angle on them. They're coming right onto the position here of Brazil. Yeah leaving H-Win there as an anchor to make sure that their backs are clear. That grenade was so close oh. to getting two knots. H-Win able to eliminate Germany. It's Chris going down. Phenomenal work on the backside for Team USA by their tremendous IGL. And now a straight up 3v3 fight. Straight up 3v3 fight. Both teams with a two to one split as well. As he's sparking right there in the dead circle, he's gonna try and find an angle to maybe flank Quinns or find a top down side onto Snakers. And Shermzy is another spray comes in by Vinny, not able to connect with a killing blow there on H Win. Didn't matter though, sparking was good with the off angle, able to find the knock. Vinny trying to punish with the frag grenade, seeing if anybody's gonna be trying to go for that res. Snakers caught in a difficult position. Shrimzy, can he continue this? Star-studded run he's had. Oh, Snakers is on fire. He's gotten health off. Didn't matter. Vinny tracking him down. All on to Shrimzy for Team USA. Seven kills in the bag. Watching the off angle here. Sparking going to come in and collect two. Now come the stun grenade. Shrimzy pinned against the bad side of the circle. And it is going to be done and dusted. Team Brazil, a 12-kill chicken dinner to kick off PNC 2023. Oh, man. Just meticulous play there in that final circle. They were able to wrap it up find the perfect angles. It started out with fanning out and finding exactly what they needed to find to take down Team USA, and boy, were they able to do it. 12 kills in the bag, 22 points in total, and what a start for this Brazilian squad here at PNC 2023. And you can see how much this means to them. You know, again, talking to Sparking before this, coming into an international event, a lot of these players haven't had the opportunities to qualify for the PGSs this year to get here now and come out with a win to start this out, to pick 
pick up right where they left off last year in 2022 PNC. It's a Brazil squad firing on all cylinders. Absolutely, man. Top three in the last PUBG Nations Cup in 2022. And an explosive beginning here on Miramar. You're gonna see the way they worked as a team, the movement, the splits, fighting the angles, using the circle to the best of their ability and utilizing the new terrain there on Miramar to just rain down hellfire on Team USA. USA was looking so strong with back-to-back -back skirmishes coming in with so much damage for Brazil at the end of the day, just outmaneuvered them. Exactly, it just was kind of, again, sort of this ring around the rosy that those teams were playing. And it looked like maybe USA was getting the better of it with that damage they were doing, some knocks coming through all around, uh, but Germany getting shredded in the process. But Brazil had a moment to take a breath and then fan out and take control of the circle. Brazil coming up on top here with a big win, but for Team USA, still gonna be happy with 13 points on the board there in Miramar. You absolutely take those. A top two finish with seven kills in total. And also big props to Thailand. You know, they didn't get top three, but nine kills. I mean, they were fragging out. Yeah, they were doing a great job controlling those hill edges, just not letting anybody get in uh, without at least taking a ton of damage along the way. So we got to give a lot of credit to Team Thailand uh, for locking all that down. I would say that was the most expected game I've ever seen out of Germany, just holding down an edge. Uh, that is the, the Ascend style. They, they, they only dropped Vyadamar if they could help it. If they, the only reason they didn't drop Vyadamar is because the plane path just didn't afford it. It's so far north. Yep. And that's just the way they play. Uh, they are an edge, edge, edge team. That is that is all they know. And they yeah. locked down a very good compound early, too. Just the circle went a little bit too far outside. And then once they got caught between America and I think several other teams in the crossfire, I mean, that is such a difficult position to be in. And that's kind of, you know, Miramar in a nutshell is really playing the averages and trying to find your way to a victory by just barely skirting disaster because you come in on the wrong angle and somebody's on the high ground with you and you have another team in front of you, that's oftentimes a death sentence. Yeah, exactly. It's It can be tricky on Miramar uh, to kind of, again, leapfrog from hill to hill, kind of jump around the map and do it safely and effectively. But in Brazil here able to barely come through there at the end with that win, it was it's a close finish, a really exciting one, but that circle control just proving too powerful. Uh, what a fun game to start What I mean, just like once things kicked off, I mean, even from the beginning, we had kind of a hot drop, and then it seemed like there was fighting just all the way throughout. So, hey, you got to like what you're seeing so far. I mean, after the player interview, it felt like the action literally did not stop. <laughs> there was like right? no moment to catch their breath. It was just everyone trying to rotate in with the next circle, with the circle after that. And there were so many players that had to vacate compounds that looked very good in the previous circle, but then their position moving into the next one was just absolutely deadly. And there were so many teams getting caught in the crossfire, I feel, even more so than we usually see on Miramar. I mean, traversing those stretches of terrain was such a challenge. But at the end of the day, Brazil was able to navigate it perfectly. 2.4K total damage, 33 kilometers traveled, and 12 kills. Yeah, so, you know, Brazil here just doing a great job navigating the map. You know, not only is it the damage, but it's the maneuvering, it's the it's the rotations as well. And again, as you would expect uh, with this Brazil squad, a lot of the same players from last year, a lot of comfort, just like you're going to see with teams like Australia, teams like with UK, uh, that, that have been together for a couple PNCs here now. Uh, so just kind of picking up right where they left off last year. India has a good start here, by the way. We got, we got to give some credit to these guys. They came out, had a couple impressive moments, able to salvage some points. That's... Honestly, not a bad game of PUBG. Yeah, considering how poor the early game went for them, to be able to snake out and get a couple more placement points from that one and get picking up second kills, I mean, that's still number six in the lobby. And for what we saw with Unforgiven, especially that spray there with the 2X, I believe, he was able to get so much damage done. And if they can continue to deliver firepower like that in a better position, India, they might surprise people. I mean, I'm certainly seeing what these other players have been saying behind the scenes where India is performing in the skirmishes. Yeah, performing in the scrims, excuse me. They're, they're getting a lot of frags. I mean, they certainly seem to have the, the gun power to absolutely frag out. And I'm so curious to see what the rest of the day is going to show for them. Yeah, exactly. And I like the way that they're kind of feeling out the lobby here to start. They, they yeah. opted to, maybe not intentionally, but they had to play edge. There wasn't a lot of great choices for them in terms of where they dropped, which is by Alcantara, where the circle was, how late they opted to rotate in. They took their time. Uh, getting some extra equipment, and I think that paid out 
uh, getting them an extra probably placement point or two. So honestly, nothing to be ashamed of there. Again, six points. Most players say that's an okay game. That's you, You'll take those. You want to do better, but you're not going to complain about it. As a baseline, it's very good. So if India can come through with a higher point game than that one, and I, again, going back to Unforgiven, that spray looked great. I want to yeah. see more angles of him. He looks clean. Shooting down like that because that was top tier gun control. And I've seen, when I went back and watched some of their videos, uh, Toretto as well, good sniper. Uh, usually he's going to be the salvager, I think. Like he's the guy who often I noticed was kind of their last player alive, sort of like a Loki. You know, like a player who's really good at ratting out points and stuff like that, but uh -huh. Unforgiven was the guy this time around. Man of the match, LFP1, five kills, 705 damage. It's a heck of a game right there. 700 damage, everybody would be happy with that one. Five kills and four knocks in total, a key part of Brazil's victory there in that match. And you know, they're starting hot. Third place in the last PUBG Nations Cup. We'll see if they can top that here. As that was a big statement from them coming out in game number one on Miramar. Exactly. I love it. I mean, I'm so happy for these guys. You know, again, they, they really want to prove uh, that, you know, their region uh, is the best. Uh, they, they are very dedicated. Sparking in particular, always talking about it on his Twitter and things like that. Just saying, you know, how much he wants to be the best, how much he wants to win. And you can see it right away after that game was over. There were hugs all around. Uh, they were just having a ball, man. Yeah, they were hyped. That was a lot of energy. I mean, I could, if you took that out of context, it asked me, like, what is this? Is it like, it's like winning the first match of a tournament? Is this winning the tournament? I mean, the energy was through the roof. That's right. like emerging as a champion right there. The amount of energy they have. And so if they have that good vibe going and they can continue to lift each other up with this positive energy, absolutely going to be a team to look out for because PUBG oftentimes, it's not just a game of averages, it's also a game of momentum. And if Brazil can continue to perform with the kind of confidence that they showed here in game number one, racking up so many kills. I mean, you said it yourself, Sparking, he absolutely wants to win. And to be able to come through in the clutch there with 22 points and 12 kills and map number one, just absolutely phenomenal. USA, Germany, and India rounding out the top four there. What a what a great match. I barely even got to talk about like some of the new Miramar stuff. Like it just, I kind of alluded to the fact that that part of the map has changed. Didn't even get to talk about it because it was so just wall to wall action. So didn't even get to talk about zip lines. I don't know, who cares? They're on the map, well, maybe we'll find out later. Look at all those blue zone grenades thrown from Brazil as well. 14 blue zone grenades. How do you even find that many? Where, where do you find all those blue zone grenades? I don't think that many spawn on the map. Yeah. Blue zone grenades are crazy, man, playing so with those good. things. They're so good. Yeah, it's like it's like a Molotov on steroids, basically, where you just absolutely <laughs> can shut down a position and create such a headache for your opposition. And if Brazil continues to find blue zone grenades in that quantity, oh boy. I, they must have been picking them up off of bodies as they I, That's the only thing I can think of. So I don't I don't know if I've ever seen, like, even, like, getting, like, the best loot of my life playing PUBG with, like, a, with, like, a, a four-man four -man. squad. Yeah. I don't, think, I don't think I've ever seen more than maybe 12 at best. Like, I, that's... I wonder how they're kind of ranking grenades, you know, in, in the team in terms of ah. what they're picking up for their inventory. Because maybe they prioritize blue zone grenades a little bit more than some of the other ones there. And that's part of the factor that's going into it. Because, you know... Bad capacity, it is limited. You kind yeah. of have to pick and choose what you want, especially if you're picking up frags the way Brazil is. You know, they really, I feel like, could have probably chosen to have any kind of nade setup that they wanted with how many kills that they got. But clearly prioritizing the blues on grenades, and it certainly worked for them in that match. Yeah, I mean, look, especially in that kind of that more open space on Miramar like that, with the rolling hills and those kind of things, you can really clear out some of those tougher angles, kind of flush players out. Yeah. Ah, I like it. I mean, you think about a frag grenade on Miramar and how hard it actually is to connect yes. to the perfect angle on a slope. It's a really Blue good Blue zone grenade, you have a lot more leeway. It might have a little bit less punch. You're probably not going to get a knock from it, but you can absolutely shut down a position if you're anywhere close to it. That's a really good point. Yeah, I like what we're seeing. So who knows? We'll see if that's more of the meta. Did get to see any Panzerfaust. We heard mortars. Yeah. Didn't get to see them have much impact. So. I'm sure some fans aren't going to complain, but I think, you know, it is tough in those situations to find the time to really set up that mortar and put it to good use. Nobody really had the opportunity, really. Yeah, that was a fast moving game. The rotations were coming through very quickly. It wasn't the kind of map setup or spawn setup where you had just one team hunkered down in one position for a prolonged period of time, which is really where the mortar kind of shines. So, you know, this time we're coming, going back to Miramar. Second time of the day, we'll see if it's going to be another one of these maps where the circle just keeps bouncing and bouncing and these players have to rotate a lot or if it's going to be something where 
You might have a team like Germany just trying to absolutely hold onto a hill or a dip or a compound and mortars come into play. Yeah, no, exactly. No, that's exactly what I'm thinking too. So pretty curious about this. We didn't get, you know, Tickleton kind of well known for his mortar uh, math. He is mortar in, math. Yeah, the mortar math. Uh, we'll see if there's going to be some Team Australia uh, mortar shenanigans. I have heard that they are practicing mortars a lot. They've been that doing the trigonometry. Is, he is, yeah, exactly. The trigonometry <laughs> is what they call it. <laughs> the trigonometry, oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. Who coined that? That's amazing. I think he did. I think he did. He's pretty oh, clever. Oh, man. I don't, I don't want to give him the satisfaction, but he's pretty clever. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, trigonometry. he apparently has been bringing the church of trigonometry to the rest of Australia. <laughs> uh, so I've heard that the Luke 12 that, and Flood were in. He's introducing mathematics yeah, to, the, he's, he's to, the, he's the, to the nation of Australia. <laughs> Oh, I love that. He's a seven. He's yeah. There's he's like YouTube, he's like the YouTube professor. Tutorial, yeah. yeah. And now he's got some like you know TAs and flood and Luke twelve that are learning the border. Like, they practice by day and they're in night classes at the community college <laughs> later. He's really brushing back on that. What is it? A squared plus B squared equals C squared yep. or some stuff like that. That's what you need to know. Oh man, I really put myself on the line. I was I was not confident that was correct. Nailed it. You absolutely <laughs> nailed it. You don't need to know any cosines or sines unless you unless you want to start trying to calculate elevation too, but don't bother guys. It's that's too much of a pain. No, esports usually play with a 10 keyless keyboard, but maybe we'll see the numpad come back as you gotta punch in those oh, numbers. Oh yeah, you gotta do a little calculation <laughs> on the side. Load up, load up Wolfram Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Wolfram Alpha. Oh, oh man, if you guys, if, if people don't know what Wolfram Alpha is, then you did not. The chat GPT of math, yeah, but actually, actually goaded. Actually goaded. It Actually is. Actually goaded. I'm like, you did not take high level calculus or above. That's that that, oh that, that program is actually incredible what it can do. But anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, UK not the start they wanted. Ran into that Chinese Taipei, which dug their heels in, and Pongsker popped off. Yeah, and I feel like it wasn't even a lack of good shooting or anything from UK's part. They just had a bad read on the situation. They didn't expect Pongsker to be in basically the goaded position there in that building where the players from the UK just got lined up for him. Did not see him in that corner, and that's UK out very early, just from some clutch defense from exactly. Chinese Taipei. But I don't think that's something that you could see as a UK fan and be concerned about the performance for the rest of the event. That's kind of a one-off. I mean, it feels like basically every team has a start like that at least once yeah. in a tournament where you get caught off guard by some player in some unexpected position that just mows you down. and. Chinese Taipei, they're, they're a team that we have a lot of familiarity with, casting a lot of Asian PUBG. Yeah, no, and they absolutely have the skill to make you pay for mistakes like that if you ever step. And we know they're good at defense. Like we know that they can play solid defense. So that is a team that I don't want to. I would not want to crash if I could help it. Again, they 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 will have good setups, good defensive positions, as we saw. Vietnam, yeah, okay, so. I don't think they are going to be too good. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, I know these players. I don't think they care too much about the way that first game went for Vietnam. They got that opening knock. They had, probably had a pop off on stage. Uh, yeah, the rest of the game didn't go great, but that's going to be out of sight, out of mind for them. Certainly, Argentina just, let's see if they can, again, it's like middle of the pack stuff for Argentina. Maybe there's some big games in this squad. I, I really like these guys. The DraftKings been around. Rybox has been around for a really long time. Uh, Ale, again, another player that's had a really good career in PUBG Esports. Let's see if things can turn around for the Argentina squad as we pop on over to Miramar for the second time, the last time, here today uh, as we kick off game number two at PNC 2023. See exactly how this one's going to shape up. Everything's so kind of different, but kind of the same on Miramar, man. Like, it's like we saw it in this la that last game. It still felt like the essence of Miramar is still here. Absolutely. I mean, moving from hill to hill, from dip to dip, trying to play the terrain to the best of your ability. It's a real test on Miramar, more so than any other map in PUBG, in my opinion. And we'll see if Brazil can, you know, come out banging the same way they did Whoa. in game number one. That was so many kills, so many points on the board. They navigated that treacherous terrain perfectly, and they made the other teams punish for every single rotation. And now, look at this playing path paper that's thin all the way from the north. 
down to the southeast. Taper Sin, I like that. Yeah, man, I've been yeah. struggling to say your name today. That's, I have no that's idea why. I the devil horns. The first like... time I was trying to, I was trying to come behind like Clinton and Paper Thin somehow, and it <laughs> yeah. sounded like I like had a speech impediment. Yeah, it was you awful. probably haven't called me Paper Thin in like two years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you're like, just keep calling me Clinton. Like, yeah. All right, this plane path also not the best for Miramar. A little bit shifted over to the east, heading towards Puerto Pariso. and uh, I, I, I'm watching, I guess. The Vietnam Turkey situation. It looks like it's the same. To be honest, they're right on top of each other on the mini map. So I suspect we've got to round two. Ding the bell. Let's go. Got Loki already here, trying to find some damage to a player from Thailand. Unable to get it though. Very early with these quick drops to try and find a shot on an angle like that one. And okay, here we go. It's a hot drop again. Paper thin. Turkey and Vietnam coming in here. Hot. Oh, this one's even spicier than the last go around. Turkey. Trying to play a little bit of defense. Vietnam surrounding, swarming. Trying to see if they can finish the job a little bit quicker, potentially. Southern Circle touching the tip of Partona. Himas with that mutant. Very good gun right now in the oh. meta. Don't count out the mutant in the DBS. I mean, this combo, not bad at all in this situation. Oh, yeah, especially when players are even struggling to find body armor. It's a lot of potential for damage here. I'm loving the loadout here for Vietnam. Way more than what I'm seeing from Turkey. And, and look at Mar look, we Marco. We have, we have an M249 here for Schofield. That's very good. But it feels like basically the rest of the crew has DMRs or SRs, which is basically the worst case scenario in a close quarters fight like this one. And there's Vietnam. They've got they've got a barrel. They've got an AK. They've got an M4. Chloe's now going onto the high ground with a Car 98. And that kind of means that that M249 has to be the difference maker. Yeah. But if for Turkey, because they're, they're boxed in. Now, there is Argentina, who is once again maybe going to have a say in how this all goes. You can see Ale way on the outside. Oh! Laza, a great shot, finds the headshot under the lurking glories, takes him down. With an iron side SLR, fantastic angle there. He's had the soul read. He knew that glories would be rotating around that route, that outside. But here we go, the DBS is popping off. Schofield already going down. He must with a little bit of pre-fire, but takes a lot of damage jumping past that window. Well, the knock on the Chloris forces the issue for Vietnam. They have to take this fight now, try to finish the job. Duck two's on the angle, gets knocked by Ali from afar. The mad as well, trying to see what he can do. Vietnam's high sack, he wants the points, he wants the kill, and it is going to be Vietnam that is going to come out ahead, but it looks like they're gonna lose Duck Juice to the cause. Yeah, two knocks already. Is there's a little bit of third party action right there on that early skirmish. We'll see if Argentina decides they want to push the issue or not. Vietnam and Turkey popping off very early here. It seems like Chloris will finally be able to come to safety. And I'm really watching that mini map, waiting for Argentina to start to close in. You really hit the nail on that at the beginning of this fight, State. It, it really was just a gun difference, to be frank. I mean, Turkey, yeah, the position maybe not as good either, but it, it, it's impressive you get that knock on the Chloris, but then you don't have a lot to back the rest of that fight up except that M249, really. Ooh, Panzerfaust, very early here for Stakers and an MK12. Fun loadout. He's putting it in the car, of course. You guys should know if you've been playing the game, again, if you've been away from the esports or the game for a little while, you can put equipment in the cars as well. So that's why you're seeing him grab that Panzerfaust, shuffle it into the car. Translucent, oh. though, he's running the long skirt. The long skirt! Whoa. Oh, the, finally able to find the, the hip fire shots. Yeah, I'm actually shocked that he made the hip fires work there. That was insane. Able yeah, to take down Translucent is Translucent was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Long skirt is waiting for him. <laughs> That's one of the one of the worst players to run into like that, I yeah, gotta right? say. And the fact that he was able to hip fire him down. Is there nobody in that car? Is it, is it ghost riding? Oh, here we go. Yes, finally. We didn't get to see it in game one. I thought, well, the team that you would expect to maybe be using the emergency pickups uh, is possibly Thailand. Theraton 5 was notorious for doing that at PGS2, uh, using those pickups. But Brazil, uh, obviously in Campo Militar, so a long way to go. Yeah. And Smart call. Is, yep, exactly. I love doing that. I want to say also, it just looks like so much fun. I mean, just imagine actually being that character, <laughs> just strapped Whee! in. <laughs> Would be a blast. I mean, is that a real thing in real life? Do people I've, do that? I don't know. Maybe in an extreme rescue situation. I, I've, I've no clue. Yeah. I think it. I think it sounds like something that would snap your neck when it picks you up. <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah. Who cares? This, <laughs> this is a it's video fun, game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so South Korea rotating in. They're all the way up to the top left. Uh, Cobra Ria. They have to rotate a long way in to get to this circle. Luckily for them, 
Not too many teams on the road into the circle. And it looks like we have an interview ready. And so there, kind of hinting at, you know, what we all were thinking about is that playing in the city that is his namesake in his home country, in front of the home crowd, wanting to win a PNC title there, get his first international title. Now, obviously, Donawa able to dominate PWS this year, uh, but they haven't been able. They've had they've been so close so many times to winning international events. Can this be their first one? Tickleton here crossing paths. Honey Badger watching the Brazil parachuters. So it looks like Brazil will be able to get down safely, but does the UK have something to say about it? Yeah, it looks like UK is actually hunting them right now with T-Bone coming in from that angle. Honey Badger as well. Just trying to find a really good spot to See if they can find something to work with here against Team Brazil. Brazil, of course, the top dog right now with 22 points on the board. If the UK could you know, clean them up, get a lot of frags. And this is pretty interesting, the way that Brazil is attacking this circle state. They went really early on that emergency pickup. You don't need to do it that early. You can sit through a blue or two. That's not a big deal. So a lot of teams like to wait for the phase two to see where it goes. But they opted to go early and aggressive towards the coast. They're way south. That's yeah, an interesting choice, and I wonder how much of that is them just trying to get in before it gets too clustered in terms of de population density down on that south side, and how much of it is just them really wanting to frag out again in this game? Because, of course, the earlier you get into a circle in a position like the south where Brazil is right now, the earlier you set yourself into opportunities to actually rack up a lot of kills. Right, it, it, you know, going, I, I like to play from the south to north uh, on Miramar in this part of the map, uh, because it's all uphill. And so mm -hmm. even though high ground is nice, you, you are afforded a lot of cover, a lot of ability to make mistakes, find angles, to reposition. Uh, and you can see here exactly, LFP01 is able to kind of stretch out a little bit, uh, find some information. Australia did rotate in uh, just to the west of them. Uh, but it looks like for now, Australia has settled up shop. Meanwhile, Germany doing Germany things. This will be uh, the, the MO for them, folks. They will sit on the edge of the circle. In fact, one of their players is even on the chicken wing island. Like, <laughs> this is just, this is them in a nutshell. I told you, this, these guys play so fun, so interestingly. They're so fun to watch. I had a blast uh, watching them get second at PGS1. So this, is, this should be a, a really enjoyable tournament to watch this Germany squad. I mean, of all maps, Mirabar is probably one of the best ones to play edge because usually the pickings are very good. Being able to catch people on the rotation into the circle or just out of it into a better position, and we'll see how that plays out for Germany now with Anonyx and the Seoul Korea crew rolling in. They drove all the way up from El Pozo, that northeastern, northwestern, excuse me, side of the map do you without too much difficulty. Do you think I could get a Dehan Mingu chant started if I... <laughs> <laughs> from here? <laughs> yeah, do you think I could do it? Maybe on day three. Uh, I'm gonna, I, okay, okay, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> uh, I'll save it, I'll save it. Uh, if, in case people don't know, there's like a really famous ch like chant they do here for national events in Korea. Where they, Dehan Minguk is literally Republic of Korea. Yeah. Uh, and then they clap, 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 clap every after it. So anyway, a fight breaking out. And once again, Chinese Taipei playing a little defense and playing it well. Finna, Finna just not enjoying that moment. Yeah, with a 2-2 split even. Chinese Taipei not going to shy away from defending this position here. Even though they might be outgunned. So, oh, Xavier with a nice angle there was able to spot out Finna. I mean, the good news here for Chinese Taipei is no one else is really interested in this, even though it's a 2-2 split. And, you know, for now, Canada not going to over-aggress unless I would suspect unless they find a knock. So, Savior, though, going to use these smokes to get back into the where into the firehouse compound. And Leo going to move the vehicle to safety. Wants to keep these tires a little bit more fresh, if possible. Already lost one on their Bronco. So they need to kind of hightail it out of there. Second circle will give us what location... That took longer than I expected. <laughs> Los Leones <laughs> over to um, the east. A pretty fair circle, all things considered. Los Leones and a little bit south of it. So Chinese Taipei going to be very happy with this one, given their split. And actually, you can see Canada retreating Woo! a little bit Wait, there on the what map. Are they doing? Is, 
Oh, who is fighting this? Well, no, 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 but look, they didn't all go on it. Oh, huh. I wonder if that's intentional or a mistake, if they're hedging their bets. Yeah, I wonder. I. It's not often you see a 2-2 two -two split with an emergency pickup like that one. I but... am genuinely curious about what this is, because it's H1 and Snaker, so these guys aren't on the same team. Kickstart, as everybody knows, has come over to the Sonics now, uh, replaced Mime on the Sonics, so USA Team Sonics and Snakers. Uh, but this is quite interesting. I, 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 I'm, I'm very curious about what they're going to do. We'll see how it plays out for them. Heaven actually finding a really nice angle. Gets a ton of damage on Poochil to start things out, but cannot get the finishing blow. And finally, Soul comes in with a headshot there on the M4. That's going to be Poochil's going down on the rotation. So Thailand, one player down. Korea have revealed their position, but luckily for them, not too many teams in a in position to really actually hammer them for this. So Create is going to pick up a point and then work their way into the circle a little bit more secure. And now here's things where it get tricky for Team USA, man. Like, they opted for this, I don't know what, <laughs> they went way to the, the resort. Okay, so they're going to try to at least guarantee that they have two on the resort. They're going to try to drive these other two there. Germany, maybe Brazil, having something to say about it, we'll see. As Kickstart and Shrimzy, newly... Uh, newly minted teammates trying to see what they can do. Tanadol looking for revenge against Korea, but that is a long distance to be shooting Korea. Gonna have to be content playing edge for now. Oh, Kickstart coming right on to Vinny here. Let's see if they actually decide to engage. Seems like both gonna shy away from this one for now. Kickstart more focused on joining up with his teammates than anything else in this position. I suppose Brazil with a 2 2 split, they really don't want to hedge their bets too much mm, on our yeah. engagement there. I agree. Uh, they, they can't really take afford to take a fight. So this is going to pay off for the United States. They're able to use those first two players to scout and then rotate to get to them. So that's that's a bit risky, I would say. But you know what? It paid off. And look, there's only 18 games in this event. I think you're going to have to take risks potentially to win it. Yeah, and it worked as well as it possibly could have. That was a lot of territory to traverse for Kickstarter and H win, but they were able to do it without too much trouble at all. Now holding on to the resort. As you said, it's oftentimes easier. Oh, wow, seeing some tricks right here from the Australian fellas. It's like Cardo's a nice flip, but for the Americans, working at a resort, gonna be a really nice position going south and north in a circle like this one. I agree. I, I really like what Team USA did here. Again, that, that brilliant shot calling from H win once again. Here we go, big fight right now. Grenade out, but it's short. Show trying to watch the angle. He's got one. Oh. The drive by Show isn't able to find another. Crazy there to back him up. Traded by Luke 12. Only Luke 12 alive for Australia. Cannot find that spray. That would have been huge if he could have shut down the rotating Aches left. Instead, Aches left is going to come in and finish the job. And Aches left coming up as a hero here. Just saving the day against Team Australia. We'll see as the res is coming in. You can see LFB1 on the minimap is gonna try and get a bird's eye view on this fight. But luckily for Team China, they're all under the hard cover of this building as the circle works its way to the Northwest. And man, what a clutch performance from Aix left right there, really saving the back of his team. Yeah, the timing really, really good there. As you would expect from one of the best in the world. He has the, the, the game senses of a god. He comes through big for Team China, and they're able to get back up to full strength. Germany going a little bit center. They have to. The, the circle hard shifted up to the west, uh, so they have to find a different angle. Now Sho even has scooped up an MG3 out of a crate, so that's a huge pickup. That gun, by the way, devastating if you're able to really get it, uh, you know, get a few bullets out of it. it. Takes a little while to wind up. Once it gets there, it is nuts. Hope to see some of that used in action here as Brazil sparking going to rotate in right into that tree. I think he probably had his map open or something like that. Yeah. Coming down this hill as Brazil is going to consolidate after this 2-2 split. Luckily for them, LFP1 and Haven already kind of have a beachhead on the southwestern side of this circle. And now Team Denmark rotating through Los Leones. They are the only team in this area, so it should be safe passage for them. It's to the northeast. It's pretty interesting. They have a lot of space up there on the, uh, on the edge of Los Leones. Like, yeah. Nobody's really up there except kind of Vietnam. So Denmark could take their time, frankly. And Denmark, of course, they don't know that exactly just yet. So they got to play it a little bit close to the vest as Sandstorm coming in, catching a significant portion of the circle. So this is going to eat through some of this utility these players have. Got to pop some boosts. Yeah, the, blue, the blue zone bag doesn't help you against this either. No. 
it, but again, it's like, it's not really not that bad. It does, I think, I, I guess I'd call it an energy drink's worth of damage. Maybe a little like a, bit more yeah, than that. a little I'm bit more. Sure. Yeah. But at, at the end of the day, it's, as you said, it's not. It's like a bandage and an energy drink. Yeah, whatever. Nobody cares. It's just annoying more than anything because you're like, oh, I can't see anything for a little while. And it slows you down, too. You can't move as fast in it. So it's kind of annoying in that aspect. Yeah, but luckily for basically every team that was caught up in it, they were already holed up into a nice defensive position. So not too much opportunity lost as we see Brazil on the minimum actually rotating quite a bit, setting up another split. Meanwhile, USA is going to start working their way into the circle. I love how I'm calling this for Brazil when USA is on screen and <laughs> switch to USA and Brazil comes on screen. The, the observers are like just a, a step behind you or ahead of you. I'm not sure which it is. We, we just got it flipped. Yeah. Your, your brain waves aren't quite in sync yet. We're working on it. We're working Day on one. It. We'll get there. Day one. We'll get there. Uh, USA, though, man, I'm, I'm a little bit sad for the USA because I loved that uh, emergency pickup rotation they tried, but is it going to really matter? Because they're going to have to fight for this. And Canada has a pretty darn good angle down on top of them. Keenan. Gonna let loose with the grenade, knowing that America doesn't have much choice but try to drive into this. Now the grenade just a bit preemptive from Keenan. The rest of Canada right there behind him. Finna now driving back in the direction to support his team. He had flanked out early to control a warehouse across the street. Going to have to reinforce here against this dangerous USA squad. Yeah, USA's gonna try and push. Trimsy luckily able to pull back from that one as Shinboy had a really nice angle on him. Meanwhile, China and Germany going toe for toe right now. On the other side of the circle, looks like Micah did get taken out. Koho should be able to safely res him from this angle. It seems like no other team has an angle on that one, but the vehicles here for Germany are just in complete disarray. It's going to be very hard for them to maneuver from <gasps> this position. The mortars, the mortars are being oh, settled oh, out. They're oh, being angled. Go. All right, the bath is being done. The, the, the square roots are being calculated. <laughs> See if China can find some damage. They got your handy dandy calculator. No. no, they abandoned it. They're just setting it up preemptively. I think they're going to maybe use that to clear space. Mm. I, I, I suspect that is to, to clear the fields. Oh, wow. Canada behind all of this. I thought we were going to see a head-to-head -head battle between the USA and Canada, but Canada actually able to skirt disaster and just move to the north and reconsolidate at that warehouse, the beachhead that was set up earlier by that 1-3 split. Now into the circle, and that kind of makes the situation a little bit more difficult for the USA. You know, if USA actually had won that fight, then suddenly they have some breathing room to get into the circle. But now they're going to have to push into a more entrenched position in the circle where every compound is either held by Canada, by Vietnam, or by Chinese Taipei. And that's a really tough roll of the dice. And the, this is kind of an interesting gamble here from Canada because... They might have overthought this a little bit. There's still one team in the mix that they maybe didn't expect, and that's the UK. Meanwhile, Denmark has Japan in front of them. Japan had a good first game, I'd say. I, I'd qualify that as a pretty decent first game for Japan. They had some good fights. Kane was not afraid. He was taking you know, opportunities to find flanks, get some kills. Whoa. Run AX just swats Gustav down. There's a grenade in hand, I think, as well. Yeah, from Gustav. He was dead no matter what. Klib trying to punish Run AX, but not able to find the mark on those grenades. Now, what a fantastic 1-3 split there from Japan. Denmark was trying to just peer through on all three play players for Japan down there in that trench, not knowing that Runox actually had the perfect angle, and Finna with a great trigger finger. Able to take down Himots right there with a headshot as he drove by. Vietnam bleeding out right now. Even more shots coming in from the hill, as I believe Chinese Taipei is getting into the mix. And now, look at this. This is what I was talking about earlier. Canada trying to drag USA into a bad situation like you're alluding to, but they might get paid the price. But Bard right in the middle of a BZ grenade. He is in trouble, but H-Win found the knock on to Keenan. Vard able oh. to just barely heal through it. The Molly didn't connect. The grenade bounces on the box and bounces over. T-Bone trying to do what he can. H-Win stuck in the blue. Yeah, but has to go for a heal. Yeah, but USA, they have to cross that road right now. There's no cover. They're still in the blue, so they're going to be pushing the position there on Team Canada. Shinboy with some nice defense, able to get a knock right there. America's up against the ropes. It's just Snickers, Ooh. and he finally gets cleaned up. Canada getting all these kills as they're able to hold down this position, and the UK didn't have much to show for it. And that was a brilliant blue zone grenade from Team Canada to keep the UK at bay, to allow this fight to just be them versus USA. Now they're trying to lick their wounds. Fex trying to take advantage of this timing. Can he find any more damage? Doesn't spot anybody really. Smokes out behind him. And that gives him a moment for pause to see if Brazil is going to try to aggress onto their flank. 
And the fact that Canada was able to fully get the reses up and the heals coming in here before Vex could actually find some damage here. That spray was good for some body shots. Nade coming in, not able to get the knock there. The Canadian players just barely looting. And now, UK on their flank have Brazil to contend with. In fact, with this blue zone. Yeah, that doesn't feel good. Does not feel good. Canada trying to load up and move out. Pure Boy now gets clipped. This protracted fight with Denmark is still going the way of Team Japan. Kane now going to get involved, has the knock on to Kino. Denmark struggling here, only one on their feet, and it's Beamy and forget it. Team Japan does a great job boxing out Denmark. And Kane, so far today with the DMRs, this has been coming through in the clutch here for Team Japan, a big part of why they're ranking in the top three right now here, partway through. Map number two is now Vinny. Gets a jump right there on Heisaki. Vietnamese, Vietnamese player going down as Brazil is going to try and find their way into the circle. Luckily, they do have a crate for hardcover and some loot right there on the edge. Taipei just making everybody's lives difficult on this eastern edge. Just able to kind of turret from their position. Brazil, marvelous patience here in this game state. They're doing a really good job just finding their moments to kind of pick and prod and kind of dissect the teams around them. Yeah, Canada finally getting eliminated there from that warehouse. Chinese Taipei in the UK just a little bit too tough as neighbors to deal with. And now for the UK, it's going to be lights out as they get eliminated. And Chinese Taipei in Brazil just absolutely cornering everyone near that warehouse. No survivors. Feels like they've got a monopoly on the east side right now between the two of them. Saman going to go down to Savior, the IGL for India. In a bit of trouble, Unforgiven trying to do what he can, but this Taipei position, dude. It's so good. Yeah. They just had the high ground on. It feels like basically everybody on the Eastern side. India is taking a lot of damage. Canada and the UK were absolutely devastated by those DMRs. Now Nade's coming in on what I think is the last surviving player here for Vietnam. It's going to be Chloris. That frag not good enough. But actually, Chinese Taipei again coming through on this. As Brazil, they want to clean up the Vietnamese team. Eventually, they are going to be able to do it, but I mean, they might pay the price here with Chinese Taipei. Leo just having a fantastic angle on this side as well. And now China with a 1-3 split trying to punish this Brazil knock, knowing that the timing here, if they can get there, they might be able to do some damage and claim this position for themselves. Germany across the way also kind of watching and seeing how this one's going to shake out. Aix left trying to push as much space as he can. Nurens does find Run AX. It's actually an Onyx from Korea. They've been sitting quietly out in this western edge, and now might be their opportunity. Kane with the M249, not able to connect. Tanadol going to be able to back him off. Fight continuing on now between Japan and Thailand as the nades come through. And actually, Seoul comes through to hit Kane as Korea just continuing to create problems for all these players on the edge, holding onto that compound for as long as possible. I'm not going to pop some smokes and try and go for the clutch res onto Kane. Is Thailand also bleeding out? A lot of knocks on them as well. And now finally, China, Aix left in show, making the run of their lives through this field, through Chinese Taipei, through the crossfire of Korea. Longsker will get taken out for it, but two players do survive. Yeah, it is going to be Rexco for Germany, who's going to claim that point from Longsker. Korea taking their time on oh, that southwestern no. edge. 20 HP on crazy. Oh my, One no bullet. way, no way. He got there, he did it. That's amazing. Seoul just not able to find the find the spray in time, and that's a huge sigh of relief. For, oh, never mind, forget it, and Onyx, he's coming in, he's striking from the roof. And Onyx with a TMR angle is, now Korea's gonna pounce on this position. Seoul wants a clutch nade right now. If it's oh. good, it can get two or maybe even three, and it seems to be right on the money. But the car is shielding a little bit from the damage there. Second nade, we'll see if it's good. The car blows up, almost knocks over crazy. Got to be careful with those collisions. And Korea's fighting three teams at once right now. And uh, now Argentina comes in. They sweep through, take out Japan. China on their last leg. Show bleeding out so quickly. Crazy there as well. Not much he can do. Chinese Taipei continues their overwatch of this circle, just doing damage to everybody. Brazil has been eliminated in seventh, but still another strong game from them. Five kills and a placement point. They are not going to be disappointed with that. And Chinese Taipei is just racking up so much damage on that plateau. They're just abusing the high ground to the best of their ability right now because they know the next circle is not going to be kind to them as a nade. From LA comes in. That's Norens going down there for Team Thailand. Thailand now down to two players. 
as Danadol is going to try and find a dip. He gets knocked <laughs> by Heaven, though. There's so much bloodshed here. Ooh, poor Danadol there. Mid-air knocked. And Onyx going to be the one to scoop up that point for Korea. Grenades now continue to rain. Rossida Jr. Getting cooked like the rotisserie that he gets. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Uh, uh, the Molotov just shy of him right now. He is able to pop the first aid kit, so he's back up to 75% HP in the circle, centering all the way down here into the southwest. So Chinese Taipei, finally they're going to get flushed out of an unbelievable position that has leveraged so many kills, so much damage on the board for them. We're going to have to go into the Dragon's Nest, and I guarantee that every single team in the lobby is very aware of Chinese Taipei's position. They've been the thorn inside <laughs> of everyone, and these teams would love to get some payback as they rotate in. Yeah, look at that, even Heaven taking some damage has to prone down. And certainly everybody's angry at Chinese Taipei. 10 kills, already a double digit affair for them, no matter how this shakes out. But I look at this circle, I look at this map state, and could this be Team Korea's first chicken dinner at PNC ever in their history? It's sold looking it, that way. Sold it damage to an attic so well. <laughs> Rossida Jr. here with the prone, of course, you take a little bit less damage uh, from those grenades. So able to survive, live for another day. Yeah, that nade also just a little bit short right there on him. But Korea just in a commanding position here on the western side of this circle. And they should have a good position in the next circle as well, unless they get flushed out by this one. And Chinese Taipei, finally, the blue is closing in. They got to make a run for it. You got to hope that this is going to be a brawl between Argentina and Chinese Taipei if you're a Korea fan, and indeed it kind of is, but it's actually wow. Seoul who's going to find one, and finally Pongsker able to get it under control at the barrel, finds another. Now Anonix springing into action, uses the opportunity there to take down Rossida Jr. with Evan. Leo under pressure from Germany in this shack. Seoul here trying to take some space, trying to find some damage. It is absolute madness. Chinese Taipei out. What a great affair for them, though. 11 points in total as they definitely made that position, paid dividends for the duration of this game. But now finally the top four. We have one man up for Germany, one for Argentina, one for China, and a full four-man squad for Team Korea. And I got to say, everything. I think you might be right. This might be their time to shine. And Onyx coming on the right side. He wants to find the angle here on Aik's left. He knows. He saw him. He is going to try to push for it. And with a little help from some friends, they are going to clean out. Team China, two players remain, two teams remain. Let's see if any damage can be done here. Micah trying to get in, but he wow. stopped short instantly by Anonix. Rybox out in the open now. He gets one. Can he find any more? No, it is going to be the chicken dinner for South Korea, finding their first ever in front of the home crowd here in Seoul. What a performance, 12 kills. And you can see a huge, huge celebration from Anonix, knowing the importance of that moment. What a momentum building moment here for Team Korea, finally picking up their first win, and it's here in the home soil. And I gotta say, Paper, that I can feel this stadium shaking. The fans absolutely loved every minute of that. They know about Korea's struggles in the PUBG Nations Cup, the history, and all the pressure on this team right now, and completely contrary to Team Brazil, who exploded with excitement. For Team Korea, it felt like a weight lifted from their shoulders when we got a shot of them there on camera, as finally they were able to deliver that victory right here in the home soil. 12 kills, 2K plus damage, a phenomenal performance, as nearly the full four-man squad able to survive and emerge victorious here in just the second match of PUBG Nations Cup 2023. Yeah, you can see the Donawa coach, Sonic, the coach for Team Korea, Coming up there, big smile on his face. A great game for Argentina here. I don't want to take anything away from the way they played in that game. They were absolutely incredible here, making a really strong statement, a really strong start here, shooting up to third place in the leaderboard from the middle of the pack. So that is something you love to see from this Argentina squad. Doing a great job controlling that northern side. Never really falling under that damage curtain that Chinese Taipei was putting out yeah. and able to survive uh, long enough to find that second place finish. Yeah, they were able to get a lot of really good 3Ps there, especially when other teams were trying to rotate around them just because of the chaos caused by Chinese Taipei. And for Argentina, oftentimes it almost felt like they would hear Chinese Taipei shooting out and be like, okay, this is also our time to peek over the edge, get some damage done. They rack up nine kills for their credit and move all the way up into third place. But wow, what a clinic from Chinese Taipei for what felt like the majority of that game getting 11 kills.
But still, the fact that Korea, at the end of the day, was able to pick up one more than them, getting an even dozen 12 kills, considering how much damage Chinese Taipei had from that top spot, it's just incredible. Yeah, no, I, I really agree. I mean, Korea kind of waited it out, played the edge of the circle really nicely, and was able to get through there in the end uh, in kind of typical Korea fashion, just sort of finding the right moments to take their strikes, you know, finding good grenades, finding good damage, never really overextending, overplaying their hand. And that is something that absolutely uh, the Donawa team in particular is well known for. Yeah, they were very quiet, very conservative through a lot of the mid game, just kind of taking the easy battles when they could. And then finally, when the final circle came in, they just absolutely dominated that position. They had the Northwestern side of that circle on lock. They played the terrain to perfection. They knew these other teams had to make very perilous rotations to even get into the circle. And Korea just gave no one an opportunity. And as a result of that, with the top four teams, it was a 4v1v1v1, basically. Yeah. And you can see the communication is good here for Team Korea as well, right? Like the way that they're maneuvering off of each other, the way that they're clearing space, identifying targets, and eliminating them uh, was top notch. Now, of course, this started out with Vietnam winning their drop against Turkey. You know, tomorrow we're done with Miramar for today. Will that hot drop continue? We'll have to see. But an explosive start here on our first look at the new Miramar and PUBG Esports. Uh, we still have Tago and Vikendi coming up next, and we get our first look at Vikendi in PUBG Esports ever. Oh, it's going to be a madhouse. PUBG Esports history. It's going to be a madhouse, Paper Thin. I cannot wait. And what a treat these first two games have been. I feel like the action absolutely popped off, even more so than other PUBG events that I've seen. I mean, you can really tell that every single team here is doing absolutely their 100% best. They want to bring home that trophy. They want to represent their nation and deliver that national pride. And the momentum just feels so high right now for Team Korea coming off their first PNC win in just match number two. Yeah, can you believe it? Uh, what, a, what, a, what a way for it to happen too, right here in front of the home crowd. Uh, such a strong region throughout PUBG Esports history and further cementing their legacy is South Korea. Argentina, Chinese Taipei. China had a really good game here too. I thought they were maybe gonna third party that Brazil kind of knock where they took those hay bale stand thing, whatever that is, and then they backed off of it. I think they realized that it was going to be a little bit too much to get up that hill and get those kills. Yeah, it was a dangerous position for them. Uh, you know, maybe if they were able to make that rotation a little bit more safely, they could have had a chance, but when you, get to, those late game, when you get to those uh, late game circles, though, where it feels like every good position has already been fortified and entrenched by teams like Korea, like Chinese Taipei, it's a very, cool, very difficult hand to be dealt, but China, to their credit, they played it very well. They got six kills in total, racked up a lot of points, but man of the match, it's going to be Seoul. Living up to his name here in Seoul, Korea, 864 damage, four kills, four knocks, just fantastic. Yeah, it's a treat here to have the hometown hero coming up big, big damage, big kills, and uh, the namesake of this wonderful city here. It just absolutely, he's been incredible all year. Just period, end of story, you know, this guy has such a tremendous upswing in PUBG Esports history. He was kind of on some middling teams for a while, made a big splash uh, back in 2019 with Media Bridge Squared uh, as an individual performer. Now he stepped up, not just as an individual performer, but as an IGL uh, for his team as well. But still, Brazil is going to be leading the way. It feels like even going back to the early PWS, Sol always was one of those guys that was just fantastic with a gun. But now seeing him here at the PUBG Nations Cup, he feels so much more well-rounded. The game sense feels a lot better. And he's just got that killer instinct to absolutely deliver MVP for performances here for Korea. And if he keeps it up, Korea might not just be looking at a top three, but they might be looking at a championship here in PNC when all is said and done at the end of this weekend. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine? And for players like... You know, and Onyx and Loki. I mean, Loki's won some titles, and Onyx never has, uh, you know, at least internationally. Uh, domestically, sure, but, you know, the, the players like him in Heaven, who's had a standout performance, you know, earlier with Ghibli at PGS1, uh, now with V7. Look, these guys all absolutely nuts right now in their region and want to get it done here, but still Brazil, another stand in the way. Chinese Taipei, strong start. Love what I'm seeing from them. Having an absolute blast here. So you take a look at this final circle. Germany pinned on the bad side of this one, but Germany's kind of doing some good work here, getting deep into the games. Yeah, they're not racking up a ton of kills, but they're really always in it towards the end. Yeah, playing the edge of the circles worked so well for them here in these first two games, and I wouldn't be surprised if they just continued with that as their MO, even though it didn't net oh, the will. highest number of kills so far. Still getting some placement points for top three, and you know the kills are gonna come eventually, but this position that South Korea had 
was just so phenomenal with a four-man squad, just able to fan out at the top of that hill, rack up the kills, and I, I feel like they basically got every single kill in that final circle. I don't think they missed a single one. And they almost outdistanced Travel Germany, which is not an easy feat. I'm wow. going to tell you guys right now that trying to outdistance that Germany team is tough because they are all over the map. They're all, you were talking about, all over the edge. That is that is the way this team is going to play, period, end of the story. They will, I'm telling you right now, that's just the way they do things. That's how they operate. That's how they think. That's what makes them so fun to watch. Uh, yeah, but again, the, the damage here, really high for Argentina, right on the heels of Korea, just kind of got caught up in the mix there on that eastern side, whereas Korea had the full western edge under their control. Yeah, it feels like Korea just controlled the western edge. Chinese Taipei controlled the eastern edge. When the circle moved all the way to the west, Korea's like, okay, this is our time. We're not going to drop the ball, and they absolutely didn't. But, yeah, just racking up so many kills. And I, I, I can't underestimate or understate exactly how explosive this arena felt when they were coming in for those final knocks yeah, you can't to get the victory. You can't it was understate it? I can't understate it, no. You didn't even realize you did I that. I didn't did even you? realize, no. <laughs> All right, we have an interview with Bella coming up, so let's throw it down to the stage and get the interview. 전 세계 PUBG e스포츠 팬들을 위한 축제 PNC 2023. 안녕하세요, 호스트 벨라 아나운서 동수항입니다. Hello to everyone all around, all around the world. This is the festival PNC 2023. I'm your host, Bella, and welcome back. It's nice to see you all again. 이제 현장은 관객분들의 뜨거운 열기로 인해 엄청 후끈후끈 달아올랐는데 여러분들의 성원에 힘입어 PNC가 벌써 세 번째 시즌을 맞이했습니다. 이 PNC 세 번째 시즌인데도 새로운 얼굴들이 있다고 하는데요. Thanks to all your support, PNC is now on its third season. But this time, we have some new faces joining us for the game. So first up, we're going to have Team India's Translucent join us for his first ever PNC interview. 제일 먼저 팀 인도의 트랜슬루센트 선수부터 인터뷰 진행해 보도록 하겠습니다. 안녕하세요. Hello. 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 All right. So, 처음으로 PNC에 참가하게 된 소감 그리고 뭔가 인도가 왔다라는 자기 소개부터 좀 들어볼까 하는데요. Let's have like a self introduction moment to say Team India and me. Translucent is here. Yeah. Hello guys. We are Team India. Like we are the new PUBG. I, like, I would like to say region if, if we get the chance next year, which I'm pretty sure we will after our gameplay, after you watch the gameplay. Uh, we have played like lots of PUBG, but never even, uh, but we couldn't show our skills like anywhere. So that's about it, I guess. Yeah. 이제 인도 새로운 지역 PUBG로 이렇게 참가하게 됐는데 뭔가 처음이지만 그래도 뭔가 기대가 가득한 우리 텐스 텐트 선수의 발. 대답이었습니다. 자, 이제 PNC 처음으로 이제 참가를 하게 됐는데 좀 기대하고 있는 부분이나 좀 우리 인도가 좀 보여주고 싶다는 부분이 있는지. So this is your first ever PNC. What do you have like what do you hope to accomplish as team India? Uh, we are looking at a top 5 finish at at best, but anywhere in the top 8 would be like good for us. That's what we are. 오, 처음 참가하는 만큼 어디든 뭔가 결과에 상관없이 만족을 하고 온, 온 것만으로도 기쁘다고 어, 너무 긍정적인 답변을 해줬네요. 그러면 뭔가 저는 이 이름을 듣자마자 아, 뭔가 투명성? 어, 펍지에서 투명성은 별로 안 좋은 것 같은데 이 닉네임을 고른 이유가 좀 많이 궁금했거든요. So when I first heard your name, Translucent, I feel like that might not be the best goal plan. So I want to ask, how did you come up with that name? I think it was like early, like I, I was gaming in my early days. Like I, I saw it in my science book, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it in like a game. I think it was, and it was online, I think. But I couldn't get the name, so I added a 3 in the, instead of E. Oh, okay. I get Quark Tech, so Translucent, Lucent, Kron, Tano, or Pandande. Oh, Bunga Bame, Turoso, Shidore, and then there? Oh, Egato, and then the Wolle, Indian, Idamira, or so, Iman, Samur, Bako, so you get the Motin, Idam, Kaka, and Taraguaneo. Kramri, Indo, so, Ungonago, Indian, Pembundere, do Hamadi Kokea, they get so. Let's have a shout out to all the fans who at home watching from India. Thank you for all your support to all the fans watching us at home, and thank you for. To all the Indian fans watching us right now on Hindi stream and Sky Sports stream, thank you. 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 Thank we're going to be back with match three, so don't go anywhere. Do it! 
spotlights, the world's watching every move. Dirty work, deep burn, trying to stay in the groove. Synergetic soul, soul. Feel like safe in everyday life. Hey, see mine. Hey. Say for soul. Yeah. With the innovation, you with the exciting, futuristic soul, soul. Inspired the birth, transition and technology. Living global, soul, soul. Stand 
the Freud the Bar, Bell City Soul. I'm here today at Silverstone, the home of UK Motorsport. I've been invited by the makers of PUBG to take part in a mystery challenge, and I can't wait to find out what it is. Today you'll be driving the Aston Martin DBX 707 under the guidance of a former Formula One world champion, Damon Hill. Wow. Welcome to Silverstone. Do you want to know about the DBX 707? I would love to. Come with me. If you're not careful, you can, you can make the car get very out of control. If I turn left too quickly, Oh. Right? It's, yeah. it's not good. This is unlike anything I expected. Now it was my turn. Damon gave me plenty of advice on the best racing lines to take and the braking points to hit. So let's see how I did. Okay, Jackie, off you go. Nice and easy to start with, though, okay? I hope I haven't frightened him. Oh, that sound is absolutely insane. Show some respect. Are you challenging me? Hm. A tough nut to crack. Now, shall we fight? My turn! All right, here we go. Trust my shield! Fire away! Gotta try harder, huh? <laughs> I'm not catching fades anymore. Gotta keep my hands clean when they come for the ball. And welcome back, everybody, to PNC 2023, live here in the Sangam Coliseum in Seoul, South Korea. Nice little picture there of Yoido, in case you were curious what that, that scene of Seoul, South Korea was there. One of the famous business districts here in our wonderful city, a nice little island kind of out there uh, on the edge of the city, right across the river from us, more or less. And yeah. uh, uh, a really iconic city view. Uh, tons of them here in Seoul because it is a gigantic city. Yeah, it's massive, absolutely massive. And you know, Seoul, not only a beautiful city, but a fantastic PUBG player as Ooh. he led his Korean team to their first ever chicken dinner at the PUBG Nations Cup and catapulted Korea to the top of the rankings here as we get ready to head into match number three today. <laughs> Nautics there having a laugh with his teammates. And you, you can see that this Korean team Definitely looking to get the job done. And like you stated earlier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> like you said earlier, uh, you know, maybe the missing piece of the puzzle here was those chicken dinners for Team Korea. Could have been. I mean, you get, what, top four finishes in two different public Asian Cups without a chicken dinner? That's pretty unbelievable. So to come in here and get that fresh offer back after two games, get their first W and rack up 12 kills while doing it, be feeling really good is the Korean squad and as I said before the fans here in the Coliseum just were uproarious with that first victory and if anything is going to energize those players on stage it's going to be these fans right here hometown home territory Korea wants to win PUBG Nations Cup here for the homeland exactly and you know Brazil still on top still a lot to feel good about there Again, a, a solid game, five kills and a placement point. Again, six points, nothing. You, you're always going to take those. 
as long as you can have some big, bigger games behind them. Uh, so, you know, consistency, always a key part of PUBG Esports. Uh, we saw Thailand on screen a little bit earlier. Not a bad day for them in a way. Nine kills in that first game. That second game, one of the, I think, five teams that got a donut uh, in that last game. Or no, they didn't. They got two points. I take it back. They had two kills. But still, there were five teams in that previous game. Indi India, Denmark, USA, Australia, and Turkey uh, with zero points. Of course, Turkey just getting shut out early. Yeah. USA there, man, again. I I'm so disappointed that their, their kind of tricky rotation there didn't work out. It was so cool. So well thought out. Yeah, the circle just didn't really go their way. And I mean, oftentimes you can bounce back from a circle that's a little bit too far out there. But uh, luckily for them, they had to go into the entrenched positions of, if memory serves, it was like Chinese Taipei was on the hill. Canada was in the warehouse across the street. And then you had, what was it, UK yeah. right knocking on that doorstep. And so to come in from the blue with basically no cover and need to tunnel yourself into that warehouse, through smokes with three teams breathing down your neck with but nothing better to do. It's a very tough position, but as you said, I love the move that they did. The 2-2 two -two split, two going into the emergency pickup, and then two driving all the way around the circle was very creative. It's something that we don't usually see at high-level PUBG Esports. Yes. But it worked to perfection, and it's unfortunate they didn't get the dividends for it, but I mean, if they have play calling like that, eventually the wins are gonna come. The points are gonna come. That time it just didn't go their way considering where the pieces were on the board. Exactly, exactly. I got to give a shout out to that Team USA fan wearing a Sonics hat, also wearing a Ghost Gaming jersey. That is a throwback if I've ever seen one. Somewhere Hypoc is smiling uh, seeing that Ghost Gaming jersey. But I still really impressed with a lot of the way, the, a lot of the teams and a lot of the ways that they're approaching this event here uh, with some of the new kind of features and things like that. But. Now we have one of our newer maps. Of course, we got to see Tago at PGS2. We got to see how it kind of plays out. But yeah, now that the teams have had a little bit of time to kind of get a feel for it, get it, get it underneath of their feet, uh, how is it going to shape up here for our third map and third game of the day? I mean, the third map and the fourth map every single day here at PUBG Nations Cup 2023 is going to be a little bit crazy because we have Tago, as you said, which although we have seen it before, it's still a little bit unsolved. It's still got a lot of variety to it. There's some creativity to be explored there from all teams. But then we're going into Vikendi, which is just a complete wild card after this one. It's the first time it's going to debut here in professional PUBG. It's a map with a lot of unique features, unique elements, and it's probably going to be complete chaos, honestly. And I, I cannot wait for it. It'll be so much fun to watch. But before we get there, first we got to go to Sunny Tago, and hopefully some of these teams are going to be able to pick up some more points. I mean, surprisingly, the defending champs, the UK, only two points on the board so far after two games. They got to start picking up the pace. And some other teams down there near the bottom, such as Vietnam with only six points, although they did get four kills in that last match, haven't really been able to show up to the fans' expectations. Yeah, and again, I think obviously part of that for Vietnam, at least, is getting mixed up with Turkey in, yeah. the, in the early fights, whatever. Australia concerning here with only one point. Uh, through a couple games, Turkey was zero. Really surprising to me that both of those teams haven't found any points, but maybe a shift over to the new maps, as we often see, kind of changes the destiny, changes the momentum uh, for some of these teams. And, and you know what I'm excited about here is that, even though I will say that I, what, from the other casters, I'm not, not trying to throw any shade, that we get to actually properly pronounce these names. <laughs> and even a few of them, I kind of know what they mean uh, in terms of like, you know, what, what in Korean, you know, what their translation is. Uh -huh. uh, but, you know, here, you know, you get to play Tego, the home, you know, the, the map that's based in South Korea uh, in front of the home crowd fans. Uh, I think if I remember correctly as well, Tego is supposed to be on Jindo. I don't know if you know, I, I don't Jindo. remember. I, I think. Wait, it, where's Jindo? It's like I don't way know. on the southwest corner. It's an island. It's like a oh, big island west. on the southwest corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. I'm not exactly sure if that's true, but that's what I thought somebody told me. But hey, whatever. We are ready for Tego, game number three here at PNC 2023. Brazil leads the way, Korea right behind. Let's get into it. All right, let's get started here on Tego. First and only time we're going to see this map here today. So a lot of points up for grabs. And this kind of wild card map is we're sandwiching both this and Vikendi right in the middle of all three days here at the PUBG Nations Cup 2023. And as Paper Thin was saying earlier in the show, you know, the championship 
Tennis at the end of this weekend, it might be decided on which teams perform the best on these two maps because they are the most unique. They are the most new here in the professional PUBG scene. And let's see exactly what these teams have in store for us on the first showing of TakeO at PNC 2023. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, again, there might be hot drops. I have heard that there was still potentially uh, some contestant of Yongchun, uh, actually. Uh, so really curious to see if that will uh, materialize. We will see. Uh, you know, there are some center positions that may or may not uh, get contested. Yeah, I'm watching the drop and I'm not seeing anything too hot just yet. For a second, I thought Denmark and Chinese Taipei might be gunning at each other, but it seems like Taipei is breaking off to the north, Denmark down there to the south. But it seems like it might be a little bit more of a quiet game. Yeah, boo! No, nobody's hot dropping. No, they probably shouldn't. It's, it's probably for the best. Uh, but actually, this time around, because of the plane path, it looks like uh, Korea, I think, is going to be going to Yongchun. Now, that is typically Donawa's drop spot on this map, so... Mm. My assumption is is that should be theirs. Palace is going to be USA, wow. so it is going to be the Northern Island most likely to start. Yeah, almost certainly going to be this island here as the circle does go up that way. And Korean crew going to be really happy with this one, landing all the way up there in Yongchun. They have a handful of vehicles under their belt already, and they should have free loot where they are on the northeastern side of the map with a lot of time at their disposal. Oh, wow. Loki's going to use the glide. Where did he get the gas for this? Do they start with gas in esports mode? Maybe. Oh, oh, no. He clipped it. He clipped it. <laughs> He's those, doing tricks for us. Those wings are long. I, I thought he was going to clip it again for a second. Yeah. There. So. Oh, man. But he's actually going to be able to take this all the way to Yongchun. This, is, this is phenomenal. Uh, this is a really creative <laughs> use of the glider. Yeah, why not? We didn't get a hot drop, but we got Loki driving one of these things. Amazing. I'll take it. This, this guy just... Such an absolutely brilliant player. It was in a VSS at his feet. Oh, pick that thing up, man. <laughs> I'm a big VSS enjoyer. Me too, me too. I know a lot of these pro players never use that thing, but yeah, I'm a fan. I uh, love that gun. The, the Angry Bee Cannon is... Uh, <laughs> angry, angry Bee Cannon. Yeah, it's really good. I swear. Look man, at we're this. busting out all the vehicles here for <laughs> Team Korea. We got the mountain bike. <gasps> but Rossita Jr., if he sees this, Loki's... Oh, he's excuse me, Soul is just... This he's is a calculated move. He he knows. They want to try to pick this solo player. They caught this, I think, in the, the parachutes. I think they noticed this. Yeah, perhaps. They want to try to punish. Well, one of the benefits of that bike is it's very quiet. It is <laughs> Listen, it's quiet. right on your heels. Yeah, and Nonix is also coming in. Looks yeah, like he has a DMR. This. this is nuts. I'm, sh I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, I know it's more center circle. They spotted him. Souls relaying that information over to Anonix, and Rasta Jr. completely unaware. Already has a two vest and one helm. But man, team from South Korea has some really good guns to come in with this. Soul has a an AUG and I believe a Mini 14 with a 4X. Anonix also coming in with a scope there from the hill, and they are hunting this guy. Yep, they've got the angles covered. And Onyx here gonna hold the trigger. <laughs> he has no clue. Yep. Uh, they're, they're gonna wait until they've got him out in the open. But oh. he might be able to get out just fast enough that they oh, can't this, do anything about it. This angle is perfect for Ross and Ted. Uh, he, yeah, he it's just the, it's the It's the only blind spot between these two players. And actually, he might have caught wind of it as his teammates from Thailand just kind of peering in on that compound. I think you're right. Somehow they caught wind of this. I think you're right. I thought for certain that this was going on unaware. Well, over, this is on the southwestern edge, by the way. Australia, Germany, just kind of sizing each other up a little bit. And, you know, Australia trying to probably control that bridge. Uh, it's it's a, right, it's a, I don't know how to explain this, a double-decker bridge, I guess, okay. for, for lack of a better word, right? Yeah. There's, a, there's an underpass and an overpass uh, on that bridge. So it's kind of makes it a little bit more forgiving as far as bridges go in PUBG uh, to rotate across it. Meanwhile, Turkey making their rotation in right now. About dead center on this circle, if I'm not mistaken here. Thailand and Korea right at their doorstep. And Turkey had a pretty rough start in the first two games of this series with hot drops on Vietnam both times in a row. Now, Savior is going to let one vehicle pass. He's going to let the second one go, too. Suppose him being out in the open here does not want to trade his life for the life of someone else. Yeah, Savior opting to just tiptoe through the tulips there. Doesn't want to really reveal his position, let the UK go by, and 
you know, that's generally Chinese Taipei style there in, in international events. Oh, I'll show you though. Oh boy, Imhak Kane. They're ready for this. Imhak not able to find the opening spray, but it is going to be Wakakamukau taking down Kane. Long nice spray right there with that AUG. Oh my god. He's on the hunt right now for Imhak. Imhak's dead. He, he just has no chance. Oh. Okay. Barely able to get him. 11 HP. That was a valiant defense there by Imhak, considering the angle that he had to deal with. And so many guns from Team Australia. And Japan just got absolutely ambushed here. Yeah, the 2-2 two -two split. Going to be punished this time by Australia. Some much needed points for the Aussies. Mexico now sneaking in behind this. And th this is the interesting thing about the way that uh, Germany likes to play is that they're, they're kind of individual. They're, they don't mind kind of making calls for themselves, making plays for themselves, trying to see if they can punish. Tiggleton, I think, decently aware of this, but that those shots from the other members of Germany kind of not really going to help Rex go out in terms of finding any damage. Yeah, it's Chris just trying to find what he can find right there at that angle, but unfortunately for him, unable to connect. Meanwhile, for Team USA, where are we exactly? Right south of Turkey, eh? just to the northwest of Pallas. A nice center position given the circle, but one that can be a little bit precarious considering how much population there is surrounding this position. And the interview's ready. Let's see who we hear from. Oh. Perhaps not. <laughs> Wait. Uh, just one moment. There we go. Uh, it feels pretty amazing. Uh, it's always a great achievement to be voted or we made, I, I personally made MVP. So it's just a huge achievement as a player to come here. And um, I did get to come last year as well, but hopefully we actually, you know, prove ourselves and dominate everyone else this year. Well, I just joined Sonics and I haven't actually played any games with them yet, but um, I, I guess nothing's really changed for me personally because I'm not, you know, I haven't played with them yet, but... Uh, I hope I, I dog Tig, put him in his place before I'm on the team, you know? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, there there is a lot of, you know, kind of pride between Tiggleton and then a lot of the America's players who were his teammates, mm -hmm. you know, current or new. And uh, you know, Tiggleton said that he's trying to, like, one-up Shrimzy. Uh, apparently, they've only really scuffled with each other one time. Uh, in PNC history, it was like a 1-0. I, th I think Shrimzy's up on him 1-0 or something, but... They were tweeting about it, but, you know, <laughs> Kickstart wants to get on it, too. I mean, that guy, absolutely nutty fragger, so. Yeah, last chance, right? Here at PUBG Nation, Scott, before he becomes your teammate. Exactly. Okay, looking to change their destiny in this game. Denmark as well with their first appearance at a PNC. Trying to see if they can find some momentum. Yeah, already off to a pretty good start, although they haven't had a fantastic showing in either of the first two games. They're ranked 10 overall right now with nine points in total on the board. Certainly a... A good first showing for them here on day one of their first ever PNC. Yeah, look, you know, it's going to take a little while probably. I mean, these guys, I'm, like you said earlier, very strong players, you know, professional players uh, across a lot of different events. But this is their first opportunity uh, to really showcase uh, as a country what they can do. They are just going to look to rotate coast. And the coasts on this map, pretty forgiving. Uh, there's a lot of space to work with, a lot of rocks, a lot of dips. Uh, so this is kind of how I like to maneuver on this map. Try to use those, in, oh, disaster striking once again for the UK. I'm getting flashbacks to Chinese Taipei in the last game from this long distance with DMRs just raining hell on everybody around them. And that's going to be Fex going down for the UK. Rough start here for the Brits. Only two points in total on the board right now. And here in map number three, already down to three men at what, nine minutes? It's a good pick by Chinese Taipei. Yeah, they they look really good so far. I, I would love to see them keep it up. It's, again, such good players, such or so, a lot of history, I should say, with that Chinese Taipei team. So certainly would love to see them make a run uh, here at PNC. There come the crates. And uh, as, as those of you know, Tego, it's more than one crate that comes down, and the loot's kind of... Now, obviously, the red one's the normal sort of high-value crate, uh, but the rest of it can kind of differ. It can just be like an M4 and some 5.56, or it could be like, you know, level 3 helmet, stuff like that. So, and if wow. we're not even going to flirt with any river, we're just going to cut it out right away. Yeah, straight to the north, centering on Godok. So, a lot of these teams that are already playing center right now, such as Thailand and India, are going to be very happy with this rotation, whereas you just look 
Uh, the great migration there in the south of the map. Japan, Australia, Vietnam, Germany, Canada, Denmark, China, Korea, and Turkey all rotating in already. Want to be the first ones into this next circle because you know, in a circle like this one with 61 players alive, it's oftentimes first come, first serve to those prime positions. Yeah, exactly. Crazy out ahead of Denmark. And it looks like Denmark's going to try to cut in between them, but there's a lot of teams lurking. Turkey has found some of these houses just to the north of Thailand. Denmark flirting with disaster here. China had pulled up. They're going to have an opportunity to do some damage, but so far no connections found. That's a really tough angle there for China with the terrain being what it is and those large rocks. So Denmark just going to pull into this nice little tip right here. Hopefully find some cover. You can see from that shot that our observer is graciously giving us, China really doesn't have an angle to work with there on Denmark. So it's one less thing to worry about for them. Yeah, the problem for Denmark is those cars got beat up. Yeah. It's, there's some flimsy vehicles on this map. The pony does not take damage well. As fast and as maneuverable and fun to drive as it is, the one weakness it has is it is, it is made of paper mache. Canada now just getting propped up on that hill. Not too much to be found in their vicinity while Vietnam starting to rotate in. And they have a lot of room on this hill. There's India to the east with a very tightly clustered four-man squad. You can see Duck just kind of scoping that out right now. But besides that, Vietnam has a lot of area to play with. Meanwhile, Korea here in this nice little hill compound just playing defensively, kind of reminiscent of the way that they played in match number two. Yep, just to the northeast there of Golduck. And just going to be vibing. I don't really see anybody even considering uh, messing with their territory. So nothing to worry about for Team Korea currently. Nothing to worry about really for most of these teams. This northern part of uh, of Tago plays a bit like Sandhawk, oddly enough, because mm. of the way the terrain and the trees are. Um, a lot of players and coaches have told me that, that they kind of feel like this is like this northern island is a bit Sandhawky. It feels like it might be a little bit more safe than Sanhok, though. It is. There's a lot of different angles that these teams have been able to find themselves in that are just impervious at a long range. You know, opposite of what we just saw at the last two maps on Miramar, where everyone is just DMRing everybody else. And I feel like it's probably not going to be until the next circle comes in that we get some real action. Although, Tannenwald trying to find an angle right here. There's two bodies in the front seat of that truck. He's able to get a couple of body shots. And actually, Tingleton, there with a headshot on the Mini-14. And he's going to get the flush, maybe. Trying to get it. Looking oh, for the feet. Barely couldn't get the feet. I yeah. am shocked. I thought he had him dead to rights. It looked like he might have just enough an angle. You're right. He could see the feet, but the, the shot's just not able to connect. Take thinking about the frag. Going to go up and over long range. Oh, wow. He's got Does he have the trigonometry? But Snakers had gotten around the corner. It was, it was a good grenade, but Tickleton just a step too late. That was a nice nade. He had three more in the bag, too. So a lot more nades <laughs> coming in. That one also very good. Just right on the other side of that box as the circle's going to center up a little bit to the northwest. Look at Vietnam. They are just like out. I mean, yeah. they are completely out on that ridge line to the north of Godak. I mean, up until now, that ridge line has been completely safe. They've had nobody contesting it. But now with the circle closing in, you got to think that they're going to consolidate their position a little bit. Yeah, we'll see. China now roaming in. Right behind them is Chinese Taipei and Savior. He's going to be gunning there with the AWG coming out of the car. Full spray down to Longskirt, only one body shot connecting. This Chinese Taipei would love to try and clear this path ahead of him and make it a little bit easier to rotate back in because you know that once China stops, it's gonna be very hard for Chinese Taipei to actually break into this position. But so far the drive-by is just not really able to manifest anything. So Chinese Taipei got to be content to just hold on to the corner of the circle, play the edge. China going a lot deeper though. Korea gonna make their move as their compound was removed from the next circle. So opting to go center, phase three. A little bit of old school Danawa in the playbook there. Gustav has the knock onto the mad. X left, spots out, Chloris. Chloris, oh, oh, great cover there from Hemas. That is what you want to see from the superstar from Vietnam. Gets the knock onto X left. Got a lot of good support for the teammates now. And Denmark trying to break this position from Turkey. They get one knock. They get two, in fact. As Code Marco and Schofield both go down. Now Latza going to try and fight back here with a frag, but he takes a ton of damage himself. Actually, so much damage coming in. I believe double frag grenade somehow survives with 18 HP. First aid is popped. M4, but he's flashbanged. 
And, and now Beamy's getting closer and closer, Paper Thin. Yeah, not much you can do, man. Uh, this These compounds are tough to hold. There's a lot of little windows you can fit nades through. The doors are wide open. There isn't a ton of cover on the inside. It's going to take an absolutely heroic play here from Laza to get out of this. And not to mention he has Thailand on the other side. Yeah. No. It's a nice attempt at spraying, but there are just so many different angles you have to cover there as Laza and Turkey is going to get mopped up here by Team Denmark, who had an excellent breach on this position and now have pretty much in the north side of Goldock to themselves. Yeah, a little bit of long range damage there from Team Thailand does give a knockover. And actually, I can see Chinese Taipei using that moment uh, to rotate into Goduck as well. So, again, good coordination, good. Good comms, good uh, kind of macro play from Chinese Taipei. And Hemos is absolutely just a nightmare on this map. I, this is him at PGS2 all over again, just destroying Antego. Feels like he's really starting to get warmed up here with these DMR shots. First one was covering his teammate Clory, as he was under nade fire. And then that one, absolutely fantastic, gets yet another knock. Well, let's see where our next circle is going to go. Soul now continuing. Pick apart Team China. A little bit of pressure onto Vietnam too, but it's going to hard shift once again. Down to the Southwest, Team Canada in a prime position to find some good value out of this one. And they're going to rotate to the back of the hills, try to kind of consolidate this Western edge. Yeah, Canada, one of the only teams that really take big advantage from this hard shift down into the Southeast is now China is going to have a hard time rotating all the way out. You see Crazy 112 pops that heal, immediately gets to the Dacha. He's going to try and rotate in, but Chloris from Vietnam trying to make him pay for it. Does get some damage done. Not enough, though. And now China continues his perilous Whoa. run, and Pure Boy with a fantastic spray eventually does get hit by the car by Egg Slap, but he gets two knocks for his trouble. Japan doing huge damage. Oh, <laughs> what a spray. Pure Boy there. Holding it down, run AX with a Groza. Gustav from behind softens and finishes up run AX. So China, given a little bit of breathing room, potentially Gustav still had just enough an angle to tickle Longsker. Longsker able to get the heal off, and now USA going to be sliding on in to the middle of the circle. Korea trying to play the northeast side. A little bit of damage to Chinese Taipei, but they're cutting in towards China. Evan from South Korea now with a spray, going to try and make these rotations a little bit more perilous. As LFP1 with a good shoot down there on Honey Badger as another UK player is going to fall. They now only have two men up, and I do not think that Vard is going to be able to redeem his teammate there as the bodies just continue to fall. Now China taking a lot of damage. That's Leo going down from Chinese Taipei as Show is fighting back. Chinese Taipei and China really in a battle over here on the northwest side of Goldok. It's kind of become mutually assured destruction. Yeah. Uh, neither team is really able to profit much of uh, off of these long protracted battles across multiple rotations. UK Vard barely able to get through. I mean, one shot on him and he's done. So he needs to just hope that nobody sees him, but he's got Korea right in front of him. Now Zennon gonna try to push down the hill. Show cannot be rezzed by long skirt in time, but Nurens, it's actually Thailand Whoa. who's going to bail out China. Yeah, coming with a 3P. I love that prone spray there by Zenon. I mean, he had that lined up perfectly. If there was a Chinese player in that sight line, they were going to be going down, but instead getting bailed out from the crossfire there. Gut check here for Team India against Korea. Coming off of a big win in the previous game. There's also Brazil and UK, the spread out players of UK, Vard. He's been absolutely nuts at PNC in the past. Can he, yep, yeah, I was just about to say, can he come through? You bet. He's got one, Clip gets another, and Korea's just kind of sitting there just going, well, is anybody even going to get over this hill? And just biding their time right now, playing it really conservatively is South Korea as Haven finally takes down Heaven there from Team Korea. So Korea in a little bit of a more perilous position now with only three men up on this hill and surrounded by Brazil, India, UK, and Vietnam on all sides. And it's going to take a miracle for them to be able to recover from this correctly. The circle shifts even more to the west. Nade's now coming in. Tickles him behind all of this, was able to get a knock. Now Soul fighting back, gets LFP1 there with a great spray on that AUG. Yeah, and Korea's not happy about this third party from Brazil, and they're trying to punish it. But Haven's got Soul on the bad side of the oh. circle. Cannot find the shots before he has to reload. Soul getting tagged from behind, doing everything he can to survive. Throws a grenade in desperation to try to get away. Looks like he might have done it. He might even pick up the kill for it. LFP1 is oh. going to bleed out. Really well handled here by Soul. Micah behind all this, got two kills there with the Molotov, able to finish off both, both Adam and Shinobi, and now Anonix 
trying to escape. Korea somehow still has all four men up, despite all these attacks coming in, all these three Ps. Korea has been able to remain resilient here on the top of that hill, slowly working up their full HP. And now these other teams, they have to start thinking about working their own way into the circle as Brazil is doing now. Aisaki from Vietnam is going to try and get the spray off, not able to find enough damage, although Sparking's vehicle is burning. Yeah, and that's that flimsy pony I was talking about. Even though you're not hitting Sparking, you're hitting that pony and making it borderline unusable for another rotation, potentially. What a what a flank out here from Vietnam. What control of their space. Yeah, they may not have a ton of kills, but they're doing a really good job of making sure that nobody's going to be able to get into that northeast side. At the same time, huge props to Team Korea to be able to retain all four players up despite all the third-party attacks that were coming in. And now it's quieted down a little bit there on the northeast. And now they're, Korea's trying to box out the UK, and then Vietnam is going to dig their heels in and then try to box out Korea. But now Korea flanking down, trying to finish what they started over here. Vard done and dusted. And it's actually going to be Kino from Denmark who's going to pick up that point. So Denmark continuing to have a pretty good game here. Nine kills already for them. T-Bone gone doing Onyx's spray. South Korea has another fight ahead of them. But but Vietnam's attention isn't fully invested towards this eastern edge. No, they're working with a 2-2 split. They have Duck and Hisaki looking at the Brazilian team all the way far to the north. And now Chloris is the lone player, as you see on the minimap right there, taking some shots on Team Korea. So Korea, they have a little bit of area to play with. Denmark has three players to their south. Vietnam with his 2-2 split doesn't have the hardest clench on that top right portion of the circle. And Korea, you can see them. They're just trying to maneuver with these vehicles, trying to find some way to work it in. But Vietnam, looking at the minimap, the Doritos, all eyes on Korea right now as Heaven's going to be giving some firing support there on the background. That's going to be Anonyx rotating in, but then he does get knocked by Duck with a great spray. Coming out of that barrel, Sol and Onyx, the two lone players in that vehicle, both get taken out. And now Loki and Heaven, the foot soldiers here for Team Korea, on the flank are going to try and work their way into the circle. That phenomenal spray there from Duck Juice with that barrel, finding two headshots onto Korea. And they are trying to fight their way through, but Vietnam not having any of it. sol has gone as well. And Korea down to two players. They try to find some way through. Circle's going to hard shift down to the south, sparking up an over, though. Brazil, surprise attack from behind. And Isaki is going to pay the price. Not much right now that Vietnam can do to help Isaki out. No, Himas is going to rotate back up north to this hill and try and consolidate with his teammates a little bit there as they have Brazil still on the northern edge and Korea to the southeast to contest with on their path into this circle. And... <laughs> I mean, unless they can handle these neighbors to the best of their ability as Loki just pops <laughs> off on Denmark. I think Loki was looking to see if he had a frag grenade. Oh my oh, God. Wow. BB, oh, he got out of his car and it blew up on him. He was trying to get out in time, but Loki just ruined Denmark's round. Still a really good one there for Denmark. Tons of kills. And that gives Korea actually a chance to just focus on Vietnam. And although it's going to be a perilous one here, especially with Russ Ted Jr. getting that headshot there on Loki, it's going to be a difficult journey for them to actually find their way into this circle because given how little of that side of the road is left on the northeastern side, you got to think the only one team is actually going to be able to hold on to it. Everyone else has to find something else or they're going to die trying. Vietnam maybe biting off a little bit more than they can chew there. That angle for Brazil could be really, really devastating. But Himas. Himas again with a DMR. He has five bullets left in the SLR. Can he get one more knock? He's looking for the heady here on Haven. Not able to find it just yet. Now is Heaven coming in on Vietnam. Gets a lot of damage done with the spray. No knocks, however. Oh my god. It's just madness here. Germany getting involved. Taking down a lot of Brazil. Heaven had Himas out in the open, but couldn't find the knock. Duck Juice weak as well. Chloris trying to back off Korea with some utility, but it's going to be the vehicle explosion that takes Duck Juice down. So Heaven going to get the credit for the knock. Loki now trying to guard this edge. Should see those grenades coming out. Grenade in front of him does a ton of damage. Whoa. But out in the open gets one, but finally Korea is going to be taken down. I mean, Heaven and Loki just caused so many problems for all of their neighbors there. It was a valiant effort in the last moments. Got a lot of kills for their trouble. And now Vietnam's going to try and salvage this situation, work their way into the circle. But you can see it's Chris already looking to cut that off. He knows that Vietnam is battered and bruised here, trying to lick their wounds, get these reses on the top right side as the blue closes in. There isn't much time to heal. And if it's Chris can actually quarter them out, he can find two good frags. Uh, yeah, exactly. And not only two good frags, but control over the entire northern half of the circle here. It's, it's a lot of damage, though. Yeah, it's Chris. 
has to back down momentarily. Hemos is just absolutely fired up, but Mika is going to shut him down. Corey's now the only one left on his feet for Vietnam, and USA on the other side of things has a bit of an angle. Hemos does end up falling. Glory's now going to have to play salvage. Yeah, and Corey's probably just going to try and sink this one out for as best he can, considering that he has four men from Germany there on the wet side and a dynamic duo for Thailand. Actually, three players in that shed for Thailand as I missed one on the minimap. All hanging out in that shed, but I mean, this circle continuing the ship to the west. For Australia and USA, this isn't too problematic. Even for Germany, it's not that bad. But for Vietnam and Thailand, this is going to be a gargantuan task to actually find their way in. Yeah, and I think the real question for me now is, is how much avoidance of damage can Germany and USA find? Like, if they can mm. avoid, this is not great. Corey's huge knock into Mexico. So I thought Germany might be able to kind of put themselves in a winning position, but right now, Corey's is not having any of it. He's going to see a player coming out. Flood as well getting oh. involved in the mix. I don't know what's going on with Thailand. They keep knocking each other off screen. <laughs> I yeah. thought he got a knock on the guy for, for a second, but he actually got his teammate, yeah. It's the second time it's happened. I've, I've seen it in the kill feed before, and now the crossfire on top of Germany may spell disaster here on Tego. Yeah, it just took them a little bit too long to actually clear up Vietnam. They never could finally get that kill on Chloris, and then they were spread too thin. They had players on the other side of the road. And with both USA and Australia breathing down their neck, not to mention Thailand, it's just crossfire after crossfire. Two men knocked here for Germany as they're trying to salvage this situation. Finally, Vietnam is eliminated, but Germany with just one man up. Two of the knocks do finally get flushed as Flood is going to town here. That yeah, Flood having a really good one. Luke has been knocked, so Tickleton looking to go for the res. Flood keeping his eyes on that northern edge. Knows there's at least one player left up there. It's, it's Chris, gonna have to Try to lock things down. Snakers gonna get oh. knocked by that grenade. Just close enough to it. Huchel springs into action. Cannot oh. find the spray though and gets backed off and taken down. He needed that spray to connect there on Trimzy. Instead, it's gonna be USA fighting back. They do lose Snakers as he was too far away to get rezzed. And now it's three men up for the USA, three men up for Australia, and it's Chris, the lone survivor for Team Germany all the way in the north. And if you're it's Chris right now, you just gotta bide your time. Try to wrap this one out as best you can. Get any points you possibly can. Yeah, you gotta hope that USA and Australia beat each other up a little bit and you're able to find that moment uh, to come in and finish the job and maybe sneak a win out away from these two teams that have a lot of players that play at the same region, very familiar with each other. Circle pretty much centers up right here. Not too difficult for either the Australian team or the American team to really try and find their way in on this one. A lot of terrain to play with here with the soft cover of the trees and also these hills. But Australia for now, looking at the minimap, it seems like they really want to clean up Chris. They want to be able to set their eyes on the USA alone. And USA hearing these shots and knowing that they're not connecting on them should have a good idea that this is the situation unfolding on the north side of this map. So. America, I'm wondering whether they're gonna actually strike on this one. It seems like they're being very patient, waiting for the opportunity. They have a little bit of a slope with this hill to work with, but ultimately Australia does have the high ground. They just really wanna get its Chris as a thorn to their side out of the equation yep. before they butt heads with the US team. Yeah, the, Australia knows they have a difficult run down this hill when they have to make it. So if they can remove its Chris from the equation, it makes it a little bit easier. But I like what America's doing here. I think they're just going to be watching for Australia to come down this hill and see if they can catch them out in the open. And Australia just moving cars into position. There's, I think Luke 12 is in. Flood's vehicle will be in here shortly. So actually, I think you're right here, State. I think there's just enough of this high ground left for Australia to just kind of scooch right towards that edge. Yeah, at least with this circle. We'll see what happens with the next one, though. Because they're going to have to get closer and closer to that center. As time is starting right now, but it's a little bit of a standoff here. As USA and Australia, they both know that It's Chris is up there on that north side. And if they clash and the knocks happen, It's Chris could easily start to mess up one of their days. So it's very conservative play from both of these teams right now, biding their time. 12 seconds left on phase eight. So It's Chris able to just wiggle his way in. Bud gonna keep this pony alive. Wants to have the ability to maneuver, maybe set up a flank. Uh, in the late game fight, try to take position, keep USA pinned down. 
Smokes are going to come out here. Australia knows they have a move to make, and it is a dangerous one. Downhill, somewhat out in the open. Not a lot of foliage is actually going to cover them from USA's position. No, there's a lack of soft cover here. They really have to play the edge of this one. h wind even through the smoke, able to find a body shot right there. As they're considering moving the vehicle deeper in. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they did a 2-1 split, especially if they're able to clean up Chris here, as they do have a very good idea where he is. I think he might be just outside of nade range. We'll see if that one from Tickleton's good. No, it actually is in a nade range. They just got to do the trigonometry. Oh. But every single one's been too far. It's tough on these slopes to get it perfect. And yeah. yeah, here comes the split. Exactly. I, I, I totally appreciate what Australia is doing, but because they weren't able to clean out its Chris, this may be tough. Although now he's kind of messing with USA. Kickstar takes a whole bunch of damage there, has to back down. That's going to open up some space here for Tickle to push one of H Win. Having none of it, that's another one. Trimsy springs to action. Flood down. Only one player left for Australia, and it is the superstar Tiggleton. It's Chris trying to see if he can use this moment to get some points, but the grenade is perfect, and it's going to be the USA taking game number three. Man, what a win there for the USA. They were playing on the low ground. They knew that they just had to bide their time and wait for the Australian team to get flushed out by that phase nine. Eventually, they were going to have to crest over that hill, and that's when America could actually strike. And it's Chris to his credit. I think he got one more point for his team right there. Was able to get a flush on one of the knock players, but America just playing that one perfectly. They did not overplay their hand. They played it slow and steady. They knew that time was on their side, and Australia just never able to get Germany out of the equation meant that the issue they had coming down from the top of that hill was even more difficult. And that's going to be America picking up a lot of kills. The first place finish and seven kills in the bag. And this is just kind of continuing where the Sonics left off at PGS2 with, you know, h one really seeming to understand this map incredibly well, understands the angles, understands the positions that teams have to maneuver through. And uh, working it, calling it to perfection here and a great job supporting him is Shrimzy and Kickstart. Snakers, yeah, he died a little bit earlier, uh, but that's okay. Team USA, the fans there. Of course, Ashley Khan and Kat Conti, their streamers, PUBG streamers, very happy supporting the USA teams. Our Sonics fan as well, of course. Gotta love it, so. Decked out in all the gear, right? <laughs> yeah, that guy is completely decked in PUBG esports gear. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of that guy. Yeah. He may be a fan of the game, but I'm a fan of him. <laughs> All right, USA with another win. Or not another win, excuse me. Their first win of the night. Getting ahead of myself there, man. I'm being number one in the power rankings. <laughs> <laughs> You're just expecting it. I I'm mean, just expecting it. I mean, it's, a, it's an all-star lineup. They're it is. number one in the power rankings for a reason there. And the play calling just absolutely perfect, especially in those final circles. They yep. just read it perfectly. And you could see you know, how tight they were playing it together just as a unit. All four men in the very tight knit group until, you know, the time came for them to start to fan out and really strike. And eventually someone's going to get knocked there, but that's kind of the trade that you take to set up for your other teammates to be able to get down the sprays. And they were able to quickly dispatch Team Australia and pick up that win. Yeah, it, it hurts Australia that they weren't able to really clean up its Chris fast because yeah. it delayed some of their rotations. They threw a lot of frags at him and none of them connected. So didn't quite work out for them. Not a bad idea. I think they. Like, their idea was good. The execution just wasn't quite there. So, But Germany's, what, in second or third place right now? I think they might have just Are taken over high? Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just, this is what they do, man. They just, like, edge rat like crazy. And, you know, I could see after the match, they're perfectly happy with the way that went. They're, yeah. they're totally fine with the way this is going. I mean, the third place finish, they picked up a couple of kills as well. You take those any day of the week. If that's your baseline, then at the end of a, a three-day event like this one, you're going to have a lot of points. Yep. You know, it just takes one or two breakout performances to really rack up the kills, maybe get a win, to just be the cherry on top if you're that consistent on the edge. And yeah, on Nirmar, they played it very well. They were getting a lot of top placements there too, a lot of kills on the edge. And I didn't realize they were that high in the ratings, but thinking back on game number one and game number two, it does make sense. Yeah, they're just kind of doing their thing uh, and, you know, getting into these late-game situations, giving themselves opportunities, getting points. That's what it's all about. So really impressed with them so far. Uh, it just a, a really solid game, though, all around uh, from USA and Australia. Vietnam maybe had a chance here, but I think kind of, again, bit off a little bit more than they could chew on that northeastern edge. Really spread out. Yeah. Kind of were given a lot of space in the early to mid part of that game, and I think got maybe a little too comfortable. Yeah, they had that hill for a very long time, and they held up a 2-2 split for the duration of it. But it feels like at that point, I mean, hindsight is 20-20, but you kind of want 
a full four-man squad anchoring one position. If they were just able to corner off everybody in the Northeast, for instance, then suddenly the rest of the game becomes so much easier. But of course, that's easy for us to say when we see the entire big picture. We know where every player, every player is. We know how many of them are in what position. We know what angles are the best ones to take. Once you're actually in the game, play calling that is Vietnam, it makes sense to actually go for that 2-2 split to cover territory to try and gather intel because the fog of war is very real in a situation like that one. But the 2-2 split at the end of the day didn't quite pan out for them, but still a top five finish in that lobby. I'm really impressed with Thailand in that game, uh, not just because they have a lot of points, but because of the way they played Godok. Like, or Godok, they, they yeah. really like just sat in the center and just kind of turreted people. And I didn't realize that's like part of the center. Like you're learning new things all the time, right? With these new maps. But the center of that city has some great sight lines out, especially to that northeastern side, the northern side. So they really uh, took advantage of that. Yeah, you would think because it's kind of a little bit downhill that the right. angles wouldn't be the best. But yeah, the buildings just play in such a way that should the circle go that way, as you said, you have a lot of Angles, especially on teams that are rotating around you. So able to get six kills to their credit. And actually, I didn't realize that Germany had eight kills. For whatever reason, in my head, it was way less than that. But a big point victory for them. Second in the lobby, of course, Shrimp's going to be the man of the match. 568 damage, a key part of the USA's win. Yeah, this guy absolutely feeling it uh, this year. Has been really stellar. I know Tickleton is like the MVP of BGS2, and he is maybe the best player in the world right now, but Shrimzy is a big part of the support system that has given the Sonics and Tr uh, Tickleton so much success. This guy absolutely dumpstering people. When he is feeling it, he is the maybe the best in the business. Like his, his sprays are so clean, he's so smart. Uh, just a, a phenomenal talent is Shrimzy. Yeah, but still, at the end of match number three, Korea in first place, Germany in second, right behind them, tied with Brazil. USA running that, it went out with a top four after that big win, and a little bit of a gap appearing, although we've only played three maps. About nine points, almost 10 points separating the top four from the rest of the pack. This is good though. I mean, I, I like that we're close at the top and if like a couple other teams uh, that are kind of in the middle there can have a good game, then all of a sudden you're talking like five, six teams that are all within, you know, five, six points of each other. And then things start to get really, really spicy. And of course, now coming up, probably the most interesting part of the day, potentially yeah. just because we're going to Vikendi. There's so much to talk about with this map. Uh, where do we start? The Bears? Uh, the Bears, the the bears, bears are bears? scary, man. They're scarier than they There's thought they would be. There's neutral camps on, on yes. this map. Like, that's we, we're a MOBA now. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up some items. We're Warcraft Plaza 3 now, plus man. Nine. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a really fun map. Big Candy, even going all the way back, uh, just to play because it was never in the competitive pool, was my favorite map. I, I loved the terrain. I loved being able to see, you know, the, the footprints and the tracks of the mm. vehicles. Uh, I loved it even before it got a refresh and a facelift and all these new mechanics added. I mean, remember back in the day when there were what those, they weren't quite tunnels or caves. They were like rocks that you had to drive into with a car to get like the loot that's like hidden away in these little mountain areas. I mean, there were just so many fun aspects of that map that I loved. And now they've added on to it, made it even more fun. There's bears, all the uh, the ski lifts are yep. so much fun to play around with. I mean, they're constantly rotating. So it's, if you're in the vicinity of one, it's something you kind of got to keep in mind because the hard cover from the ski lift, it's actually not that bad from yeah. a lot of different angles. And this is also a map where there really isn't a meta yet at the pro level. There, this is the first time we're seeing it here at Professional PUBG. So as you were saying earlier, I think it was an excellent point that you made even before the show started, where we're just talking about the event. You know, the team that has the best performance on Vikendi, if they can rise head and shoulders above their peers, might be the one that walks away with the championship because yes, it is only one out of six maps that we're playing. You know, we're gonna have the same map pool every single day for the next three days. But the fact that it's just so unique, if you can run away and get one or two really high kill wins on this map, I mean, that might just be enough in a competition as tight as this one to edge you from third place or second place all the way to first. Yep, yep, totally. And uh, we'll see. I'm really curious, um, I, I guess, Honestly, I'm kind of the most curious about the, the the way that people approach the bears. We've seen some pretty funny clips of people kind of forgetting that the bears are there and uh, paying the price because the bears are pretty nasty. Um, yeah. Look, there's a lot of options with the bears. Um, you can actually drop on the bears. I've done it. You can do it. It's a little risky. But sounds can, scary. There's, there's enough loot. And if you kind of understand the bears AI, because the bears aren't smart. I'm just going to tell you guys right now. Bears They're, ain't smart. They are bears. They're bears. <laughs> to be fair. They're bears. 
Yeah. The, the bears are not known for their intelligence. They're we got, a, we got eating spray. honey and wrecking picnics, right? Yep. <laughs> but uh. the, like, um, you can drop on them, and if you get the right guns, because there is loot available in these caves, you can actually take the bears down. Now, what I prefer to do to loot around the bears, hopefully get a DBS, and that shreds bears. The DBS yeah. is absolutely the end of bears. I mean, it makes sense. That's the close quarters gun to end all close quarters guns. So. DBS, I like that. I like that little builder that you got set up. DBS into into bear, into bear cave, and then pick up whatever loot you can find in that one. I hunt the bears, man. That's fun, yeah. I I, I, I landed with the bears once and it like two shot me and I'm like, okay, never mind. Yeah, they, they I hurt. respect nature. They hit hard. You can't run them over either, by the way. It one, like even going full speed in a vehicle will not kill a bear. They they can hit you while you're in vehicles. <laughs> In case you didn't know that. You sound traumatized as you're explaining I've seen this. everything. I swear to God, I've seen everything with these bears. We have tried every dumb trick. And really, I think the DBS, the M2, the M249, the machine gun is pretty good at killing the It still the bears takes, too. that's how I kill the bear, and it still yeah. takes like so many it's bullets. Like 90 from, bullets or something like that? I don't know if it's exactly, I don't think it's that much exactly, but it's still a lot of bullets to take down a bear, man. It is a, it's a scary prospect, especially if you're trying to do it early in the game as you were advocating for. Yeah, go which, for it. I mean, it's got to be probably the best thing to do, right? Is just clear that out early before we have to do these rotations. So the real the real lead in here, that we're burying the lead. We wanted to talk about the bears. We're burying the lead? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, we are. We're burying the lead. Um, the, real, the real kind of key to this now, of course, is the IR scopes. Right. It should be in here. Um, at least that's what they told me. So I'm assuming the IR scopes are in. Those things are crazy. I mean, They're it's kind of hard to get a headshot off the IR scope because yeah. everything is so boxy. But if you line it up just for a chest shot with a DMR, you're going to be very, very happy. Those things, I mean, I, I don't know if it's just me being, you know, an old boy trying to play this game, but I have a hard time sometimes, even with the 4X scopes, really being able to identify, like, a body as it's moving and exactly the silhouette where to shoot. I know the pros don't have nearly as much of a problem as I do with that, but the IR scope, is just a godsend when it comes to trying to find a player through soft cover at through great smokes. distance, through smokes. It's just a game changer when it comes to bodying people with DMRs or maybe the Pone Spray with the M249. Get a little bit spicy with it. I like that. Could be I a like lot that. of fun. That's I, I've never thought to try that. It's that's got a, a fit, really good right? idea. It's got a fit. The 6X yeah, fits yeah, on it. Yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah. No, a, so I, I really like that. That's a really good idea. I really like that, actually. Any I mean, even if the MD, M249 prone spray is a bad idea, I'm still going to do it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but now it's, it's a slightly yeah. less bad idea. Yeah, now it actually has uh, some credence. It's you know, it's a little bit justified. Yeah. Get that IR scope on it. A Loki fan. Something about flowers there. <laughs> like, yeah. Nike. What's going on in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loki. I, I just, flowers? I don't know. I don't, like give me, you give flowers to me, and I'll give flowers to you, something like that. Anyway, um, it's probably a play on words that we are way too dumb to understand. That's yeah, usually yeah, yeah. the way these things goes. I sort of understand it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Love to see so many fans, of course, in the stadium. We have a packed audience it, here, and these so many fans for sold Koreans, out. dude. They, they sold out instantly. Like every day, the tickets were gone. Like I was talking to one of my friends here. And he said he missed, they, they sold the tickets on separate days, right, for uh -huh. each day of the event. And he said the first day he thought he'd probably have at least a couple minutes to get them. No. Oh, was it instant? It was, like, instant. Wow. They were gone. Second day, he said he played, aim. he played, like, aim trainer ahead of time to practice clicking, like, uh -huh. <laughs> to get the tickets. Oh, for the tickets? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You got to get some macros on your mouse or something for I that. I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. probably a better idea. You have thought him there. Get a macro that like feeds the URLs into the into the machine or something. I don't know. Oh wow, you're like you're light years ahead of everything. <laughs> they, they, they're playing with sticks and stones, and you're out I'm here inventing fire with steel and yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm in the Bronze Age, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Korea, they've had some great performances at PUBG Nations Cup in the past, but you know they were never were able to get that chicken dinner, and more importantly than that, they never were able to walk away with a first place finish. But now coming on to their home soil, you know, they have a lot to prove. And they have the fans behind them every step of the way. So I think all of the fans here for Korea, which is certainly the majority of the crowd, especially the ones buying these tickets, they want to see Korea walk away with a victory on their home soil, representing this nation among all the best PUBG nations in the world. Right.
And it's scary for all these other teams that this Korea team in particular is already popping off like this. But usually, sometimes, uh, Donawa in particular, kind of slow starts to finals weekends, to those kind of things, and then they kind of ramp up, but they're coming out swinging. I, I've been really impressed with Japan. Uh, they had the Tango game, maybe that 2-2 split was a little bit too ambitious early, um, but we're seeing that most of the teams get away with those splits, so I don't fault them too much. They're playing good defense out in the open. I've seen some good fights taken by them. Frankly, I, I like what I'm seeing from Japan. They're not playing cautious. They're not playing scared. That's kind of been a, a critique of them in the past. So yeah, Especially in PWS. They yeah, were always dude. really good at defense, but it feels like they kind of upped their game, especially with the DMR from those defensive positionings. They're getting a lot of knock. They're getting a lot of kills, especially on teams that are rotating through kind of perilous positions, whether it be on the low ground or just some angle that you have a sight light on as you're trying to work your way into the circle. Uh, yeah, Japan definitely showing up, you know, typically coming into these things, given the history of PWS, casting that here years ago in Asia. Japan always really struggled to kind of adapt to the more aggressive meta, especially the Chinese teams would bring to the table and the Korean teams would also kind of emulate, but they had their own little take on it. It was a little bit different. But here so far at PUBG Nations Cup, Japan has been playing very well. I like what I'm seeing out of them for the first couple of the games. They're almost in the top half yeah. of the group, which Says a lot considering China with a star-studded lineup. I mean, if you go to the the pick 'em, the pick 'em points or TY or whatever it was, just, <laughs> just absolutely overwhelmed in terms of points. They had, I think, more fan support than basically every other team combined, if not double that. It was absurd. But they're sitting at rank 10 right now yeah. overall. They've had a very slow start. Japan's right behind them. Right. One exactly. point behind them. So Japan, if they can just kind of continue to play their slow defensive game, similar to the way that Chinese Taipei has been playing over the first couple of maps. They can find some success, and Faber, then I think we're finally ready to get ready to go to Vikendi here for the first time ever in PUBG Esports history. It should be a lot of fun. Let's get to it. All right, and away we go here for the first time ever. The Kendi in PUBG Esports, the map. Again, okay, so what's really interesting about this is you're gonna see a lot of the kind of named locations, Naro, Slumberyard, Decamesto, uh, train station around the center of the map, but what you're really looking at is the area in the middle of all four of those. That's where a lot of teams are gunning uh, to have their loot location be. Even though it's a lot of kind of you know, uh, smaller compounds or whatever. The loot's still good enough in them, and the location is super good. Right at the middle of a four-way crossroads, very similar to a, a Pachinki or a Picado in some ways. Yeah, it can be tough to rotate around on this map, especially with, you know, the chaos that's going to unfold, as I'm sure these pro teams haven't exactly been able to map out the best possible rotation from different areas of the map to different areas of the map, right? So if you're a team like Korea, who's landing exactly as you predicted, right there dead in the center, that suddenly have a lot of options depending on where the circle goes. Looks like Taipei wants a piece of that pie as well. Uh, they are right next to Korea there, uh, towards the center of that circle. USA out, spread out along the eastern side. India gonna be up at observ observatory. Oh boy, oh boy. Keenan, 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 or Adam, excuse me, Adam. It's an SLR. It's yeah. not the gun he wants. I think you want to just piece out of this one, and Adam is absolutely booking it. Brazil going to try to see what they can do. An ump out there. It's going to hit him. Can he find the damage? No, oh, sparking. Wow. Oh, and look at the scope. He had a 2x on there as well. That's very, very nice. And that's going to be Adam out of this one, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's, I assume. That, that's a painful pick there for Adam. I mean... Ump, it might not have a lot of damage, but in an early game situation like this one, especially with a 2x scope, it is a very potent weapon. Especially if you're running in the open like that one, it is quite easy to control if you're able to you know, slow down your fire and just tap, tap, tap the same way that he did right there. The thing's a laser beam. People underestimate the ump. No, it's, it's quite good in certain situations. I think it's because a lot of people think about SMGs as something that should be a prime gun and gun in close quarters, which the ump kind of lacks because it doesn't have quite as much punch. But a mid-range like that one, especially with no armor, it is fantastic. And a oh, little bit of gunfire being traded here. Chinese Taipei and Korea butting heads here in the center of the map. 
Not a lot of inertia on that Asia. It's quite slow moving up that hill, but zigging and zagging, the Korean team goes. Able to escape disaster with just a couple of body shots. Uh, they got a bit lucky that that's just a G36 shooting at him with that 6X. It wasn't something like a Mini, I think, or a, a Mark 12. Might have been mm. a little bit more dangerous there for Team Korea. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Driving uphill on this map in particular with the Dacia sucks. It's not easy. The, the, the torque just isn't there. Yeah, I mean, the Dacia, if you can get it rolling, the high speed is very good, but trying to move through those middle gears, especially uphill, is just such a slog sometimes. Be very challenging is how things finally quieting down a little bit. I feel like we're pretty much done with the early scuffles that we're going to have on this map. And I'm really interested in seeing exactly what the rotations are going to be from these teams around. You know, whether we're going to see them actually contest some of these bear camps and go into the caves because I am primed for it. I'm keeping my eyes on some of the cave spots. Like, I I'm not sure if Shinboy's going for one. He's potentially in range. Nobody's on the southern ones at all. There's a few on the east, but nobody really seems to be gunning for them. I see Argentina moving on the map, and I'm kind of wondering if they're trying to box out Japan or something. Like, they were in Villa. Japan huh. was south of them. Is there going to be a fight? I'm curious. Three, by the way, three, like, blizzards spawned on the map? Like, on the corners? Yeah, so. actually, from playing, I haven't gotten to see exactly how the Blizzard gen looks like, right? They're because annoying, you don't man. have Codfish. Yeah. Yeah, they happen quite frequently. I wonder if it's always three at a time or exactly what the uh, the setup is on that one. Is Vikendi's one of those maps that I just haven't had quite as much experience with. Well, it wasn't in the rotation. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was out of rotation for a while. It's fun. It's fun kind of learning and also watching the pros work with this for the first ever time. You know, this is not something that you usually get to experience in PUBG Esports. Yeah, no. It, so I, And I think, rightly so, a lot of teams are taking this pretty cautious. Nobody really fully understands the sight lines. You know, it takes thousands of games. It, I, I'm not even I'm not uh, exaggerating here. Literally thousands of games oh, before wow. you really understand. It's majestic. It is. Doesn't look that good on my graphic settings. <laughs> right? No, well, mine intentionally turned down because... Easier to see people. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, Australia is slowly working their way towards this Korean compound, but I don't know if they're exactly aware that Korea is here. I'm wondering how much intel they've actually gathered. Is Luke going to come all the way up here on the top of this tower? And should, be able to gather, should be able to gather a lot of intel. And yeah, immediately taking shots. He wants to pop these tires and ah. hopefully lock Korea down in this compound. It seems like he's even sniffing out the 2-2 two -two split that they have set up. This is smart. Of course, you always have parachutes now, so you can get off these dangerous high positions. This is really smart. Oops. This is, uh, maybe that's intentional. Maybe Tiggleton wasn't going to pick him up. Yeah, he has another vehicle there, uh, so he's just going to hop in. The, he's just hiding the tires. Okay. For a second, I thought it would be something like, I don't know, a James Bond movie, like lands on the roof of the car and yeah. just drive into battle. <laughs> that's what I thought they were. Well, maybe not in the battle, but I thought they were going to maybe pick him up and drive away for a yeah, second. Yeah, but yeah, for sure. This makes a lot more sense. That's a really cheeky move there, to get up on top of these little towers to just pop tires. Uh, and then, you know, safely get back down. Because you got to be careful. Those towers, yeah, they're great for sight lines, but they're... There's not much cover up there. Yeah, usually it's hard to pop those tires with all the uh, the hard cover, like these, you know, short walls that surround a lot of compounds on this map. But hey, you get that sight line, and I get to skirt your way around all of that. Do some nice harassment as Team USA moving in. I'm disappointed. I thought there'd be bears. I was also expecting some bears, no bears. but the circle doesn't really have any bears in it. There's like one, maybe two. I think yeah, I think there's one to the south of Decamesto, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. But it is a bit risky to mess with the bears because they do show up in the kill feed as well. <laughs> oh, true. You you out yourself. Someone's going to hear yeah. the shots and then see the bear die. Yeah. So I, I think that's actually probably the bigger reason why nobody's going to go for them. Yeah, sure. The IR scopes are nice. Haven taking the gondolas. These are pretty safe, actually. Uh, yeah, they, they're surprisingly safe. I yeah. mean, the first time that I looked at them, I'm like, okay, that's something that I'm never going to take because it'll just be a fish in a bucket. But that is absolutely not how it plays out. And uh-oh. Long skirt. Boy, the pounce right there. A nice fight back by Snakers. Actually got a good bit of damage there on Long Skirt, but of course, with the element of surprise, that's going to be Snakers going down, and USA loses a man very early here. And they're going to have to retreat back to the north. They went for a recon position, but Long Skirt already there and already waiting. Yeah, step ahead of him. It's impressive even to be able to get 40 damage on a Long Skirt in a situation like that where he has the complete jump on you. Absolutely. No, I fully agree. It's long scores, as we've seen many times in PUBG Sports history, is absolutely goaded. 
He's a crazy good individual player. India coming in from the north, uh, playing it pretty safe here today so far. A lot of edge drops uh, compared to kind of what they get in their own region. Uh, they get a little more central in their drop locations typically, but uh, here in PNC, uh, they've been trying to play edge. First game, not bad since then, a little bit quiet. Yeah, second and third game weren't the best, but again, this is also them perhaps trying to feel out the lobby a little bit as we haven't gotten to see this Indian team on the international stage quite like this before. And so for them playing edge like this and just kind of getting, you know, a read on exactly what the other team's play styles are going to be, what rotations you have to watch out for, it makes a lot of sense. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, going into game, not game two, day two and day three, this is a three-day event, India starts to mix it up just a little bit. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, again, a lot of this today, after talking to their coach, was feeling this out, trying to figure out how they're going to fit in, what their style is going to be, how what's going to work best for them. Make adjustments like you're talking about, right? Like, come in the next day and see what you can do. Australia driving around. Why kick a mook out? It's going to be, oh, boy, this is That's dangerous. He should be, oh, my God. I thought he was dead, but he just kind of got away in time. One headshot. Couldn't get the second one. He should have been dead to rights right there with the angle that Vard had, but Vard perhaps a little bit too patient. Yep. Didn't take that first shot. I agree. The Zima is just not fun to drive. It's, it's, a bit it's a bit tricky. It slides. It's not the worst. It at least holds four people, I guess. Yeah, it's not that bad. I suppose. Here's I don't mind it too much, personally. Eh, I'm not a fan. Here's what you were talking about earlier. These gondola positions actually have a lot of hard cover. They're yeah. really defendable. Get great info from the top of them. Way more than you would think. They're very defendable. Even if you take the gondola itself, there's a lot of hard cover on those walls. And then also, you know, everyone's going to be below you, right? And the, uh, I don't even know what to call it. It's like the patio of like the gondola, the little exterior section. The platform, the loading yeah, the platform. platform. Yeah, it has a lot of cover. Yeah, it does, exactly. And then you have, oh, oh no. Oh. Rossett Jr. tapping with an M4. I wasn't even play by playing this because I thought there was no way Shinobi was going to go down from this angle, but Rossett Jr. just with an absolutely phenomenal shot. And yeah, that's with an M4. Looking for another one. Oh my goodness. Come on, man. That's insane. That ain't fair. That just ain't fair. That's that, crazy. You just got to tip your cap on that one and just say, oh, man, good shots. Jeez. Can't believe you hit those. UK now moving into this one. Cavalry's coming in with its Chris. Going to try and lend some support to his teammate Brexco. Let's see if we can get out T-Bone here, trying to position to potentially punish the exit. But I think the angle there, just good enough. Yeah, Rex go. Yeah. yeah, you can see there's a little bit of an uphill right there, so not all of these UK players had a sight line on them as they retreated. Eagle took a lot of damage, but otherwise escaping without too much trouble. And now USA and Vietnam going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Hamas, oh my goodness. Look at that, the exterior feed right there. That was a fantastic shot. I think that was two headshots in a row, if I'm not mistaken. A ton He's of damage coming in with the mini. He's clicking heads. He is just... Ever since game number three, just putting out that damage like we've come to expect from him this year. But now, the USA, I don't know if they're going to go for kick here, if they're just going to have to sacrifice him. Looks like, well, it didn't matter. Duck Juice answered my question for me. Turkey, no points. Turkey, no points yet. None. Yeah, big goose egg. This is bad. If, if somebody at Denmark figures this out, they could just throw one grenade and take him out. Yeah, do they just not know? I don't think they know. I don't think they know. Oh, Clip's going to come over here with the card 98 and spot this, right? He's almost going to have a sight light. He's so close. Okay, now you got to see it. Look to your right. Look to your right. Oh, no. It's a disaster. Oh, no. Well, now here come the grenades, and now Turkey is going to spread out. First one's going to find a knock. Two players weak as well. The Mad trying to push the hill, trying to find the flush, but Gustav should have the angle covered. He does, and Beamy as well getting in on it. Turkey in trouble. Yeah, Head was peeking right over that hill, and now BB coming in with a spray. Able to get two or three body shots right there. Am I going to run him over? He's going to try to. Can't find him in the smoke, though. He's looking for the flush. Oh, wow. Gustav a hero right now. Clib was so close to death, and Turkey, they get nothing for their trouble. Another goose egg here. And now India trying to breach Chinese Taipei. Many have tried. None have succeeded. And 
<laughs> India also going to that fall. Was, that was in the blink of an eye. Savior and Leo just coming up clutch. The defense from Chinese Taipei absolutely stealing the show. Feels like a bit of a gut check there for India to see if they could get away with the center circle dive. Yeah, that was what the second or the third time that teams have really tried to reach the position of Chinese Taipei and every single time it's been shut down. I think with no casualties, just ironclad defense from this team. Three or four more kills is gonna bring them up to rank six on the leaderboard. They gotta be happy with that one. I think you're absolutely right. I, I think that's basically been, you know, two or three and oh for Chinese Taipei. Crazy watching Team USA. Long term did get knocked, so China playing a bit of recovery, playing a bit of defense, but really they don't have much pressure. I mean, this is pretty safe for China right now, north of Decamesto. Otherwise, we're just going dead center. I mean, okay, now oh. we're not. Now we're not. Now we're going southwest. It's a very hard shift. Northeast side of the circle is about to get populated in a hurry. I'm wondering whether China's going to vacate this position and try to, you know, rotate clockwise around to the south side of Nekomesto because if they have the intel, it's a very clear route in. Oh, no. Trimzy there trying to react to Kino's shots. Accidentally knocks H-Win. Going to be maybe getting this res. I don't know. It's tough to say if USA can really do much anyway. Even if they get this res, they are in a very bad position. Denmark also making this rotation. Actually, Gustav coming up to shore the defense here on the top side of this hill. It seems like they're content to kind of hold on to that location for now. Once again, the minimap China eventually did make down that rotation. As Thailand and Australia butting heads a little bit here. This compound all the way to the west side, outside Decamesto. Yeah, I think Australia needs to play complete defense here and try to wipe Thailand out. I think that if they can do that, they're going to open up a lot of opportunities to potentially win this game. Like, if they can do it relatively cleanly, at most lose one player, they have a decent opportunity to really do something special here for the first time on Vikendi. Uh, YK Kamuka flanked out Vietnam, cutting through the beaten up USA team. Oh, Shrimzy with a great wow. headshot there at that AUG spray. That's with a red dot, too. Or he's going to have to escape this vehicle that is on fire as... Vietnam taking a lot of damage, not just from the U.S., but also oh, no. Germany on this rotation in. And oh, oh, no. The collision. <laughs> At least he made it clear of the car. Ah. It's coming back for revenge. Oh, give me out, Clories. Those things are scary, man. I know, dude. Those cars blow up, and it is. It can be chaos in a hurry. Then a fixing to try to take down China. Sees the heads, but sprays just a little bit off. Hits some boxes. Going to try to follow. Bounce in a grenade. Doesn't quite get deep enough. To do any damage, the box is going to absorb it. It was a nice ricochet, though. Had the angle right, just not enough power behind it. And a little bit of utility flying out to try to buy Finna a little bit of time. And this is a one-man oh, no. parachute. How much HP did he have? It was like eight? I don't know. Not much. It's not a lot. I don't know if they got messed with while they were trying to do that. I think maybe Type A had an angle on it or something. I'm not sure. Brazil now slamming into Honey Badger. Oh. Honey Badger has to back out. Immediate explosion right there, but the Brazilian player, Haven, was absolutely lit up on that rotation in. Is able to pop this first aid kit, so that means he's ready to do business here on the hunt against this UK squad. Keep on very low in HP. Fex as well. The nade comes in on him. Will Whoa. it be good? Yes, absolutely it will. That's Fex getting knocked there by Brazil. Vinny with a good angle on that one. He knows that the remaining players for UK worked their way into that shed, or at least he suspects it is going to get the flush there on Fex. Now with a Molotov, he did see that grenade get thrown, so he has a very good idea, but T-Bone actually pushing forward. I don't think he expected this. That T-Bone getting up a nice kill for Team UK. Great push here, but T-Bone immediately traded by Haven. So only Vinny gonna fall so far for Brazil. Korea given all the room in the world here on the Northwest edge, but really the center compound is so powerful in this. Everybody knows it. That's why we're seeing a lot of fighting for it. Now Denmark wants to make a go. Gustav going to Reach the defenses of Brazil, who is busy dealing with UK. Yeah, UK and Brazil both have players down right now. In fact, one man standing on both teams, so they're prime targets here. For Team Denmark, should they be able to come in and take opportunity on this position? Now Sparking going to try and come in and get the res. Unfortunately, LFP1 does finally bleed out there from Seoul. Has to pick that can up just in case. A grenade or something sets it off. Oh my goodness, the angle on that one. If it was just a little bit to the right, would have gotten two kills. Sparking, still going to stick the res. Grenade not going to bounce through. A little bit off the mark there for Kino. 
And Sparking able to at least recover one teammate. Meanwhile, Australia and Thailand still in a protracted fight. Haven't taken down by Tan at all. Way out in the distance. So Korea is going to lose a player trying to get more centered. Tiggleton, I think, heard by Rossiter Jr. And he's just going to prone and wait to see if Tiggleton's going to push. But Tiggleton instead going to get in the Zima. Rossiter going to try to punish it. Tiggleton got out, wasn't ready for it. Great play here by Rossiter Jr. Completely catches Tiggleton off guard. Yeah, it just takes the audio cues to perfection right there, and that might be the domino that starts falling for Team Australia as Waikiki Mukau is going to try and shore up the defense here. Nice spray, or at least attempted spray there. Whether Red Dot, it's hard at that distance, was only able to get one body shot off on the Thailand player. And it seems like Thailand is slowly but surely working their way through. And yes, finally, Australia is eliminated. No kills here this match. Thailand picking up five already on the board. I feel like Australia got lost in the sauce a little bit there. Not quite keeping track of Thailand as well as they would have liked. That resulted in Thailand being able to be the ones that were able to surprise Australia. USA still in this. I thought they would be potentially wiped out a long time ago. It felt like they had not much to work with. China now punishing Thailand off screen, but Argentina's Rybox has that M24. Oh, and on the minimap feed, a blizzard coming in between Thailand and China, so that's going to give Thailand a lot of room to breathe with. Meanwhile, Vietnam starting to work their way in all the way over here onto the east side. This is quite far south from USA and Taipei's protracted battle as they're really battling for this hill. This would be a great vantage point should they be able to secure it, but you know, time is of the essence if you really want to capitalize on that high ground position. USA with only two men up, and actually it seems like Vietnam has an angle as well. And indeed they do. That Trimzy taking a ton of damage, gonna have to retreat to safety, and suddenly all aggressive opportunity that USA had on Chinese Taipei is lost. Yeah, Vietnam here going to just hit the W keys, try to go for it. They're gonna leave Chloris as an anchor behind them. Germany's kind of sniffing that out too. That storm nullifying any ability for Thailand and China to really do much except sit and wait as H-Win trying to prevent Chinese Taipei from getting involved, trying to see if they can make this a, a fight where potentially maybe Taipei and Vietnam have to fight on the other side of that hill and America can kind of just prone in that ditch, not nah, forget it. <laughs> Hemos wasn't having any of it. Yeah, Hemos just on fire right now as USA gets sandwiched. Grimsey puts up a good fight, but there's just too many bodies both to the north and to the south, and now the fight becomes between Chinese Taipei and Vietnam. Then on through the smoke, gonna try and find an angle. Had a really good soul read. Wow! He saw him. He saw him, he saw him as the smoke was coming through. And Stuckji is going down. Zenon with a very important, important pickoff here. Vietnam's gonna try and fight back. Nate coming in from Flores had a very good read on it. Wow! But with a headshot there on Zenon from the AUG. It's gonna be trading blow for blow here. That's a nasty spray. Chloris oh, wow. coming up big right now for Vietnam. Leo done and dusted. Chloris and Isaki making quick work at Chinese Taipei. A brilliant push there from Vietnam. Not losing a single man. They just had that one knock and they were still able to recover. Despite Duck Juice getting very low on HP. But unfortunately for them, the circle, it's already evolved. And they do not have a lot of time to get their bearings and start to work their way into. Their next territory is gonna really try to snake this one out. Oh, if he only if he had a, I didn't see if he had a grenade or not. And Onyx takes down Nurens. Finna, do you have a frag? Finna, <laughs> oh, Finna, Finna. Oh, please, observers, just go to Finna's perspective. Oh my I God! Frag. Finna, 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 Finna. Just grenade, just grenade, just, just grenade, just it. grenade. Oh well, he didn't get the time. Oh, he didn't get the knock. Finna. Oh, if he only knew. Now he's gonna, I don't think he's gonna get the opportunity though. Immediately no. the grenades start raining out from China. Longsker gets Keenan. Finna trying to do what he can. He might get the knock, he gets two. Big one there, Finna still alive, still fighting. Keenan's grenade got in there. Aix left, just barely close. So close to getting knocked. Oh, that nade's also good. A lot oh. of damage right there. Finna with two nades left in the bag. We'll see if he can find another one. A lot of Chinese players bleeding out right now. Oh, that nade on show, is it gonna be enough? Barely not. Show. Gets the heal off though, Finna's follow up, the last frag in the bag. Gonna come through if it bounces under the car again. Oh! It's right at his feet, it's beautiful! What a play from Finna! We might, have, we might have not gotten the monster nade that we wanted, but we got five nades from Finna that eventually evaporated the Chinese squad on the other side Just of that hill. Just awesome. tremendous stuff. Awesome, oh, I love it. So cool. And Finna's still alive and has a southern kind of quadrant
all alone. Germany's just doing work out there. Four kills now, and the circle's very much not bad at all for them. Meanwhile, there's a standoff between Denmark, Brazil, and UK in that central compound. All right, well, UK, Brazil, and Denmark all in that combat are gonna be happy with this circle as it's about as good as it can get for them. Still nice and in it. Oh, oh well, come on, buddy. Only six bullets left here. Oh, does find a little bit more <gasps> seven, six, two. And he's got an arm now. All right, I'm, I'm all on the Finna train. We're, we're, we're team Finna <laughs> right now. See if he can do some more work with that arm. Thailand trying to smoke their way through this field. At least there is some hills here and there to yes, work with. A but little it's... bit of elevation, but yeah. as you see right there from this side shot, not that much. It only really seems to matter in close quarters. Beyond that, it's a challenge. They've identified rule of the position, but it doesn't matter. Japan knows too. They're gonna put some damage down. Duckju's doing what he can, but somebody else took that kill. Soul. Oh, he knows. He knows. They gotta clear this one by one. Grenade. First one does some damage. Vard's gonna try to switch to the DBS. Starts loading it, but it might not matter if he gets knocked. Second grenade bounces awkwardly off that flower, whatever those are, flower bags, sandbags that are inside of there. Doesn't connect on to Vard. Now T-Bone here to back up. So it's gonna be a little bit trickier for South Korea. It's gonna be a relatively hard push unless they're able to find a connection with these nades. But so far, the UK players have been able to skirt disaster around him. And that DBS, we all know how deadly it can be in close quarter situations like this one. Finally, the breach coming through. Soul is gonna try and push. He gets flashbang though. He's just spraying like mad, trying to hold on. Vard coming with a DBS. Oh! oh, and he gets taken out. It was actually Teemo there with the AUG. And then the DBS comes through and Nonix gets knocked. And Korea is wiped. The defense from UK is too strong. That DBS doing absolute work. Just beautiful patience there from Vard. Some great help from T-Bone on that angle to soften targets up. Soul was knocked, jumping through the air. Now Denmark gonna be able to continue to lock down this more central compound. They've got kind of a potential winning position there. Sparking knocked, Haven going to be able to return the favor here from earlier in the game and res his teammate, but Japan doing what they can on the outskirts, but Germany has purview on their position. And yeah, there's not much that Japan could do without a lot of smokes. Yeah, it's honestly surprising they've been able to survive this long given the position that they found themselves in is Kane is just gonna hop into a vehicle looking at the minimap feed and try his best to work his way in. Oh. Kolo, go pick up some 7.6 ammo, bro. You've only got two shots left in that Car 98. Like, I feel like he's had like no ammo on that Car 98 for ages. And Chris doesn't have any ammo either. They don't have any sevens. They don't have any 7.6 too. Kane eventually gonna get cleaned up there by Poochills. Who's going to be happy to find at least some more points given the position that he is on the west side of the circle. And it's going to center up still with this Denmark-Brazil compound in. But for the two UK boys there in the top left, they might have had a valiant defense there against Korea, a triumphant defense. But now it's going to be really hard for them to push through into Brazil. That DBS is going to have to put in some overtime. Hey, it's it's not bad at, at base seven on. Like, oh, yep, spotted done. Puchil's gone. But, but even like... Within like 30, 40 meters, the DBS isn't that bad. It can do damage. Uh, but there, I love what we're seeing here from Germany that they're at least trying to get into positions behind these hay bales. But a lot of those are the destructible ones. So that's not ideal. So you're going to have to use the hillside. Brexico has a pretty nice position. If they can keep, yeah. if they can keep their northern flank clear, they should be good to go. I like the position there for Mexico. Even if that hate bail goes down, it seems like he has a lot of cover here with this slope that he can play with, especially proning out and considering how many teams are clustered on Finna that no. western time. Finna no. You know, the Leave car, him alone. it's red. Leave him alone. Nothing sadder than a, a red car 98 in a situation like this one. What? So we got a replay of this? What? Oh my, what? 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 No way. Nuh-uh. <laughs> I didn't even see this in the kill feed. Nuh-uh. <laughs> Kowo, you absolute jerk. What? <laughs> I thought those were grenades. You got eggs left with that. I thought that was Finna's grenade. Unbelievable. You have got to be kidding me. I, I've seen it do damage in close range, but nothing like that. That Ko was a monster shot. Kowo, you absolute nerd. You know, we had the replay thing come up. I'm like, okay, sure. Like, well, what is good enough to actually justify bringing a replay in this moment? And no, that, that justifies it, man. 100%. Now he doesn't have any damn Holy bullets crap. in this car 98. Yeah, he's been sad. I think even that SLR does not have much. Nope. He's finally getting cleaned up, but 
The push is going to come in here on Team Brazil. UK, they've worked magic before against the Korean squadron, especially with that DBS. We'll see if they can do more, more but Germany is slowly inching in as well. And keep in mind, right beyond Brazil is Denmark in the most coveted building left in this one. And T-Bone again comes through. Headshot on Sparking to finish him off. Even though, quick let the trade. So even though he loses a teammate, he's going to make UK pay. Good game for UK though. Really racking up some much needed points. But if Germany can win this game, they are going to really pull away from the rest of the pack. Really pull away from Brazil. Haven folding shield on the edge corner there. Var Vard, I think he's got a res. Haven has to be careful of Denmark as well. But yeah, oh. he should try to finish this. He has an opportunity to get the headshot. Can't find the spray control on Vard. But Vard on the bad side of the circle has to make a move sooner or later. There is just enough room there that he can do some damage. Catches him healing. Should have to finish. Whoa, what no, are you doing? He thought he got the kill, but he only got the flush. He what? thought he had the kill. Oh, no. Instead, it was the body, the downed body that served a body block there for Vard. And he's able to get the finish there. A momentum swinger here for Team UK. Oh, no. What an incredible turn of fate. Ah. Uh. Heartbreak for Brazil. Still, they have had a really strong game. Klib now wants to finish the job. They want to clear out this flank, and yeah, they do. Vard goes down, so it's a 2v4. Denmark, their first PNC ever. Can they win an odd man situation? Or is it going to be Germany pulling away from the rest of this lobby? It's a dangerous one. You might think that. Denmark is favored here, given this position that they have, but looking at all these angles the German players are working with, there really isn't too much to be found here for Team Denmark. If Germany's able to fan this one out and come into the right moment, they may be able to get the jump here on Gustav and Klib. But keep in mind, the circle is going to come to them. Klib, you see him switching over to the Car 98, trying to find some 762. Finally, is able to load that one up, so it's going to be an odd Car 98 loadout for him. Yeah. And now come the smokes. The Car 98, not bad in this situation, to be honest. I mean, if you can just find, like, you just need Nox here as as Denmark. You just, you're not looking for flushes. You're looking for the win. And the only way you're going to do that is getting Nox. All right, phase nine, five seconds from commencing. And I love this move here from Gustav. I'm not sure if the German boards are going to be expecting this one. Croning out onto the side. Germany can just kind of lock down the edges, just play with the, you know, edge of the circle here. Just make sure that nobody's, if, if nobody comes out from this side that Mika is watching, then then the other side is where they can just turn their attention to. They, they know that it's open. Gustav springs into action, but immediately Mika's got damage in Gustav. Yeah. Oh, oh! Clip though got through undetected. Can he find another? That's just one. Mm. No, he's shut down here. Kowo, able to do some damage, and it is going to be the headshot and the finish. Germany is going to get a huge nine kill win. And these boys have pulled into first place. 50 points in total. Denmark put up a great effort there, but Germany just with a man, the manpower to fight through right there at the end. Nine kills, most in the lobby, tied with the UK. And man, I mean, we were talking earlier about how for Team Germany, they're so consistent racking up points and racking up points and racking up points by playing the edge. You just need a couple cherries on top of that one, a couple of high kill wins to really cement yourself. And hey, that's what they got on Vikendi. Yeah, and I told you Germany would do something that you wouldn't expect, and it's that Panzerfaust from Koho. <laughs> that was insane. From a mile away. I, I, I missed it in the kill feed because it was so chaotic that Aches left was knocked by the, or finished by the, or knocked by the, yeah, knocked by the Panzerfaust. Just absolutely dumb. Just dumb. That's just dumb, Koho. From that angle, too, there was so much distance. Usually when you see it, it's like, it's almost like shotgun range, right? Where somebody's, you know, maybe 20, 30 meters in front of you and just get the splash damage right on them. It's <laughs> so hard to contest. It's, I love the binoculars. What? I've never seen this at an eSports event. What is this? They're scoping out the players. They're not that far away. <laughs> Like, They're really close, actually. Okay, if you guys don't know at home. It's closer than the plants are found range. Yeah, you don't need. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you don't actually need binoculars to see the players. I'm just. I, I just want people to understand. I love that. That there's not seats that are that far away. <laughs>
Did somebody get like a, what's it called? Like a periscope? Like the one thing like with the two eye or the, the one eye little. Oh, yeah. yeah is yeah, it yeah. periscope? Paris I'm actually, sure. I'm so lost. No. I don't know these. Maybe these nautical No, periscopes phrases. are what come out of the, you oh, know, yeah, you, like, you can see right. above stuff. You can tell I'm not a sailor. I don't know. What a little. That's what pirates have. I don't know. Yeah. Because they got that. They only got the one eye. They need the, they need the one little scope Maybe with the one eye. I have Maybe no it idea. is a periscope. I'm going to check on the break. But uh, yeah, they're not very far away. I've never actually seen an eSports fan bring a, uh, a set of binoculars. Nope. Both That's of them have binoculars. That's a first. <laughs> I don't so know, man. funny, man. Yeah, it is pretty funny. Brazil, continuing to have a good day. I, I think they should be very happy with where they're at. I know maybe you don't like what happened uh, with Haven at the end of that. With kind of, It is what it is. Sometimes yeah. you kind of misread a situation. You happens. thought he had the kill, but instead yeah. it was just a flush. It happens to the best of us, dude. And you can see right there that sometimes you think you got it and sometimes you don't. But really, really good stuff uh, overall here from Germany so far today. Getting the first win ever in PUBG Esports history on Vikendi. And yeah. uh, through really unique fashion. Yeah, they played it very well, too. And also, looking at that map, you would think that they didn't have a lot to work with. You know, they, they were in that field for a long period of time, but it was like being able to pull water from a stone. They just somehow made it happen and were able to deliver the win despite not really having any of what were effectively god compounds for the majority of that circle. Just very well played there by Germany. Brazil, of course, with six kills, climbing up in the standings as well, all the way up to 41 points. And, oh man, like I said, we, we didn't get the monster nade in this situation, but instead it was just a sequence of good nade after good nade here. Or Finna, tremendous moment. The DBS, this is, you love to see it on the ground in a compound like this, because you know you've got that backup plan if you get crashed. So much damage. It's so much damage, dude. That gun is just absolutely bananas. And it kills bears fast. Oh, we didn't see any bears go down. That's Literally, right. No bears. Maybe tomorrow. This is bogus. I was, I was told there'd be bears. <sighs> Match leaderboard coming in. First place there for Germany with nine kills in total. Going to be a 19 point win in the bag. That's a nice one right there. Almost double digits in terms of kills. They're going to climb all the way up to 50 yeah. in total. Five teams with 10 plus points there. That's. That's pretty nuts. Vietnam had a really good game here. Uh, that push they had up towards the northeastern edge, good, really good, really good, time, really well timed, really well executed. Glory's hit some banger shots. Hemos is really heating up. I mean, this is a, this is a scary thing as well in this lobby is that now we're seeing this Vietnamese team kind of start to come alive. These last couple games have been much better than what we saw in Miramar. Yeah, Hemos, especially with the DMR, has just been absolutely popping off. It feels like he is connecting with every single shot, racking up a ton of damage. You know, for Vietnam, they're still in striking distance. You know, they're top eight overall on the leaderboards. And, you know, we have a lot of PUBG left to be played this yeah. weekend. It's only day one, and we still have two Erangels left. Yeah, yeah, we're only four out of six. So, yeah, two Erangels kind of go back to the old faithful, go back to the map we all know and love after going through the... It wasn't even that crazy of a circle, to be honest. It, it, it was not a field, which are actually pretty rare on McKinney. There aren't many fields actually on that map, so... Kind of an unusual finish for McKenny. Miko with 637 damage. Going to be the man of the match there for Team Germany as they nearly finish with a full four-man squad. Tremendous team effort. But Mika carried a lot of the weight. Four out of nine kills in total. Four knocks on top of that, too. Yeah, but he didn't get a Panzerfaust kill no. from a bajillion miles away. <laughs> it's like, what, like 150 so meters or something? It was crazy. I don't even know. I don't even know what the max range is off the top of my head. I think it's like maybe 300 meters on a Panzerfaust, like if you absolutely arc it perfectly, but I'm not, maybe 250? I have no clue. I've only ever used that thing in close range or, you know, frankly, seen it used in close range. That was just wild. It was just bonkers. Uh, so Germany on top, 50 points. Brazil, 41. South Korea, 36. USA, 31. Denmark, 30. But again, a big part of that is that now Germany has kind of pulled ahead. So like you were talking about, if they can keep just kind of putting up five, six points of games or whatever it may be, and then have a win here or there, they will likely win this event, unless yeah. somebody else just wins all the other games. Especially the fact that they won on a Vikendi is gonna be a very big confidence boost for them yep. because we saw, what what was it, five different teams with, I think, double-digit points? And if you get five teams with double-digit points, it means that at the bottom of the barrel, there really aren't a lot of good plays happening for the rest of the other teams. So there seems to be a little bit of maybe a knowledge gap in exactly how to play 
those circles and those rotations on Kennedy, of course, it's kind of hard to make these presumptions based on one game play. Yeah, no, 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 we don't know. But um, you know, should they continue to perform like that on Kennedy, then yeah. you know, Germany is going to be a very scary force to be reckoned with. Already yeah. top with what almost ten point lead. Yeah, yeah, they might win the event if they can. If they can continue to play well, as I mean, they look good on Miramar. If they look good on Erangel, scary, very, very scary. Quick look at that last circle, and. Uh, it's just, you know, Germany just has that extra hillside on the eastern edge that they can use to kind of cover themselves. Let these, well, these ding-dongs on the other side of the oh, circle the fight. Yeah. <laughs> Let them duke it out. Yeah, and it looks really scary from this position here for Team Germany coming into this first fight, or this last fight, excuse me, because they're just wide open on the field, but there's just enough elevation that in close quarters, you really actually have a lot of terrain to play with. And this is something that, you know, you might not have that much experience with as a team coming in at the Kendi. As you said, there aren't many circles that end like that on this map. You don't have too many fields no. like that one. But Germany just able to play the hand that they were dealt to perfection, racking up a ton of damage. 1.6K traveling a bajillion miles, nine kills in total. And a lot of points on the board. Yeah, just a very solid game. Uh, that is beautifully played from Germany because they were creative in that game. It wasn't just that they held their position. It was that they were getting up on the roofs. They were using their utility, using the Panzerfaust, switching out guns, swapping things out, kind of scraping by with what they had at times, losing out on a lot of 7-6 and things like that. So it is truly a, a kind of varied and impressive win, not just in the individual play, but also in kind of the, the thought that went into the individual decisions uh, throughout that match. Yeah, and you think of all the other teams that made it deep on Vikendi, usually just had two players or three players up, but they were able to successfully navigate it to have a four-man squad in that last circle. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we are going to take another short break. We will be back with two more Aaron Gals here at PNC. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. I'm here today at Silverstone, the home of UK Motorsport. I've been invited by the makers of PUBG to take part in a mystery challenge, and I can't wait to find out what it is. Today you'll be driving the Aston Martin DBX 707 under the guidance of a former Formula One world champion, Damon Hill. Wow. Welcome to Silverstone. Do you want to know about the DBX 707? I would love to. Come with me. If you're not careful, you can, you can make the car get very out of control. If I turn left too quickly, Oh. Right? It's, yeah. it's not good. This is unlike anything I expected. Now it was my turn. Damon gave me plenty of advice on the best racing lines to take and the braking points to hit. So let's see how I did. Okay, Jackie, off you go. Nice and easy to start with though, okay? I hope I haven't frightened him. Oh, that sound is absolutely insane. Show some respect. Are you challenging me? Hm. A tough nut to crack. Now, shall we fight? My turn! All right, here we go. Trust my shield! Fire away! Gotta try harder, huh? <laughs> I'm not catching fades anymore. Gotta keep my hands clean when they come for the ball.
to the update 25.2. Today, we'll be walking you through some gunplay adjustments and a brand new feature that's bound to sprinkle a dash of vibrancy as well as a bit more wow into your weapon skin wardrobe. Let's start with the Dragonoff. Previously introduced as a chance-based damage weapon that you might have tried on the 25.1 test server, it is now ready to make its live debut with its damage carefully refined based on your invaluable feedback. By removing the probabilistic damage system and readjusting the damage per distance, the Dragonoff is now ready to provide a variety of fair, dynamic gunplay scenarios. Now moving on to the AUG. It's time to restore equilibrium. We've heard your insights about its overperformance and recognized a potential imbalance. Initially, we did boost its power to encourage the use of 5.56mm weapons and catalyze a shift in the gunplay meta. However, in our pursuit of fair fight, we've decided to slightly reduce the AUG's RPM, which should be enough to align it more closely with other options in the game and enhance the overall balance. Next up, let's swing the spotlight onto our upgraded weapons system. Meet Chroma, a feature allowing you to alter the color and visual effects of your weapons. Chroma includes changes to weapon appearance, attachments, death crates, and kill feeds. And if you possess the appropriate progressive weapon skin, applying this feature is as simple as clicking an icon. Update 25.2 has more to offer, so make sure to delve into the patch notes for all the details. And as always, we'll see you on the battlegrounds.
And we are back here at PNC 2023. Germany coming off a big win and a shot up to the first place spot on the leaderboards. As we move into the final two games of the day, it's two Erangels to wrap things up. Big kills across the board here. Mika leading the way with eight. Kowo, it's Chris and Brexco not too far behind. So a, a team effort. Kowo coming off the bench to fill in uh, for the sick player as the coach and having a really stellar performance. Yeah, it's fantastic how well rounded this team has been. First time seeing the stats for all the killers on stage and that's very well rounded. Seems like everybody from Germany is stepping up and it's a big part of why this team consistently in the first three maps we played today was racking up points after points after points. They weren't getting the wins, but they were getting high the leaderboard. And then finally in game four, get so much and let's get to it. Let's go to Erangel for the next one. And away we go. It is match number five. Aaron Gell getting a good look at the bridge before we zoom into the air to see the plane path. And a pretty fair one right down the right down the middle, right across the island, up through Razak and School, uh, just a little bit east of Severny on the finishing end. So really nothing to complain about with this one. Again, there are hot drops potential here, folks. I have heard that maybe South George, Milta, I think, got abandoned. I'm not sure about anywhere else. I thought Pachinki might have had one on the, uh, the stat sheet that we had from the scrims. I but think they resolved it, maybe, mm. but we'll see. Always fun to get hot drops in Pachinki, man. Those are the best. They're that a is, lot of fun. That's the only spot worth hot dropping over, if I'm being honest. And I think China's going to get it to themselves. I assume. God, I'm getting flashbacks to flashbacks to PWS and uh, like PCS Asia is where yeah. China would just bully everybody. 17 everybody, gaming. Everybody, yes, it was 17 gaming would bully wow. everybody out of Pachinki. Yep, they still do. <laughs> God, it doesn't it surprise me. Changed. It Enough doesn't changed. surprise me. Yeah, it's just such a great staging point for really any circle that Erangel is going to throw at you. It's fantastic to rotate from. The loot is top tier. Get everything that you want and more from Pachinki and so many options. Yeah, exactly. It's also about the versatility of the rotations and the cars. All those things come into play. First circle of Erangel. Whoa! North. Hard north. All right, let, let's see what they're going to do here. Argentina is spread out around Severny, India. In prime position to maybe take those warehouses to the east of Severny. Yeah. The, the warehouse, it's, it's only one. There's not more than one there. I should... Yeah, there's some little tiny compounds with some houses, but that's about it. Evan playing uh, parachute simulator here, just going through the trees, and then he's okay. Oh, this is Yeznaya, okay. Yep, the down a lot of drop spots. And for a second, I was all turned around and thought he was going someplace else, but all right. Yeah, nice spread. I mean, this circle is so far north, I'm kind of wondering exactly what the game plan is going to be. I'm looking at the, the map feed right now in Brazil. It looked like they were planning on landing in Novo. In fact, they might have landed in Novo, already crossing the bridge. And we're only two minutes into this one. Driving right through the UK squad. I wonder if we're going to get a shot of that in a moment here from the Observer. But some early rotations coming through. Yeah, I, I, I think this makes a lot of sense. You know, if you don't find that early emergency pickup, you got to try something else. Mm -hmm. And Brazil, I just see a grenade in Sparking's hand. I don't assume they're going to try to fight uh, the UK for Milta. Yeah, I don't think they have weapons, really. <laughs> no. I think they just peace out. Even if they were to fight into Milta and potentially win, it would bog them down so much on the eventual rotation and in this circle. I think that probably if you're Brazil, you go maybe all the way to the edge, go to Milta Power or Lepovka, pick up some hot loot, and then just send it back into the circle. Yep. That would be my game plan, at least. I, I, These guys I are smarter than me, so. I, I think they're going to go spread out around this, yeah, the Milta Milta Power, Milta Mini area, and then just make a run for it up that East Coast road mm -hmm. would be my best guess. Uh, Denmark's got some work to do out of the military base, but I already see them kind of fanning out. I think really trying to cover ground with loot to see if they can find an emergency pickup would be my guess with Denmark. I wonder I'm if them. they already have one, considering how hard they're sticking on to the military island. 
you would think, if you're lucky, I, they're not super common, are the emergency pickups. So you do have to kind of sometimes take your time if you're not lucky to really mm. dig one out. Even with the four-man squad looting a full, like full, the full military base, it's a percent chance, you think? I don't, I don't know. They're not that common. But I'm actually not sure what the percentages are. Yeah. They're not super common. I've definitely looted entire cities and not <laughs> found one. And yeah. then other times I've looted a couple houses and found two yeah. the, and scratched my head. The loot gods giveth and they taketh away. Yeah. That's uh, uh, really the only bit, the big question right now I have is uh, do we find the emergency pickup? Top three kills, Clip, Mika, Gustav. Gustav, I actually didn't know he was popping off so much. Yeah. In terms of kills. I, I I remember him getting a lot of frags, but I didn't think that he would be top three. Well, now Denmark's fifth place, so, you know, picking it up in the wow, last couple he's games. he's number one in damage. Yeah, Gustav. Having a great one. It's Chris. Just, it's, it's such a good player for so long as it's Chris. Mm -hmm. You, you got to be so impressed with him. He's so smart. He's got so many historic moments. Sparking right there, too. Just, you know, hasn't been at an international event for a little while. And, uh... Making up for it big time here on day one. <laughs> and oh it's Chris with a Panzerfaust and a Not 4x249. Again. Well, you, you, That's my favorite loadout. There you go. Yeah. Well, big again, guns only. Yeah, you can drop the Panzerfaust into the car, so that's clearly a good idea, as we saw in the previous game, to have mm -hmm. those Panzerfausts. Very versatile. Even on them for now. But yeah, love to see it. Japan now making their long drive in. I believe this is actually just south of Severity, so getting closer and closer to the center of the circle. Japan's, I hate this spot. Don't yeah, do I it. Don't, I hate this I'm spot. I'm not a fan. Hate this spot. No, Japan's a good defensive team, but this is a hard position to defend, and really rotating out of it is just such a pain. I think, yeah, this early, like, when you have basically only two teams that have prio ahead of you, if you're Japan, like, you got to pick something better than that, in my opinion. I feel like Edge Severny or something, right? Gamble a bit. Exactly. That's literally what I was thinking. Southern tip of Severny is a better spot. Yeah, but I mean, Japan, just even going back to uh, the PWS and PCS Asia days, has always been a little bit timid when it comes to these kind of rotations. They don't really like fighting too much up close. They like to play kind of similar to the way that Chinese Taipei has been playing so far in this tournament. A little bit more slow, more conservative, trying and play defensively and pick people off from a distance with DMRs. Yeah, but... That spot's not really... Yeah, I, yeah. I'm with you. It's just not good. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so natable. It's right. so it's so open to a couple angles. Mm -hmm. Like, you're oftentimes just, like, clinging onto that shack, putting your cars there as, like, a car fort and just hiding. And, and just it's like, hard to move out of. It's, yeah. it's very difficult to move out of. I mean, other teams, eventually you're going to be in a skirmish with somebody, probably at long distance, and other teams are going to hear you shooting from that location and know that you're basically a... Fish in a fish in a bail or with the nades coming in. Yeah, yep, totally. It's, it's a tough spot, but we'll I see how they hold. Did not realize Turkey still has zero points. Yeah, they had a, they had another goose egg and candy. Yeesh. I, I mean, I think we all know that their team is better than this, but these yes. are the kind of things that you know can kind of get in your head a little bit as a player competing on stage, where you might start second guessing yourself, and then you're not taking fights as cleanly or as confidently as you otherwise would. So I'm hoping for Turkey's sake that this game, they come through and get you know a handful of points on the board, a couple of different players getting a couple of kills, just so they can kind of reset and come into day two and day three with kind of a second win, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, but uh, the problem for Turkey is, unless they have just absolutely monster games the rest of the way out, they're actually just, there's almost no hope already that they can win this thing. Right. It's unfortunate. I thought Turkey would be a lot better than they are, to be completely honest. I, I'm very much uh, shocked. I'm, I'm truly shocked. Yeah, 22 points for them in top eight. Well, I hear the Korean commentators losing their cool over something. I'm trying to find out what it is. Driving on the, this is this is Germany stuff. Like, I don't know, there's nothing to lose your mind about here. This is, this is classic Germany. Yeah, I love this edge play. I mean, it's been so good for them over the first four games, you know? Or the first th three games, excuse me, where they, you know, didn't rack up too many kills, but they got a good number of them, and they got a lot of placement points as well. And then finally to have all the pieces come together there on McKendy and pick up, God, what was it, like 19 points in total and just catapulting them in the first place, the first team to crack 50 points in total on the board. Yeah. You know, there's no need to reinvent yourself. Just continue to play this slow, conservative style. 
play the edges, try to catch people on the rotations, and you know, you're almost guaranteeing yourself for some placement points as long as you play it correctly. If you have the intel and all your players can execute, yeah, it, it's tough to not get placement points, even if you're not getting the win. Yep, 100%. Fully agree. It's They're a very smart team. Like I said at the beginning of this today, they're extremely smart, so they can definitely get it done. Uh, who chills? Just using a smoke to make sure that he's safe while he's doing whatever he's doing in the corner there, and then uh, <laughs> piecing on out. Uh, H win flirting with Chinese territory as we did see in the previous game on Vikendi that USA lost a player to Longskirk uh, early on. It was not ideal, but this time I think they're going to avoid that. But where are they going to go? Oh, no, 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 no. Are they going to Japan spot? Yeah, yep. They're going to drive through it. I don't know if they're going to go into it. Let's see. Oh, oh. Imhoff with the god angle. Immediately, Dex Shrimsy. King gets H1 as well with a headshot. Kickstart fights back. He's able to take down Imhoff. Kind goes down as well. Kickstart doing some good damage <laughs> control. And a runs over Kane for that insult to injury right there. USA one man down, one man knocked. It is Shrimsy. As they're gonna try and hold on now, Pure Boy coming in. The cavalry is defense, takes a ton of damage, isn't quite yet knocked. And USA is going to eliminate Japan, losing only one man. They were caught by surprise, but still, immaculate recovery there, despite that fantastic angle that I think Imhak had in on the entry. Well, there is some parachuting here from Chinese Taipei. Canada's sort of driving away from it, I guess. Pongsker. Kind of seeing if maybe you can help Savior. Savior's just in the air. At least the trees are there. He should be okay. You gotta be careful there, Zenon. Woo, Adam. At least given an opportunity to do some damage. Savior out in the open, though. Thought that that compound was free, but Canada blockaded it. And now he is done and dusted. Somebody's gonna get that point, and I think it's gonna be Vietnam. Nope, Keenan got it. Wow, wow. Keenan, nice job. A good steal there from Keenan. I, I just. I'm gonna go down and talk to Kane after today and be like, "Don't, don't go to that position, my friend." <laughs> yeah, I, it's I, they, they, they almost pulled it off. The def the defense with just two of them, just Emok and Kane were there initially, but yeah, I think they just needed one more knock. I mean, the first one was really good. The cars were aligned right up for him, but you only have what like two seconds, maybe two and a half seconds to make those shots happen and have that right. spray transfer. And after that, your window's closed, and suddenly you have all these guns coming down on you. Yep. And the other problem with that position is, let's say sometimes you even win that fight, maybe. Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt there. Mm -hmm. A lot of times there's a team not too far away that's going to throw a grenade at you and just ruin your round anyway. Yeah. Uh, Odds of you finishing that fight with the victory and having all four players up are very low. Yep. Probably going to be at least one or two knocks in. Yep. One or two knocks there, it's a very natable position. Quite flat if you play right there on that dip. Well, it is what it is as we move forward in this match, and there was a knock onto Vietnam, but recovered, no problem. Uh, really out, yeah. out in Narnia here is Thailand, but Australia's like right Whoa. there. Oh, please, Luke. Uh, I was really hoping he'd hit that shot. Flood got really beat up, though. Yeah. Doesn't matter, Luke's got a pretty good angle, trying to help him along the edge. Oh, Flood got caught by the fire. He's gonna get knocked. He can't heal that in time. Grenades as well in there, wouldn't have mattered. Ten at all find that knock on the flood. Luke 12 here trying to buy some time and space with these smokes. Here comes Tiggleton. Superstar is gonna have to get it done, but he shoots the pipes mm. on the outside. Not able to connect with a the headshot there. Oh, he's got a Panzerfaust. Let's see if he can make some magic happen. There's two players right now, switches back to the M4 as this comes back into close range. He knows somebody's right above him. That's a beautiful nade, and he senses Nora's right there. I think he saw the tip of the gun, but shot a little bit too right right there with the Panzer. Oh, I thought he was maybe trying to Bait with that nade there. Seeing if Nurens would try to come around the corner. He's not going to be ready for this. Oh, no, he's not. Yeah, he almost got it down in time, but Nurens just a bit more prepared. Why could Kamuk out very, very far away from this? Luke 12 as well, still alive. Still might have something to say. Yeah, we'll see if Luke 12 is able to make something happen here as Loki. Him and Soul have just been on the crest of this hill. Waiting to try and find an angle. And actually, Longsker is here as well. China with a very wide 2-2 split. I think Sol saw him. Should have. Yeah, Sol might have, but he doesn't know exactly how many players are here for China. If it's the full four-man squad, then you absolutely need to retreat. I think they were getting shot at by Argentina, so I think they're just oh, going to peace yeah. out anyway. I can see that on the map feed. 
They got information, though. Uh, maybe they could see a bit into the shooting range, so they have a decent idea of what's going on, and they're going to drive forward. Yeah, this is kind of fine uh, for Korea if they can keep that northern flank clear. Yeah, it's tough, though. There isn't really a lot of cover over on the northern side of this one up until he worked to that hill. So Got to keep your eyes on that. Now Brazil making a log rotation in, too. They're going pretty much dead center, almost near this compound, although it is occupied. All these players quite badly damaged. All right. Australia licking their wounds from previous battles. Oh, Brazil. Us again with the Dude, DMR. he is just bonkers. Especially with the mini, man. He's getting so much done. He only did 10 damage to get that knock, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It's when you get them and how you get them. That's all, that's all that, it's like horseshoes and hand grenades. Close enough. <laughs> well, Brazil kind of in a very tough spot right now. I don't think they were able to make the full rotation that they were gunning for, but there's players on pretty much all sides, so they're gonna try and make a fort with the vehicles that they have and hold on for dear life here. Hopefully eliminating angles from these other teams on the sides. Hamas, he knows that somebody's right over by that rock, just cannot quite find the angle. He just, he is going to make Brazil earn it, probably force out a couple more smokes potentially too. UK, are we looking to pick up Vard? Are we gonna leave Vard here? What's the plan? I'm curious, I don't know. Thailand, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Nonix, he? he's driving away from this. It's just on heaven. How much damage is Heaven going to do? A Korea with 2-2 split. India is actually getting mixed up in this as well. Driving straight into Thailand. Whoa. Oh, Loki with a Panzerfaust. No. house. If he hits that, <laughs> I am going to lose my marbles. Just lose everything that I have left in my sanity. Soul. Yeah, all right, India crashing the compound of Argentina. Let's see if they can make something happen. Epic's right now holding on. Actually, Rubox D gets the first shot there with a heady for the Mini-14. That's Unforgiven going down. That's a big gun. Salman as well, the IGL here for Team India. Gets taken out. Vard with a flush there on Unforgiven as this Aww. breach is just falling apart. Only two men two standing here for Team India. Epic trying to do what he can to keep these last two players underneath him. He might just peace out, yeah. Just gonna use that grenade sound. Really, he's even going for a spray. That's ambitious. That's that's a little bit overconfident. I thought maybe he's just gonna run away, but he's he's trying to maybe keep them pinned. Go for the grenade. Oh, right that's on so him. good. Oh wait. no, wait! It caught the edge of the door. Oh, it did. It caught there the. That's yeah, hard the to box. see in the smoke. Yeah, whatever that is. Some. It, it I think hit it was the object. edge of the wall or something. It got PUBG'd. PUBG'd, yeah. <laughs> because. As people don't may or may not know, grenades don't like to go around corners. They don't they don't do so well. I think it might have been right there in the bathroom. I don't know if you vacated that spot. I Hard think it was say. actually the wall, Hard the corner say. of the wall. Korea now trying to reinforce this northwestern edge. Anonix going to be left on the flank to watch, and actually quite a bit of space. Korea has to double check the shooting range in case there's a snake or something like that in there. Yeah, Korea was working with a two-two split for a long time. Now there's three-one, and they're getting closer and closer to the U.S.'s position right where Japan used to be. In the meantime, is going to play this little tiny plateau here, making small fortification with the two U.S. as they got. And Loki now catch, catches Shrimzy. A lot of really good shots there, gets the knock straight away. And Anonix with a flush. That's really nice. Oh, that Oh, man. it's so good from Rybox. Right on the money. Going to follow up with another one here. That no was bouncing in, and he's got it done. Two grenades, wipes out Thailand. Beautifully thrown, timed, that everything. Was, that was amazing. Uh, Here comes some USA. Clean nades. <laughs> now just do it again. Yeah. You got uh, any more? Oh, no anymore. more frags in the bag. Yeah. That's the ambitious <laughs> from Thailand to go dive on that position after the USA. Ale, Ale, give me some, give me some frags. <laughs> oh, why can you move out? Nope. Yep. Nowhere to go. China just finds him and takes the points. Yeah. I'm curious how many nades Argentina has left in the bag because remember they used a lot of them on India in that mm. house as well and then they used them to finish fleshing those other players out. So not too much left to be found, I'm sure, in the bag of Team Argentina. Crazy down, one knock here. Longsker, Longsker, so good. Pongsker able to get the flush. Aches left down, just Longsker alive. But he is a force to be reckoned with. We have seen time and time again, Leo the only one up now. 
Fort Chinese Taipei. Zen on, on the bad edge of that circle. There is no hope for him. Mortars now starting to rain in towards mm. USA. First one, a bit off the mark. I think a bit to the right. Yeah, to the right from his perspective. So we'll see if we can line that one back up. Do they have a spotter? <laughs> okay, here we go again. It's fireworks show at PUBG Nations Cup. Oh, they corrected a little bit, but not enough. The angle a bit off there. Johnny uh, oh. Saipei eventually what? did get eliminated. How did happen? I don't know, actually. Oh, is that the blue? Korea's like pushing towards that fight. They they came out of shooting range. I didn't expect them to get this far out. This is ambitious. Yeah, I was I, so focused on the mortars. <laughs> this, yeah, I know. But this is not what I would say you is usual for South Korea, uh, for especially for this team. Like Donna was generally pretty cautious in the early games. Well, they, I guess not always. I, I take it back. Sometimes they can be a little bit aggressive, but they really want to take a fight. So do Canada and Canada. Woo Learn with disaster. Zero hard shifts over there at the east now. Heaven from South Korea going to be throwing a nade. He does go wide on these Canadian players. I want to keep in mind, by the way, that Longsker off screen, deep in the blue, over to the west, just taking it hardcore right now. We'll see if he's able to survive from that and work his way back in. It's going to take a lot of meds if he wants to make that happen. If all of his dead teammates had fresh jammer packs, he's fine yeah. for like another minute, maybe. It he starts to chunk a little bit, though. He might be able to find a backstab onto Anonix. Anonix, though, is watching that edge very closely. So I think Anonix has done a good job of kill track, uh, excuse me, kill feed tracking. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Duck juice. Right, if this Vietnam team can start really kind of working together as a unit, hitting these shots as well as they have, they are going to start putting up some big points. Doesn't matter. It's oh. Chris with the M249. Oh, let's go. M249 gets the knock right there and the flush. Love to see it. Chloris gets knocked by Clip with a bolt from range. And this has opened up a lot of space for Germany to potentially just wipe Vietnam out. Oh, Duck Juice though, hits some banger SLR shots. Mika on the ground, might be resable. It's a 2v2 now between Germany and Vietnam. Vietnam finally gets that res, so one more man added to the fray here in Hamas. They really want to push this position. Frag coming in, seems like they have a very good read on where Germany is, just short with that nade, although the trajectory was good. And the second one from Duck Juice is fantastic. That's Micah going down. He's done. And it's Chris is just piecing out. He's going to try and get what points he can by trying to survive alongside Koho. Yeah, a clip hits another headshot. Observers, please. Can we get some replays on some clip nastiness? Oh, Turkey, points, oh. points, boys. Take yes. the points. There we go. On there the we board. go. There you go. Monkey off the back. Let's let's get back onto it. And India out in the open there. They're just, yeah, there's just no hope in that point. That that, that car was done so. That is absolutely blasted. Now Argentina is able to consolidate on the north side with all four men. Meanwhile, Adam tries to get that finish. Actually, it's Haven from Brazil, I think, who gets that flush there on Chloris. And now another push comes in. Germany eliminated here. A lot more damage being done as Korea's going to take this position. Watch out for that car in Onyx. Ooh, very dangerous. Almost got pinched in there. Heaven is going to fall, but two kills in the round. Doing a great job there. Doing some damage. Korea able to breach that position. See if they can hold on to it. Himas, yeah, no way. It's Klib again. Those bolts for Klib, he is just absolutely feeling it this game. Longsker is still in the blue, by the way. What? This whole time, Longsker is still in How? the blue. He is working his way in. He's off screen right now to the west of Canada, and he's getting closer and closer. How many jammer packs and meds are floating out there in the blue? I have no idea, but he's he's getting very yeah, now, close. All right, now we have him on screen. He's popping another first aid kit. He so has, I two. think, two more left. Yeah, he's going to have to use... I don't think he can get in. He has a med kit and two bandages. Maybe he can't get in, but... We'll see if he can get some flushes. He might be able to get a kill. He gets bit. No. Up. No. Okay. Uh, man, he stayed in the blue for so long. I actually forgot about him since the last time we called it out. That was like a full minute like Everybody, and a half, maybe two minutes. Everybody forgot about him. There, there's no way most players are out there that long. Denmark trying to swarm Brazil, and they do. Clib? What? Clib? Was he in the, was he in the car yes. with that one? Oh, my goodness. Another headshot there with the car 98. Kino pushing a little bit too far forward. Adam is going to be able to dispatch him. And now Beamy going to try and bring in the reinforcements as Denmark had a very wide spread after that earlier engagement. <laughs> that, that, that bounced off of him. Oh, <laughs> look at his name. <laughs> that smoke, though. 
Get balls off him! Oh, oh! Benny so much danger! Out. So much danger, BD! Oh, the car! Oh, everything falling apart for Canada! Three players knocked by nades. Adam, the lone survivor right now. In the UK, coming in from downtown, hundreds of meters away, are the lifeblood of Canada. Just shooting down Bimi's position as he tries to break through. Again, it's happening. He's going to try and use the flip buggy for cover. Instead, he's going for it. He wants that flush, but Adam, he's already healed. He gets the headshot there on Bimi. Oh, Clip, please. If you headshot Adam, I don't are... know if he can get there. T-Bone is raining fire on him. Yeah, he might be stuck. You're right. Turkey, though, getting pushed by the UK. Like sharks, they smell blood in the water here. And oh my god, just Honey Badger just spraying across the ridge line. Really smart stuff. Know that there's not a lot of positions that they can hide. It's just a, a, a hillside. Oh. Schofield! Schofield gets two! Huge plays here for Turkey to stay alive. Love to see it there from Turkey. I love that play now. It's Tebo, but he gets the mad. And he gets Schofield as well. But at least Turkey finally got on the board. Four points in total. The monkey is off their back. They've got to be feeling very good about that, even if they lost the fight there to the UK. South Korea looking to swing out. But, uh, ooh, Argentina's right on their heels, potentially. I'm not sure. Clip, though, that grenade's good. Didn't matter. Good with the AUG. Argentina getting backed off now. And his Rybox knocked. Emix trying to go for the res. A little bit of utility being acquired here by Loki to make sure that they are good to go for this late game. But Korea in a strong position. UK as well with three. If Argentina can get a res, they're going to be back up to four. I think it should be resable, I think. I like the terrain here for Korea, but the fact that Argentina, with four players, should they get that res, is right on their door in the north. And then you have Denmark to the southwest, UK to the southeast. It's a really dangerous spot to be in here for Korea in the circle. It is going to favor them. It ships back up to the north. Right now, all these teams, all these players kind of licking their wounds, trying to scavenge what resources they can from the bodies around them. All right. Ale, finally able to crawl to safety, where they feel like they can get that res, just barely able to get there in time. Gonna go on the inside of the building, shut the door behind them, pick their fallen comrade back up. Should be no problem. Now we just look to see, you know, what can the UK do? They're completely, right now, just clearing out the edges. They're making sure that everything in the south is, is good to go, because they know Clib is out here. Uh, T-Bone, oh, pretty sure. Might. might have saw him, I'm not sure. He's certainly suspicious. Yeah. He might not have confirmation, but he seems to have a hunch. He, he's, he's, he's definitely... Oh, these vehicles are so know. low HP. I think they're going to clean him out right here. They're so low HP, Paper Thin. It's fine. Just don't hit that rock too hard. <laughs> All right, well, Clip with an 8X Car 98 is going to need to pop some big heads. Oh, that's a, that's a level 3 helm. Oh, come on, brother. Lou is closing in. He wants to get a shot here on T-Bone. He probably has one or two peaks left as the blue is chunking him. Not going for the heal. And Ooh. finally, T-Bone is able to close that one out with a mini 14. So UK, they now have the southern side under control. Korea, they heard these shots. They heard the vehicles. They have a very good read on where the UK is. But keep in mind, Argentina is knocking on their doorstep to the north. Now, the problem for the UK is Everything that's in the circle on the southern side is downhill, open, mm. no cover to speak of. So yeah. they have to crash something, and the weaker side of this is Korea, and especially when Vard's hitting shots like that, that might be the go signal for the UK. Some smokes are popping right now as UK seems like they're getting in position, although Vard takes a ton of damage down to 10 HP. Going to have to pop a first aid kit. Korea needs smokes, and they need them now. That's a precarious position. Vard going to pop a smoke for himself. UK looks like they're getting ready. This U.S. has one good tire. Oh, how did Vard get hit there? He took two headshots. Had to get out and heal. Shield this gets is... popped here by T-Bone. Yeah. A wise decision. Behind all this, Argentina is waiting in the shadows for the right moment to pounce. They're just watching that kill feed. They should have been able to key in on the location of both Korea and the U.K. Now, Argentina testing the water a little bit there. The U.K. fights back. By all rights, this should be an Argentina win. They have a great position to play Overwatch on this oh. fight. Here comes the grenade, Vard gonna let loose. He's got a couple more. They're flying in, they're right next to Korea, but they don't go quite deep enough. Seoul able to find one, and Onyx finish are knocked by the follow-up from Vard. 
Here we go, Argentina oh. getting onto it, but the grenade explosion caused the vehicle to explode. And now Korea is down to just Seoul, who is on very low amounts of health. Did get the heal off. Here comes Argentina springing into action and finishing off players from South Korea. And Vix gets knocked there on T-Bone. UK only two men are up right now as Argentina is farming these points. They have the UK right where they want them. And they're just hammering down that position. The vehicle blows up. Bart is trying his best to hang on, but eventually gets <laughs> taken out by the spinning US. <laughs> oh. Just barely clipped him. Is out two players standing here for Korea. It's, it's just one. Seoul with the one before of a lifetime. Oh. If he could do it, what is that? That is pretty nasty. He's taking a lot of damage here. Surely not. He's feeling it. Oh my god, he gets another headshot. If he had bought enough time to get the heal, he could potentially do this. The pans are out now as they, they he's done. Yeah, there you go. Okay, great wow. job here by Argentina. They are gonna find a 13 kill chicken dinner. And all of a sudden, Argentina is swinging for the top of the leaderboards. Man, they played that position absolutely perfectly. Just let the United Kingdom and Korea cannibalize each other on the open face of that hill. And then once you see the knocks come in, swoop in, steal those kills, secure the win. Argentina wins with three men up, one man knocked, 13 kills in total. I think the second highest kill count for any team in that lobby was seven. So Argentina is absolutely mopping up. They played that circle perfectly and launched themselves in a top three. Yeah, just a really, really brilliantly executed game here from Argentina, top to bottom. Did a great job defending early, controlling their territory, making sure that no one really did critical damage to them, and even close to critical damage to them. Ale was the closest to being finished out of that. Really, really nicely done. And again, a team that I think might have snuck under the radar for a lot of people, but shouldn't be. A lot of these players are very, very, very strong. And they are coming in here with a lot of confidence, a lot of smiles. And uh, we could see a, a run here from Argentina would be really exciting. They're in a great position to do it, especially if they continue to perform up to that level on Erangel. Erangel, of course, can be played five more times over the course of this tournament. It's just the first taste of it today. It is Argentina just racked up so many points. I mean, that's what a 23 point game for them. Absolutely launching them through the standings. For the United Kingdom, the defending champs coming into this one, that was a hard hand to be dealt. They had to work through the downhill portion of that hill with basically no cover whatsoever yeah. to speak of. The utility was lacking too. They didn't have enough smokes to really make too much magic happen. I love the nades attempted from them. You know, maybe if you get Korea with some Hail Mary nades, you're able to open up a 1v1 situation between yourself and Argentina. And maybe you could gun them down in a tremendous fight. But at the end of the day, it just didn't happen there for the UK as they're sitting pretty much dead middle of the pack after five maps have been played here on day one. Of course, we're going to be playing six games per day here at the PUBG Nations Cup. So one Aaron Gell left to be played. Yeah, it, he, man, if UK could have found the timing where, like, they had gotten knocks and they weren't getting, like, double headshot every time they even tried to get in vehicles, like, they might have been able to wipe Korea out and at least put up a fight there at the end, but it was not meant to be. And Japan eliminated early. United States made them pay for taking an aggressive early position that, again, not what most people would consider a prio position. Especially not that early, usually. Yes. Oh, I even I forgot about that nade too. <laughs> Tremendous stuff. Yep. I just, just uh, Korea played a really good game. We didn't talk about it too much. It's just solid, uh, good kills, kind of maneuvering around the edge of the map, pretty nicely. Seoul almost went bonkers at the end. That was, if he hadn't taken so much damage in that first fight, he might have been able to do something. But very wise there by. Argentina to really fan out and not give him the opportunity. And Korea also played from a pretty tough position, just strictly speaking in terms of terrain. They were able to, able to make it work because they pretty much had a bunker of destroyed vehicles around them for the longest time. But it's not easy to make these angles happen. It's a very organic setup. You have to know exactly where you're vulnerable from when you have all of these flip vehicles around you and that's your hard cover and nothing else. And Korea was able to make it work. And although they didn't walk away with a the victory, they closed the distance on Germany. For only got, you know, maybe what, a handful of points? Maybe even only one point as they had one kill in that game. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah just one, no placements. 
I mean, 12 kill or 12 points in total for both the UK and South Korea. That's a very solid game for Denmark as well with double digits. Yeah, Denmark continuing to have a really solid performance here. I think a lot of people not too surprised uh, that Denmark coming into this would have a really solid chance at having a top finish in this event. Again, great players, Clip, Beamy. Uh, these guys are nuts, dude. So good coach with Wookie Bookie as well. Got to give him a shout out. I, I'm. I don't know, man. This is going to be a lot of fun. USA is slowly starting to kind of get their stuff together today. Five points. Yeah, in that last game, but still, what, six on the leaderboard, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, it's been a very quiet day for them, but still, they're cracking top six. They're at 36 points. I mean, one big win on day two, or even here in the final map of Erangel, and you can send yourself, if not to first, then certainly to top three, top four. Right. Man of the match. Yeah, it has to be. Yep. Crew XD with uh, some insane damage. He had those nades, he had some really clutch kills. 727 damage in total, five kills, five knocks. Yeah, Rybox doing a great job. Uh, just, again, a guy who's been around for a really long time in PUBG Esports and uh, showing you that, you know, we're seeing this a lot here today, that the veterans in particular are having stellar days. The, the, the wily veterans able to find those points, able to find those maneuvers, get those timings down and get those Big, big points. Argentina, what a huge day they're having. Just awesome to see. 13 kills especially. It's like they're gaining momentum the longer this thing is going on. And if they can continue to deliver solid performances like that one on Erangel, they're going to be in for a very good weekend. Yeah, fully agree. I, I'd love to see it. I really, truly would. Yep, there's that gap closed by South Korea you were talking about. Three points now separates them and Germany. Argentina, three points behind them. Brazil, two points behind Argentina. So things have once again tightened up at the top of the leaderboard. It looked like maybe Germany was going to start to potentially kind of drift away with things. But no, sir, right back to a different map and right back to parity. And for Denmark in their first ever PUBG Nations Cup, already at 40 points. After what, five maps played? That's a fantastic average. It's good for top five overall today. Looking very strong. India, a little bit of a down day for them. I got to say, you know what, we've been hearing, it is, of course, like Denmark, their first time competing in the PUBG Nations Cup, but we've been hearing in terms of, you know, scrims and, and online play, how well they've been playing. And some pro players were saying, you know, they're kind of, it could be hit or miss. You know, yeah. sometimes they absolutely pop off, they absolutely frag off. They could come in first place by the end of this weekend, they could come in last. It's really hard to say. And so far for India, I feel like they've been having a hard time getting started, but certainly the potential is there. And I think... Yeah. You know, as they said before, coming into today, they want to kind of feel things out and then move on from there into day two and day three. If they use this as a staging point, could be good things in their future. I, 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 just, I guarantee they're learning some important lessons. And, you know, some of this edge things that they're trying to do at times just aren't quite sliding their way. And they're getting caught in positions where, you know, maybe a lot of teams kind of, uh, you know, have a little bit more experience, let's just be honest, at the international level. And that's nothing against India. I mean, again, their first game, they looked pretty solid. They looked pretty comfortable. Uh, and we hope to see them, you know, continue to kind of rebound and perform very well. That's what that's what we want to see. I, no doubt about it. Top four teams from match five. Lots of distance traveled there for the UK. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm sad that Germany didn't crack the top four because I want to see how much distance they traveled as well. I feel like they've been getting top four pretty much every single match. Up Where the heck was point. the UK driving that they put through 44? Denmark was the furthest away from that. They were in they yeah. dropped military base. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. It's hard for me. We things can't like, keep track like of every early, team that much. Yeah, it's not possible. Things like early game rotations are really hard to keep fresh in the mind. Yeah. At least for me. No, no, no. Well, no one can. It's there's, one of the least consequential things. There's usually, too much going know? on unless it's like a really unique rotation. Like, you, you know, you're like it's just somebody like uses a boat or something. You're not going to like. Yeah. You're not going to notice it. It's just like. But anyway, regardless, interesting stuff. Uh, UK, though, kind of starting to get their feet underneath them a little bit. Kind of starting to maybe look like that team that won BNC last year, potentially. We'll see. Right. Uh, some Still some work to do. I, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, Germany looks good. South Korea looks good. I'm not too surprised by that. Brazil looks good. Not too surprised by that. Austra Honestly, Argentina looks good. Not surprised by that. No one should be surprised by that. Uh, but it's it's been a fun day. I, I just wish Japan... And picked it up a little bit, done a little bit differently in that game. Yeah, I saw it coming from a mile away. I mean, it's just, and that's we what's kind of shooting range. Yeah, yeah. Why not just go to shooting range instead? I don't know. 
And or Severni. Or, yeah, Severni was South Severni tip open, is, was, yes. And then we saw um, South Korea use that position to eventually get to where they got to, right? They used that South Severni tip. So, I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to go there, at least don't be the first one there. Yes. Do what, like, the U.S. did. You can be the last one in that spot. It's fine. Can't be the first one. Yeah, but I mean that's kind of Japan's play style. Even go back in, going back to PWS, yeah, is sure. Japan it usually kind of likes to play this slow conservative style, and sometimes it works. But the we same weren't way seeing that, that earlier, though. That's what I'm frustrated about. Yeah, it's tough to say. I mean, hopefully they'll come back and do something a little bit different here on the final Erangel of the day. Hopefully, hopefully. Turkey got it. points. We're very happy about that. Very, very happy about that. I did not want to see them struggle any longer. That is not enjoyable by any stretch, because that team is, like you were saying, too good. That's too the, good. Most, the most exciting thing that we can all hope for here is for a very strong midfield, where everyone's competing, maybe not for the top spots, but for top eight, for example, where there's a lot on the line every single game. And so hopefully India and Turkey are gonna step up here coming into the final map of the day. Looking forward to it. Korea on a pretty strong run, got their first ever chicken dinner at a PNC. First place in kills overall in the day as well. Korea's playing very well. Yeah, they got they got fraggers. All right, let's get it under the way. It's the last match of the day. Aaron Gill, one more time to wrap things up here at PNC 2023. Let's get into it. Drop the beat. Drop the beat. <laughs> You're Let's vibing go. with the music on Erangel today. Yeah, I am. I was with the intro show, and then you are here with... Now I'm back. I'm ready. More of a dubstep guy? No. That's kind of what we got right now. I am not at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Final match of the day here on Erangel. Map number six. Match number six. And kind of a relatively fair circle. Not very far to the west, but pretty much everything here in play. Yeah. No, I mean, so far we haven't seen any crazy plane paths on Erangel. It's been... I would say over the course of today, we really haven't seen too many crazy plane paths in general. It's just been Miramar, quite... sort of. Yeah. The that first was one was pretty bad. Yeah. Right. The second one was like, kind of bad, but not really. Interesting the way it's been shaking out. I was yeah. hoping for more bad circles. It's been really basic. Wait, what, what is it with you and coffee? I forget exactly how this thing goes. It's, it's it makes years. circles bad, usually. But I'm drinking a latte today, this is your so maybe that's coffee of the day, isn't it's it? It's a latte. It's different. Uh, I don't know if it counts. Maybe it's only like americanos, or <laughs> is that what we got to get you for tomorrow? Get some bad juju I'll try going. I'm americanos tomorrow. Yeah, All see. right, let's do it. We'll test the theory. Empirical evidence is what we need. <laughs> yeah, we're All scientists, right. if anything. All right, watching the map, it seems like we might have a relatively hot job here with Brazil and Turkey. Eh? It seems like they're probably just going to be gunning for vehicles over down there by Milta. Yeah, I believe you're right. And but I think Turkey got one, and so they're okay. Yeah, they're piecing Ooh, out. And, oh, yes. my goodness. There we go. That's okay, the, the, coffees are, the coffees are kicking in. Maybe. It just took a while. It took a long time. We'll see. It, this only is really spicy if it doesn't just, like, hard shift one way or another on phase two. We need a yeah. couple phases of bad. We need a couple phases of bad. Yeah, I feel like this one's got to be like, what, 60-40 for the island, though, right? Would you I say believe, that? I believe that's about right, yeah. Okay. Maybe 70-30, I'm not sure, but yeah, something around there. We'll see. Denmark to be really happy with this one. I'm trying to think back at the team that landed in Novo with the previous Aaron Gull went and then just immediately Brazil. It. That was Brazil, okay. Yeah, I think they're they're probably kicking themselves for not going for Novo again ah. this time, although it was it would have been a hard jump. Yeah, nobody likes dropping Novo. It's It's challenging. It's 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 because it's like, yeah, there are vehicles, but like all of your rotations are dangerous. Like every rotation you make is like dangerous, basically. Like you're either going over the bridge, mm -hmm. you're going cutting getting through military, boat yeah, or something. yeah, you're cutting through military base space, taking a ferry. All of it's like way riskier than you'd like. Yeah, you don't really have a lot of options in terms of the bridges either. No, you have to go a long way to get towards that western bridge. Right, and then you never know if the Milta team's just going to be jerks and camp the East Bridge. No, they, they will be. <laughs> yeah, they almost certainly will be if they get a good circle for it. This is a good circle to look for bridge camps. So far, not really anybody yet, maybe. I like, wonder. 
I don't know. I can't tell. Nobody showed me their hand yet. Like, the intentions are still hidden. Yeah, we haven't really had any opportunity for pretty much any players to go for a bridge cam. No. Germany can take boats safely. I like this. Yep. Play all the way down there in Prim. Have a boat or two. Yep. Make that rotation to the island easy if you need to. And actually, it's Chris just going to send it. I thought he was going to bring this one back to Prim, but I guess he's going to establish a beachhead for his team. Uh, nah, this is Germany, dog. They they, they play individually. <laughs> All right. Especially in the early game. They will just do whatever they want to do. A lot of a lot of freedom given to the players on Germany. Uh, Vietnam, fairy pier? No, 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 no. What am I talking about? The other fairy pier. The mini pier. Mini pier. Uh, Vietnam hasn't really been able to show up too much. I keep seeing them pop off. With DMR, is it range? But I feel like in terms of straight up firefights, they really haven't been able to give us anything to show. And I don't know if like we're just not catching it with the observing or if they're getting caught out in positions that aren't good for them, but not the firepower I quite expected to see from this team here yeah. today. You know, I thought that day one closing out, we would definitely have Vietnam and at least contesting top five considering, yeah. you know, how hot they are in terms of recent performance, how well they know each other, how well they synergize as a team, and then also you know, just their record overall in Nations Cup. I mean, they're a formidable opponent. It goes without saying, especially with Hermas just absolutely popping off lately. Yeah, I, I mean, it just to me looks like they're not quite on the same page as a team yet in mm. terms of like some of their like mid-game team fighting, I guess I would call it. Yeah. It looks like sometimes they kind of get lost in the sauce and they try to spread out too much and rely a little bit too much on that individual firepower you're talking about. Especially with the DMRs. They've been nasty with those today. Really nasty. I feel like every time we see Vietnam getting a kill, it's it's with a DMR at range. Let's see what they're going to do as they uh, crossed over to the other side and made landfall. Germany now. The rest of them going to be joining. It's Chris. I guess Germany just concerned enough that somebody was going to try to fortify. Every once in a while, the team will reach out to that western edge and try to block the prim team. So you got to be careful of it. Uh, but it's Chris able to, you know, kind of figure out and identify. Now, you got to be, I really hope they're going to keep these boats uh, usable. You got to be careful of this. Don't run into it. Yeah, look at that. That uh, thing wins, by the way. <laughs> if you try to crash it, 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 it does not move. That's uh, the way it works in real life, isn't it? Sure. You got to give priority to the to the bigger ship. Oh, Soul! Oh, no. Pyramor with an incredible headshot right there. I thought Soul was going to be able to screw that one with the angle he had. Quite well, but Pure Boy from the rooftop able to take him out. And for Korea, who is currently sitting in second place at 48 points, to lose the incredible shot that is sold this early has to hurt so badly. Yeah, it does. It hurts to lose one of the three best players in the world. In a rotation that, I mean, <clears throat> it's so early too, right? Yeah. To drive past those apartments it's... and get shelled like that. So far out of the out of the first circle is just it's unfortunate. We, I think maybe they don't expect that team to be staying there as long as they did. I think he probably would have driven a little bit further away from it had he uh like under like thought that somebody was going to be there longer, but yeah, they weren't. This is this is Nations Cup. I mean, three teams are still chilling in the northernmost like loot spots, and I'm, already you know you're you're kind of now you're playing that game of like. When can I use my emergency pickup? Because there's like a timer on them, right? And uh -huh. so like, well, okay, first one is going to be this team. Okay, it's going to be Thailand first. I never really paid attention to the physics of exactly how this is happening, but it's you so, if you think about it, it's so It would common. kill you if you were it's doing so this. Comical. It would actually kill you. Like the helicopter rolls in is like ramming yeah. straight on into that thing. The force of being yanked up that fast, <laughs> rip your spine out. Oh, man. But hey. It's fun in this game. So. It's really fun, yeah. yeah. I love emergency pickups. I use them all the time. They're great. I love them in this game. I love them in But e I feel like you never really get to appreciate them when you're using them in game. It's only when you have an observing client like this that's actually catching all the different elements coming into the play with the oh. helicopter coming in and snatching up that rope and then just the tether yeeting you off the floor. That's actually true. It is. It, you don't really appreciate how ridiculous it looks until you see it happen like close <laughs> it's up. It's stupendous. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Oh, I love it so much. But in in terms of usability and what it brings to the game, love having it. Oh, yeah, it's so much fun. I mean, yeah. it, it's a game. It doesn't have to be realistic. We can, we can have some fun with it. Yeah, and it opens up, you know, 
more things for the teams to do in terms of rotations. It, it lessens the 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 badness of these like really hard shifted circles early. Like you're able to recover a lot better. So yeah. that's what I really like about it. In terms of especially for the esports. Oh my God, be careful. Whoa. <laughs> I have been there where I have thought I could turn the boat, fat, you know, far enough or but fast then you enough, get, you get and then beached. I don't. Yeah. And then I'm very sad. Oh, Snickers are gonna make it, buddy. Oh, you got your ticket. The timing. The timing. Oh, oh it's perfect. Go. Oh my God. Calculated. Nuh uh Calculated. <laughs> That's unreal. Oh man. We're getting <laughs> some treats in terms of transport today. That was amazing. Yeah, excellent observing job to catch that yeah, too, right? that's so good. All right, so Thailand landing. Oh no, where is this exactly? Oh, this is just north of the military base. This is hot, they're landing on Vietnam. Yeah, this is this these double hills out here that are dangerous. They're wide open a bit. You're gonna have to win this fight, oh. Nurens. Oh, he's out of the ammo. Switches oh. to the mini fort team, but not quick enough. And so with one H, Nurens able to flush him out. Glory eventually gets the finishing blow there on Nurens and Duchies will be able to clear him out, but oh, that's a painful loss there for Vietnam. I mean, just one more bullet in the chamber and you probably win that fight. Right, uh, APAC on APAC, violence here as the grenades are out. Puchils thought about sticking the res, had to pull off, but that's, those Ooh. grenades are dangerously close. And Puchils probably done, that's right next to him, it's gone. Pounce it off his back. Now, Thailand, who had been so good with those emergency pickups at PGS2, not really able to find value with it here in match six. And Vietnam picking up four points right there. It's a good start here in the final map of the day. Well, what do you think? What's your bet? Uh, I, I think it's going to go hard at the island. Maybe a little bit of bridge in it. All right. Let's see. Yep. All right. Nailed it. You're buying dinner now, right? No. <laughs> no. I don't what, remember the what other? the initial bet was. I don't remember either. We have to go back and watch the VOD. Mm. I think I, pre I, I predicted teams, and I, I certainly did not predict Germany, Argentina, and Brazil. So I, no, I'm no, losing no. that one. I think it was a I think it was a fantasy thing. Was it a fantasy thing? I think it's like for the entire event, fan if I remember. Ah. Uh, so we're no we're nowhere near having to worry about that. I'm already oh, no. worried. No, not like this. Not like this. Oh, oh they're no. all rotating on foot. Oh no. That's a tough angle there for Brazil, but still. This isn't even like. You wouldn't expect Brazil to be sitting out here like this. This is actually yeah. just. Unforge. Disrespectful. No. <laughs> I know, I know. It really isn't. But I certainly, if they open fire, it's going to no, feel like it for India. Yeah, they, no, no, no. They absolutely should. Oh. Yep, they just waited for oh. someone to start healing and then just cut them down to size. I, that is, I feel bad for India on this one. This no, is just it's painful. You, you don't expect that. It is very painful. And I mean, for a, for a day that's already not gone their way, six points in total on the board to get caught out like that. They didn't lose at least two players. Just dreadful. Now China coming in. They are dropping in a very safe location, actually, all the way down here in the south. Do south. If I'm not mistaken, there's nobody around this area. Yeah, no, no, no. I can't believe there's nobody in that four square yet. Yeah, that is a incredible breed. That's awesome for China. I mean, that's a really good find. Haven, let's loose. The throw is oh, it good? Is so it good. is. It is. Ah. Constantly impressed by the nading capability of these guys. Yeah. Just feels like top to bottom in the pro level. It's oh, they're, they're everyone nasty. is so good. Yep. They're nasty. On the boat is Canada. Now they're going to Novo too. When are they going to be able to <laughs> like? This is interesting. Will Brazil still be there when they make it through to Novo? They have to do the same kind of run. I don't know if there's any vehicles in any of the garages. I have to assume not. I have to assume that India checked the garages in Novo and that they were empty. And that's why they went on foot. Yeah. I have to hope. Well, Brazil finally finished cleaning up India, so you got to think that it's going to be off their radar looking for another team. Maybe if India bogged them down for another minute, they would catch wind of Candia, Canada, Candia, Candia, Canada, Canada coming in on the ferry. Canada, Candia land. It's been land. a long day. Yeah. It's been a long day, people, then. <laughs> but yeah, Brazil's just booking it in. You going to pull that lever, State? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Traumatized. <laughs> oh, they brought vehicles. They're smart. Okay. Yeah. I, I should have realized they're on the ferry that you can put boats, or boats, put cars on it. 
You could probably put a boat on the ferry if you tried really hard. You probably could, yeah. Find no, a launching pad of some it. sort. I kind of want to try it. I think it's got to be some angle on some dock where you can make it happen. I bet. As it is right now, kind of a quiet mid game as we have some teams rotating in. Now, Korea and Australia down by the ferry pier off screen. Okay, finally, we get a shot of this. This might is, be a bit of a skirmish. I don't know if Australia actually has any. I don't know if Korea boats. knows they're there. Yeah, I don't know if that's. Because they hmm. This is dangerous for Korea. Like. Once they open up some angles to Australia, they might lose a player if uh, Australia's not really in a position to punish it. Never mind. Okay, they're okay. okay they're going to be all right. Well, what does Australia do? Are there any boats out here left? I don't think so. It's kind of hard to see in the picture in picture. Yeah. Going full screen. Oh, there's this one right here. Um, Looks like somebody maybe hit that one. <laughs> what a spawn. Does that move? I think you can you can oh, work that does. way out oh, there. Oh, okay, it's fine. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah. I thought maybe it was like wedged in there and couldn't move. Nah. Oh. He's All fine. Right. I trust Waikikamu cow. I trust, I trust the cow. Why are you taking this little boat when you got that big boat right there in dock? That's my question. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Brazil, let's see what LFD1 was able to pick out from that. Took some damage before it got the three helm. What is the gun? Did we actually get to see? Uh, we didn't, hmm. but maybe it was something they didn't want. Sometimes a lot of players don't like the MG3. Yeah. Because it, it, it is kind of situational in, in, e, in eSports because of the windup. Uh, Korea's going to make massively wrong long rotation, but Canada's kind of angling in that same direction. Oh, yeah, oh and no, USA okay. is also in the houses. They're, they turned. They're, they're going to maybe try to make a play for the, the four square that China's in. Yeah, I like that move a little bit more, but regardless of the way that Korea decides to go, it's going to be an uphill battle trying to get into these compounds. It is... Not quite forgiving. Southern side of these uh, these maps, man. They're <laughs> braver than me. <laughs> it's, the, the rocks are slippery. Yeah. It's tough to get up there sometimes. You can do it. They're sharp too. You can take damage on them. <laughs> well, not really, but <laughs> you, if you they're fall, dangerous. If you yeah, fall I guess you funny. can. Yeah, yeah, you totally can. All right, so Canada making landfall. It's a little bit of damage, I think, from USA trying to shell them there from the houses. And we'll see where this next circle goes kind of feel for all the teams on the edge right now, Canada, Korea, and Australia, because one of those teams is going to have a very hard time, if not multiple teams, is going to have a very hard time rotating in past the entrenched lines of Germany, of China, of the USA, of Brazil. Australia. Well, this is maybe not going to be fun for them. And by maybe, I mean most likely. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Kyle's lucky that was an headshot, but he prones. I think he, ooh, okay, just barely can get behind that hill. It's Chris thinks, eh, maybe I'll get lucky with the bullet drop, and it'll, yeah. it'll clip him. I think in a perfect world, you can't actually land one bullet on him healing, but India finally eliminated there by Argentina. Oh, okay, some Wait. really good shots here. Tiggleton and Waikikamuga are gonna combine for one knock on it's Chris. Cole trying to do something, but he's gonna get backed off as well. All right, Australia has a window. Let's see if they can crawl through it. Oh, and the circle's very favorable for them, too. If Australia is able to win this engagement here against Germany, they have a really good chance. They've got to do a little bit more damage to Germany, though. Germany now has kind of found the opportunity to stabilize and start putting some serious hurt down onto Australia, and they're not able to fire back. Nice line of smokes. Riding Australia with some wiggle room here, but oh, Tiggleton just takes too much damage. From the mini 14 and blue finally knocks him. Yeah. Oh, Luke just barely able to get in there. Escape those grenades. Oh, but now a knock from Waikikamuka onto it's Chris. I, it, it, I know, yeah. He's the lone oh. player up. He should be dead. Yep. Yeah. It was a nice early engagement for them, but it was not in the cards right from the very beginning there for Team Australia to try and breach that position. And now Canada coming into these houses that China's occupying is just show with an AUG on the top floor. Crazy112 is going to try and catch some of the reinforcements coming in from Team Canada. We'll see if we can find the angle here out of Finna. Finna going to pop out of that car. Show behind all this. Got a knock there on Kino with a heady. Finna now very low on HL on HP. Show pops out of the house, gets another knock. And Canada getting mopped up here, but Korea is going to use this as an opportunity to come in from the coast. That's huge. There's even one knock here. If Korea is going to get this done, show 
finds the grenade, does a ton of damage. Korea tracking him, but not pulling the trigger, trying to hide their presence. I'm not too sure. Well, they spring to life. Loki gets the first knock. Heaven takes a bunch of damage, has to get back inside to safety. Sho, who's been absolutely magic right now, has an Onyx out in the open. Aix left actually going to find the knock. Heaven trying to press space, trying to push forward, going to spray up and over. Got the knock in front of him, thought about going for the flush. Oh. Instead, hits a heady. This looking pretty decent for Korea. Heaven got the heady, but not knocked there on Sho. As Sho, I think, as a level three helm, was able to take that one. Long score very low. It's all up to Sho. We'll be able to make magic happen here. Korea is trying to close in. Show nine bullets in the AUG. He's going to reload. He switches to the shotgun as well. Turkey got a mortar knock <laughs> off screen. <laughs> there it is. Whee. We got a couple of them. Yeah, right on top of Chinese Taipei. They've got the distance decently dialed in. And uh, Rybox actually is going to steal that knock. Well, I think that one might have actually done some damage Ooh. there. Dude, Rybox is just clicking. Oh my god, Argentina's just wrecking them. Not good right now for Chinese Taipei. Show behind all of this was able to get a finish there onto Anonix. And Korea actually trying to piece out of that position. We just get the tail end here of Heaven trying to escape and Show somehow miraculously able to hold on the last man standing for Team China. But he racked up so many kills. I think three, four, maybe even five there for Show when all is said and done. He's still alive. Yeah. He's this stuck though in the blue yeah. and USA is keenly aware of it. Kickstart tagged him. Uh, Vard, though, going to set Hemos down. Now the other players from Vietnam, I don't know what you're doing on that angle. Oh, my God, how did you win that? Chloris, that is unreal. I thought you were dead to rights. Chloris has had some really good sprays so far today. Now we have Koo from Germany trying to find the angle through soft cover onto Japan. He's on this rooftop. Teammates from Japan, Pure Boy and Kane, are trying to close the distance here and find some angle on Koo to give their partners some company, but not working out. Japan's got to clear this right now, yeah. while Germany's a little bit distracted. Heaven just praying for some safety somewhere. Uh, well, that wizard's open. Oh, he's setting nope. it. Car's on fire, though. He's got to get out right now. Yeah, he's got to bail. Oh, that car. Nope. Rexco with a headshot there from the Mini 14, able to get the heavy to finish him off. South Korea eliminated. They'll have 49 points in total on the day. Not bad at all. But Germany's still in first place with all four players alive. Yeah, but on the bad side of the circle, at a nearly impossible rotation to make after this. So, you know, if they can clean up Japan here, Japan is just flanking too far. They gave Germany too much time. And, okay, they might still win it. It's a 2v4, by the way. Germany's working with a 2-2 split right now. Breaks through a Mika oh. all the way in. What a nade from its Chris. He's able to catch Runox on the tree. Please. Gonna go in for another one. He's just fishing for him. So smart with the way he angles it. Oh, nasty. He's, he should have him dead to rights here. Yeah, what a flick on a cane. Yeah. Goes for the flush. Finally able to get him. And it's Chris just manning down the fort, giving time for Mika to come in. Eventually, he does get knocked there, but you know, he got more than enough done. And Imhak, the only one left for Japan, scrambling to try to find some semblance of safety. There is none, my friend. There are a bunch of teams out ahead of you, and there is little to no cover as you get closer to the bottom of this hill. There's a few trees and a few rocks, but yeah. Maybe had the angle. Yep, yep. So Germany's going to lose the left side of their 2-2 split. It's just going to be Breko and Mika for him. Argentina, meanwhile, still sitting in second place. I'm sure they're watching that kill feed and feeling very happy that Germany's losing some manpower now because Argentina, if they can pick up another win or at least another big game, might be able to pass them before all is said and done today. Yeah, right? Savior scrambling. They know. <gasps> Did they run past him? No, he saw. Oh, okay. okay, okay, okay. Ali. Ali. Doing a good job there. I thought for a moment they were going to bypass him. Yeah. Rip. Cho, you had a great game, though. Yeah, that was a ton of kills that Cho was able to pick he up. He salvaged a lot of points for China there. Okay, let's see where this circle goes. It's going to center up right on Argentina. Nice position here for Turkey as well. Yeah, Turkey really has the opportunity here to kind of salvage at least something out of the day. Yeah, they got four men up. It's been kind of quiet, only one kill in total. Got to be feeling really good about this one. Yeah, and like I was talking about earlier, Germany 
just nothing to do when you get down that hill, especially since they don't have any vehicles to really use. It's uh, it's not fun. No. Everybody it... talks about how good high ground is, and I say high ground's great till it's not. Then it's really bad really fast. High ground is good unless you actually need to come down off of it. As soon as you need to come downhill, it can become very treacherous very quickly. If there are trees, it's not so bad. Right, but but there aren't. This location is kind of similar to where the previous Erangel Circle ended in that yep. there really isn't a lot of tree cover. Exactly. These two sections of the map. Yep. So let's see what what the last player for Germany can do, if anything. Everybody else is just going to bunker down, hunker, you know, whatever they can. I think it's actually Kickstart that was able to find him. Yeah. Uh, but Kino, uh, Kino gets the final kill. So it's hard to tell with these colors. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is a little bit tricky sometimes. A few of the colors are a bit similar on the map. Uh, USA has to make this run to the fence, probably try to take the edge of the fence that's in and try to lock that down is about all they can do for now. Maybe if they can find a knock on Vietnam, they can swing into the planes that direction. We'll see. I like that idea here for USA. A lot of smokes on the Oof. ground. That's their grenade, okay. For a second there, I'm like, that grenade could be disastrous for USA, but no, nah, it's just there. It's just clearing out the other side of the fence. Brazil's doing the same thing right next to them, Paper Thin. They should. Oh, they're getting cut across the street, cut down across the street, though. That blue zone grenade's just a bit too late to do anything. Yeah. Denmark has a good read on Brazil making this transfer. Oh, big flash here on Avidi. USA is keenly aware of what's going on. That's me, Shrimzy and h one picking up a knock and a kill. As Brazil is just being turned into mincemeat right now. The sparking, though. Got a couple kills. Can he do any more? This guy at times can be absolutely electric. But he's, uh, I mean. Oh, Shrimzy's on fire. Oh, Shrimzy's on fire. Okay. Not in a good way. <laughs> well, he is on fire well, in both ways, really. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now, not in the good way. h win trying to find, I don't know if he can squeeze oh, the Oh, he door. can't get in. Oh, no. That's got to be painful. Yeah. That Look pathing. at him. He's trying to deny the point to sparking. I mean, there is a world where Shrimzy's able to save him. But he bought time. That's what's important there. Is he bought time for that res to be guaranteed to be finished. This is risky for sparking. Oh, they just barely don't have an angle by that window. Uh, Go you have three flash. frag shrimps. Just underhand went out that window and Brazil's down. I'm surprised he didn't go for it. Said it's going to be sparking throwing a frag. Does make it through the window. Not able to find anybody though. Oh, that's smart. Using that folding shield to prevent grenade angles. That's yeah, really like smart. It. All right, Brazil coming in once again for the side. Kickstart with a perfect angle through the window of the US. Is able to get one. Sparking, they know exactly where he is. Kickstart's going to push that position, catches him, throwing the nade. It gets cleaned up. Brazil eliminated here. Yeah, good job by America. Really making sure uh, that they don't give Brazil too much hope. A little bit from Sparking, uh, but not quite enough. Grenade there, I don't think it's going to catch much damage, but oh, the shot yeah. from Beamy. Get Emic. Now, LA and DraftKings trying to do what they can. Clib pushed so far forward on this one. He's been going with another frag grenade here in Argentina. Ooh. Actually from Turkey. Eh? Schofield gets the knock. Oh my god, these grenades just not quite bouncing in Denmark's favor. They're getting ripped apart by Vietnam now. Yeah, all eyes are on them. Draft King, the lone player alive. You know, trying to make his way in. Does get knocked there by Chloris. As Vietnam just seems to have the perfect sight line from the airplanes on this. Even ducked you with the car rotating forward. Yeah, well, Flory's watching this fight gleefully. Absolutely happy to just lay damage down. Turkey now has to defend against USA. It's been a rough go for yes. Turkey. Can their fortunes turn around? Stuns abound. Angles found. Oh, Shrimzy's going to have a perfect angle on this. U.S. able to find it. Actually, Kickstart comes through with a Groza against two knocks. And Turkey A quickly dispatched there by the Americans. Whoa, just barely Shrimzy able to get to safety. One hit would have put him on his knees, but he gets there. Kickstart absolutely nasty with a Groza in his hands. Better believe that guy could put down some hurt. Gustav on the bad side of things. Barely in the circle, so he's safe for now, but... What does it matter? Obimi. Obimi's got behind him. I don't know if yeah. they know. 
Denmark's got an insane split. BB's gonna come out the top, immediately finds Shrimzy, sprays him down, it's good, gets a lot of body damage. Only one player standing left. That nade under the US gets him. BB picks up two. And Denmark suddenly goes from having a very precarious position with this 1-1 one -one split to a solid one and pick up a lot of points in the process as well. What a beautiful play there from Beamy. Absolutely just perfect timing, perfect execution. Grenades there aren't gonna get underneath that downed APC. Nothing you can do about it. It's just, oh, oh. God, how did he survive that? He's 1H. That airburst almost took him down. Literally 1H was DraftKing. Well, Vietnam might be closing out the day Ahead of a bunch of teams. They I already mean, have 14 kills on the day, looking to make it more. Look at how look at how much this leaderboard is gonna change after this game. Teams like That's Korea, crazy. who are up at the top all day, Brazil sliding down quite a bit because of these strong finishes that these other teams are having. We're gonna have so many teams cresting 50 points. Chloe's absolutely popping off, gets the finish there on Gustav. Vietnam with 15 kills in total. This is the Vietnam we're all looking for. The Vietnam we were all expecting. And now, <sighs> pinned, yeah, pinned in this spot as DraftKings. I, there's just not a lot he can do. He can go for the flush. That's about his best hope. He doesn't have any utility to clean it up though. So it's gonna have to be an up and over. And right now, DuckJuice is able to get behind Lil enough. Oh, Beamy. Beamy's beaming. He's trying to make something happen. Already has three kills, trying to find more. If Duck Juice does bleed out, which it looks like he will, it's gonna be a 2v1v1 with Vietnam holding onto the east side, drafting on the north, Bimi holding this rock on the left. And looking at the utility, not a lot to be found on any of these players. Not a lot of smokes, not a lot of frags. In the center of this field, it's quite barren. There isn't a lot of cover to be found, as we see from Bimi's perspective right here. But eventually these players are gonna have to start working from the fringes of this circle into the center. And that's when this becomes a very Whoa. dangerous situation. Okay, that's... Himas, you are insane. I think he's like trying to... Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't think this was the right play here. Uh, he should have just either dove, because now he's stuck on very low health right at the edge of the circle. And oh, huge plays from DraftKing. Gets the knock on to Clory's Vietnam. Had a win in sight, but it might get taken away. But Beamy out in the oh! blue. He's done. It's a 1v1 right now, and DraftKings is able to pick it up. For Team Argentina, eight kills as they solidify their position in first place. And what a way to end the day here for Team Argentina. The first team to eclipse 60 points. It's back-to-back -back wins for Argentina. Crazy, crazy stuff here at the end of the day. That was a wild finish. Yes, Vietnam put up huge kill points, but Argentina able to sneak out a win underneath the noses of Denmark and Vietnam. Absolutely crazy stuff there from DraftKing. That was just phenomenal. I mean, DraftKing, we thought at some time that he was dead to rights with his position over there in the north. He had very little cover to work with, but he was able to just weasel his way into the perfect opportunity. And he wins the 1v1 against Vietnam, secures the second in the win in a row for Team Argentina. And they finish the day with 21 kills, if I'm not mistaken, on Erangel. Back-to-back -back wins and climb all the way to first place. What a show. Yeah, just, a, just ridiculous stuff here on Erangel. Dominating this map is Argentina. Love to see it. Firmly in control of that first place spot now, going into day number two. Just heroics abounding, Rybox, DraftKing. Stellar, stellar play. But let's not forget that there were a lot of teams in the midfield as well that put up really great numbers. Vietnam comes to mind, putting up 15 points or 15 kills in total, plus the placement points. Catapulting themselves up into the standings, back into contention, back into the form that everyone came into today expecting Vietnam to be at. They finally brought it here at map number six. And paper thin, heading into tomorrow, it's going to be crazy heated. We have so many teams in contention at the top. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, you know, finally, Vietnam coming alive. Denmark just had a great, solid day all around. Uh, really tremendous stuff from them on their first showing ever. Germany, nuts through the first half of the day. Korea, strong throughout most of the day. But 
not really quite strong enough to stay at the top of the leaderboard consistently. Brazil had a great start to the day, finished out decently. Nothing to be ashamed of there. A lot of teams absolutely still in this. And, 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 and oh God, I, I love what we're seeing from Argentina. Just absolutely thrilled. Yeah, that was a win that by no rights should they have had, but through just sheer clutch play, yep, able to make some magic happen. And also, this hold by show was oh, pretty this incredible. Was, this was dumb. This is just showtime. He is, I mean, there was a reason we talked about him all the time before he retired, because he was so darn good. He hasn't really lost a step. And America here, great push, great yeah. defense. Really did what they could from a tricky position uh, to make the most out of it, in my opinion. Now think back on them having to cross the street here through basically no man's land. They tunnel through with the smokes and then they win multiple team fights to get themselves in contention for the top four. Just really tremendous stuff. They had an uphill battle and they did not shy away from it. They were able to man up and make it happen. Unfortunately for them, some clutch nades from Beamy spelled the end of their day, but. And what a show all around, and what a, what a fantastic map to close things out on here, match number six. I mean, that was just a stellar performance from so many different teams, so many players, and Argentina going back to back in Erangel in heroic fashion. A great show. Yeah, exactly. Even though Vietnam comes out with the most wow. total points, still, I mean, Argentina, the big story of Erangel was that team for sure. USA having a really, really strong finish to the day. A little bit of a rough start, but they picked up, they picked it up very, very quickly. One point game for a couple of those teams. It's four teams with zero points there. Australia really just struggling to find their footing again here at PNC. And I thought maybe this time this would be their year. I really had high hopes. So hoping that Australia can bounce back, but they had a rough go of it. I mean, they got blockaded by Korea on the one end and then Germany on the other end. There's not much space for them to work with. There's a lot of PUBG left to be played. Yeah. Ruth, and we're only one third of the way through this tournament, but man of the match, the Draft King for his heroic performance, able to clutch that one out at the very end. Only 289 damage, but he got the kills where it mattered the most. Was able to deliver the second victory in a row on Erangel for his team. I just, I, I love the way he played that. I mean, just so patient. Knew he had a little bit of extra cover. Uh, compared to Vietnam in some ways, but I'm not <sighs> trying to think about what Vietnam maybe could have done better. I mean, maybe you could go for two in that uh, in that Dacia. Maybe you can swing it in front of that terrain to bla block yourself. I think there's better options. I think they just panicked a little bit. But still, a good finish overall for Vietnam. Shoots up to sixth place. Brazil all the way down to seventh now. A little bit of a rough go of it at the end of the day, but still look at how close these points are, Steve. Yeah, they're in striking distance for sure. Top seven is all so close. Argentina only leading by six points over Germany, and then USA, South Korea, Denmark, Vietnam, and Brazil right behind them. And it only takes a couple of big games for teams like the reigning champs, the UK, to come back tomorrow and start to make this really a show heading into the final day number three. And honestly, this is what I want to see the most out of these teams is close performances, a competitive leaderboard, not one team running away with this, everyone vying for yeah. a championship. It's so much fun. Exactly. No, I mean, it's it's a great day. I mean, six teams with 30 kills or more, really just everybody's giving it their all, playing mostly really good PUBG. So you can't complain at all about what you saw today. It was, it was really, really good stuff. Uh, really exciting to see a couple of our regions who um, maybe don't always finish the best at PNC, having a really good, good run. Argentina in particular, Denmark, with their first performance yeah, ever. Just, Denmark showed up. Yeah, man. I'm not too surprised at all. It's, it's Especially with Beamy and Clip. Yeah. And those guys are really good. Beamy absolutely put himself in a position to win this game, too. He came so close. With those clutch nades on the US and then nearly winning a lot of 1v1 battles like that. You know, maybe if he doesn't get hit by that final shot before he goes back and turns to the blue, he can come through and clutch it out. But at the end of the day, Argentina got to pick up their second victory in a row. And a really a fun game. That was one of my favorites of the day for sure. Yeah, it was. I mean, Vietnam picking up 15 kills in total. And I'm really glad that they're going to at least end the day this way because 
You know, it wasn't the best showing for them, at least. You know, it was it was pretty it was pretty mid, but then coming here into the final day, they really met the expectations that yeah. I think a lot of fans and ourselves included had set for them, and they showed that they absolutely do have the potential to come back and potentially win PUBG Nations Cup 2023. Yeah, absolutely. They should be a favorite in this event. Uh, period in a story. Uh, they should be a team that everybody's looking at saying, yep, they 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 have the firepower to do it. They have the skill to do it. They have the macro usually to do it. And I think in that last game, we finally saw the pieces coming together. If they can continue that momentum tomorrow, definitely. Vietnam going to be in the mix. But I'm uh, really excited to see where tomorrow's going to shake out. I think we had a lot of fun today. Um, you know, we got to see a lot of new things. You know, we got the new Miramar. We got Vikendi for the first time ever. Uh, hopefully, we get a little bit of a different circle on Vikendi. Hopefully, somebody decides to poke the bears. Yeah, poke the bears. Poke I want to see some bears get poked. Dude, get, get those IR scopes. I don't know. Let's talk to the players. <laughs> Let's tell them to poke the bear. I know. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I was really looking forward to some bears getting poked and some bear caves getting well, explored good, and get those good. IR scopes. Well, it's good. Uh, you know, we got we got two more Vikendi maps left to go in this tournament. Yeah, maybe they'll figure it out. The meta. Just still... wait until we get a circle ending on a bear. <laughs> oh, the bear wins! Imagine the bear winning the map. Yeah, nobody's messing with them. The bear wins the map. <laughs> we, have, we have another team coming it's, it's in. It's not even. It's not possible. <laughs> I don't think. Theoretically. Okay, you are. I get what you're speaking. Theoretically speaking, it's funny. It is funny. It maybe they maybe they swipes two players from two different teams at the same time. Who knows? That would be interesting. Maybe I they, would maybe love the that. grenade. Maybe it like evolves opposable thumbs. You could pick up a grenade and throw it at somebody. <laughs> Possibilities are endless. Wait, this is the first time seeing the candy. We don't know what's possible. Yeah, right. We yes. don't know what's possible. We're into uncharted territory for sure. One of those ski lifts, it falls off. The cable car oh, falls off and hits somebody in the cool. head. Yeah. What if you could like shoot the ski lift? The cables? Yeah. Oh my God! Of course. <laughs> that Panzerfaust kill, by the way, from Kowo. One of the dumber things I've seen, and I mean that in a, a brilliant way. It was endearing. It was endearing. Yeah. I love Kowo. Uh, yeah. Just fun day. Yeah. Really good day. Really a lot of fun here. Uh, I don't. Know, there's a lot to go to, but anyway, guys. We are going to be sending it down to the interview on the stage. It is going to be Bella with an interview here coming up. So don't go anywhere, guys. And we'll be back tomorrow for more PNC. Welcome back to the main stage here with me, your host, Bella. And what a day we had, right? 각 지역의 펍지 스타들을 모두 만나볼 수 있는 펍지 올스타전, 바로 PNC 2023인데요. 그 명성에 걸맞게 기대를 모은 선수들이 한 자리에 모인 만큼 오늘 정말 명경기가 펼쳐졌습니다. PNC is the all-star tournament of PUBG, and we saw some amazing matches that live up to the title. 바로 근데 오늘 개막 전에 한 팀이 바로 빛났죠. 오늘 종합 1위를 차지한 이 치킨을 차지한 아르헨티나였습니다. But only one team made it top to the leaderboard, and it was Argentina with their two chickens. 오늘 아르헨티나 리복스 선수부터 만나본, 만나봐서 이야기 나눠볼게요. Please welcome Argentina's Reeboks onto the stage. Hello, hola. Hola. All right. Okay, how does it feel coming day one, in the rank number one with two chickens? Felicitaciones, ganaste dos pollos de hoy. ¿Y cuáles son tus sentimientos? Uh, estamos tranquilos, confiados y contentos. Uh, we are content and we have enough confidence and we are chilling. 오늘 1위 이 치킨으로 이렇게 성공한 그 소감을 물어봤는데 아주 만족스럽고 이렇게 자신감을 얻어서 남은 경기도 임할 수 있다고 하네요. 그럼 이제 이게 사실 여섯 매치 동안 이 치킨을 이렇게 연달아 획득하기가 되게 어려워요. 그 성공 비결이 뭘까요? So I want to ask what is the top secret behind just collecting sweeping up those chickens in the, the throughout the six matches today? Uh, I have a strategy special for the Argentina team. Uh, no, we just play the game and do what we feel like we have to do in the moment. No, we don't have any specific strategies, but we are living in the moment and we are enjoying the game. Wow, there's no special rules, just like this, and just like this, so it's not even the two chicken dinners. You even made it to the MOM of match five. I'm sure there's like a secret somewhere, no? 
Uh, so you are the... Ah, lo siento. Y fuiste el hombre de la, par de la partida 5 y hay uh, una estrategia especial y tu sentimiento. Eh, no. <risa> no. No, o sea, fui, tiró una buena granada, mis compañeros hicieron lo que tenían que hacer y solo matamos. Oh, we are with, I'm with my team and I am playing really well. 또 비결도 못 딱히 없고 그냥 팀원들과 함께 이런 시너지를 얻어서 좋은 결과 MOM까지 획득할 수 있었다. 뭔가 가슴이 따뜻해지는 이런 답변을 들었네요. <웃음> 그럼 우리 아르헨티나에서 보고 계시는 팬분들한테도 이제 인사 한번 드려야 되겠죠? What about a shout out to the fans at home in Argentina? Thank you. Quieres compartir algo a tus fans? Un saludo a todos los chicos del Discord y gracias por el apoyo. 어, 보고 계신 모든 아! Uh, thank you for the every fans that are watching our games. Uh, 우리 보고 계시는 아르헨티나 팬분들 봐주셔서 너무 감사하다고 하네요. Thank you so much for the interview. Good game today. And congratulations. Thank you. <웃음> 네, 방, 방금까지 아르헨티나의 리벅스 선수 만나봤습니다. 이렇게 2023 PNC Day 1 경기가 끝났습니다. 이제 정말 재밌고 뭔가 박진감 넘치는 경기들로 가득했던 만큼 현장을 찾아주신 관객분들 그리고 지켜봐주신 우리 펍지 전 세계 팬분들 너무 즐거운 하루 보내셨길 바랍니다. That was a wrap for Day 1 of PNC 2023 and these matches 1 through 6 were filled with like you know edge of the seat matches and I'm sure you guys all had your fun. 긴장감 가득한 PNC 2023 경기 바로 내일 연속해서 이어집니다. 오후 6시 토요일 PNC 2023 데이2 경기가 시작되는데요. 남은 경기도 저와 함께 끝까지 많은 관심과 응원 가득히 지켜봐 주시길 바랍니다. 지금까지 저는 여러분의 호스트 벨라였습니다. We'll be back same time, same place tomorrow. It's Korean Standard Time, 6 p.m. So I'll see you guys soon. Same time, same place. Mark your calendars. Bye bye, thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. We're a model. We're a model. We're the crown. 전력을 두고 우승에 대해서도 많은 기대를 하고 있는데 오늘부터 3일간 대결이 펼칩니다 여러분의 반복 선수는 시작하겠습니다